Good morning, Judy Hills. Kyle's favorite day of the week. Thursday. Serial connection. Gets the belt. Manny gets the belt on opening day. Huh. Look at that. Hey, Sacramento, what do you say? Manny's got the belt today. Oh, well, we need to clip that. Cheerios. Cheerios. Sacramento, what do you say? Man, he's got the belt today. That's we're, fire, bro. We're, we're workshopping that. so sick. We're workshopping that. So, so dope. <laughs> uh, what? You all, everybody. I was over there working feverishly. Woo! Tweets up! Tweets up! What? Game time, baby! Oh, shoot. I should probably put out my... Go. All right, it's game time, baby. I'm struggling today, man. It's a weird day. Okay. Yeah, dude. No, it's opening day. Uh, it's it doesn't my feel like it's opening my day. Favorite, baseball's my favorite sport, as yeah, you know. Me too. And I, I'm, I'm really happy that it's back in large part because just the ebbs and flows of the MLB season mean that summer's almost here, and it means getting home from work and taking that midday nap between, you know, you've got Pirates, Mets on the TV, and you're going to nap through the fourth through seventh innings and pick that game up in the eighth. Mm. And it's just the best. It, it's just the sounds of it, and you got baseball on the radio when you're driving around, crack of the bat, smell of the grass. But it's just it's not the same. There's nothing better than going to the Coliseum and seeing the field pristine before yeah. before the Raiders would come in and, and totally screw it up. Mm -hmm. But just the grounds crew doing their work, watching the tractor pull around or the guys pull the dirt, circular motion all the way and, you know, cleaning up after themselves and the perfect cut of yeah. the grass going one way and the other yeah. way. There's there's nothing better. Going to miss it. Yeah. And that's what sucks about this <laughs> is trying to uh, separate the joy of man baseball. I will watch any baseball. Yep. You throw it on. There's games at noon today that I'm gonna throw on my phone and listen to while I'm driving. Love listening to baseball, by the way. It's my favorite way to consume it. But then there's the the A's side of this, and we all know what the deal is with the A's. Mm -hmm. uh, this might be their last season in Oakland. They may be headed to Sacramento for a few years while they figure out their their stadium in Vegas. Uh -huh. And then once once their stadium is built in Vegas, um, shovels aren't in the ground yet, but we're we're we're, we're uh, as close as you can get without shovels being in the ground. I think uh -huh. um, they'll be in Las Vegas, and that sucks. And I think navigating this feeling that I I, I and I'm sure other A's fans are navigating now is just going to be the norm moving forward. Like, this is just how I can't not like the sport, right? I can't not watch it. it, it I just, I, I adore it, but it feels dirty in some way now. I it think it feels gross. I think I can shut it off. You know, I, mm -hmm. I've talked about this. Like what we do is the way, like I know my brain works is, I'm always obsessed with sports. 
and w- whatever's going on. It, it it's going through my mind all the time. I'm on Twitter. I'm I'm reading things online. I'm I'm tracking whatever, reading box scores, all that stuff. And when you do this this job that we do, um, mm-hmm. it's part of it. It becomes part of what you have to deliver every day. Is that you have to saturate yourself with with everything that's in the sports world, right? Mm-hmm. And that takes a toll on the people around you. You know, it's not easy, you know, to when you're you're celebrating your second anniversary, that's one thing. Mm-hmm. But when you've got two kids and three dogs and sure. you're celebrating your 25th and you've asked somebody to like hang out while you watch something again, mm-hmm. um, it like there's only so much of that that you can do. And like we give to our sports fandom and we Mm -hmm. give and we give and we give. And at a certain point, I I think that there's a betrayal that happens that's happening with the the Oakland A's yeah, and, and with the commissioner of baseball and with ownership. And when that betrayal happens, I don't know that I will go back. If I'm sitting at a bar and there's a baseball game on, I'll look up, I'll give it some time. Sure. But the rest of it, like, and I've told you, like my bar at home is nothing but, black and white photos of of like everyone you can possibly think of whether it's mickey mantle babe ruth uh you know a plenty of a's eddie lopat i don't know so not everyone i can think of okay <laughs> I, I mean i like ernie banks i've got a you know like a picture of pete rose running over ray fossey and sure plate sure uh like the entire bar is filled with black and white photos mm-hmm. and uh it's just tough it's tough because I don't want to leave the sport, but I'm ready to. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I I think a lot of fans are going out there tonight. They're going to be totally dissatisfied with what happens with the fan, with the the parking situation. Days are going to make life as difficult as possible. Yep. They're going to mess with their fans even further. And I hope it doesn't get out of control. I hope that, you know, everyone keeps a cool head. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I, I, if I'm someone working there, open the gate. Yeah. Sure, man. Oops. (laughs) <laughs> what are you going to do? So there's like, two, just wave them all in. If you're not familiar with, with what's going on at, at the Coliseum tonight, there's a planned boycott by the fans Yes, where they're going to be in the parking lot, but not in the stadium. Mm-hmm. And they're going to do a boycott from the state or from the parking lot. I'm fascinated to see how well this works. So, because it might just look, <laughs> if there's still 12,000 people in there, because usually they do they do okay on opening day. If there's still twelve thousand people in there, it's not going to look. It's just going to be like, oh, it looks like an A's game. But if you can really get it where there's two hundred people in the stadium or whatever the number ends up being, yeah. everybody else is outside. I think that's in. I think that's that's a potentially effective maneuver. Mm-hmm. Um, but what the A's have done, there's an event going on at the Oakland Coliseum. Uh, excuse me, the Oakland Arena tonight as well. Okay, that the Coliseum shares a parking lot with. So what the A's are doing is waiting until 5 p.m., two hours before the game, mm-hmm. to open their parking gates where there will be people trying to get to the A's game and people also trying to get to this event at the Oakland Arena. And <laughs> Oakland officials are like, hey, can we not do that? Traffic on 880 sucks. Oh, it's going to shut down. It is going to be a disaster. It's going to shut down 880. If you're unfamiliar, 880 is the freeway that goes past the Coliseum. It, it, you take you take 98th or Hagenberger to get down to, to the airport. It is a main thoroughfare for every Bay Area commuter, both directions. Yeah. I don't think I've ever driven on 880 and had it not be stopped at some point. Like it's that type of, you know, that, you know, that section of business 80 by Arden. Mm hmm where you're heading into downtown and it's always slow there. Always. No matter what, 3 a.m. on a Tuesday, doesn't matter. There's cars stopped. It's like that all the time. And now you're adding two events and everybody trying to get off on these same exits. Oh, yeah. It is going to be a mess. I told you, I I left a Warriors playoff game at Mm -hmm. the old arena. Yeah. And somebody shot and killed somebody on the freeway. Just as I'm getting on the freeway, about a quarter mile up. Mm Mm-hmm. I got stuck on the freeway until four o'clock in the morning, just sitting there. Well, from, hopefully nobody gets shot and killed tonight. From eleven o'clock until four o'clock in the morning, and then I had to drive home. Oof! From there, I didn't get home until seven. 
Sure. Oh, I was seeing shadow people and all kinds oh, of weirdness. It's the worst. But like what they're going to do is gum up everything. And like, look, take Bard in, do whatever you got to do. Uh, and the other thing I would say, there are people out there who don't have this same feeling about what's happening. No doubt. If people decide to go into the stadium, mm -hmm. let them do their thing. Yeah, nobody's like, crossing picket lines here. Yeah, they're, yeah, yeah. I know people who are like, hey, I'm an A's fan. Whether they're here or Las Vegas or Kansas City or Philadelphia. Yeah. I'll just be an A's fan. And that's what, th then do your thing, man. Yeah. I don't, I, I, not what I want to do. Uh, but I, I certainly don't blame anybody for, for fanning. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do, I, do I just hope that, sure. I just hope that that's the way that it goes tonight, that it doesn't become like a really awkward situation yeah. on the parking lot. And like, look, uh, God bless A's fans for what they're doing and uh, the boycott and everything else. I totally get it. And, mm -hmm. you know, I was part of the here we stay movement here in Sacramento and like all the things that went into that were wild and crazy mm -hmm. and like how much time and effort you put into something as like a passion project you mm -hmm. know like these people aren't getting paid to to go out here and organize all this stuff and do all this do all of these things to try to keep the team and it's it's really really difficult to watch it and to like know that it's getting to the point where it's almost hopeless mm -hmm. um and to still be positive enough to like you know show up and do what what you think is right for your community yeah yeah no doubt uh, i see something happening in the chat right now something someone said uh, I don't want to call it out. Don't do that. Don't say stuff like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't. Uh, just if you're wondering if it's you, it probably is. Um, we don't need to do all that. No. All right. Anyways, uh, putting a pin in opening day for a bit. Chris Biederman gonna join us at ten thirty. Chris Biederman of the Sacramento Bee, big Ace fan. We can loop him in on this conversation. We'll talk yeah. Kings with him. We'll talk Niners with him. Um, we still have a full plate of non uh, non baseball stuff. Is it the Kings had a bad night last night? But hang on one sec. Bob Euchre is still the Brewers' play-by-play -play broadcaster. Not full time. Okay, but he's still he's doing part of it. Day. Yeah, he's doing opening day. Oh, so they said last year he was right. there. He did some games, uh -huh. and then he was part of the celebration. Like he's in the in the mm -hmm. locker room, like spraying beer he's everywhere vibing. and like having a great time. At eighty nine years old last year, opening day today, he's ninety. Like. Uh, unbelievable what a legend yeah he is such a legend How, he he played yeah i believe he won a world series with like 1964 cardinals? to 1967 he was like a backup catcher he won a world series with the cardinals i think he did but he was a he was a major league baseball player who then became a longtime play-by-play -play broadcaster uh-huh not typical typically you see color analysts yep. right uh -huh. ray fossey former player color analyst yep uh, dallas braden former player color analyst yep um, who else? Who else we got? Help me out. <laughs> oh, there's a million. Katie Christensen, former what? player, now a color analyst. Well, like the Krukos and and mm -hmm. everyone else. Like, yeah, yeah, they're they're the color well, analysts. Hey, Dwayne Kuyper played. Okay, remember he had one home run? No. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, Mike Kruko, color analyst. So, uh, for for Bob Euchre to uh play six years in the majors, he did win a World Series in '64 with the uh with the uh Cardinals. Okay. So he played six years in the majors and then goes on to have this long career as a broadcaster. He's Harry Doyle from Major League. Well, he's also an iconic character in baseball movies. He was on Mr. Belvedere for like, I think, over 100 episodes. Why would he not be? Yeah. Like, I don't know <laughs> if you even remember Mr. Belvedere. Not no. even a little bit. Okay. So Mr. Belvedere was this, uh, this American family hired a butler from England who comes in and is like they're he's not the father figure bob euchre's the dad uh-huh he but he's like life lesson guy and like it's a it's a sitcom from the from the 80s oh. and he's on it for over 100 episodes <laughs> why not yeah <laughs> yeah just a an absolute legend if you get a chance to listen to a bob euchre broadcast do it it is if you're familiar with the movie major league just a bit outside right and you've heard harry doyle yeah. it's not exactly like that it's not far off yeah, he does a he does a really great job, and he's very entertaining, and still doing it at ninety years old. That is uh, pretty incredible. It's amazing. It's just one of the things that feels it's like, man, that feels really uniquely baseball to me. Yeah, no, I think it is. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, Gary Gerald is approaching forty years with the Kings oh, calling games. Legend. Yeah, love it. It's amazing. 
All right. Bad night for the Kings last night. Let's talk about it next. And okay. I'm sorry. I need to I need to talk about Draymond Green for mm. two minutes. We can because just blow an entire segment on it just because, because well, hey, uh he's doing it for the content. He has a podcast out. We'll hear a right. clip from that. And we'll talk about uh his ejection last night from the Warriors 101 93 went over the magic, and then we'll talk about all the bad stuff that happened to the Kings last night, despite the fact that the Kings did not play. Tons of stuff coming up over the next couple hours. Stay locked in to the Insiders for Barnes and by Jiffy Lube on ESPN 1320, Sacramento Sports Leader. Clear. Oh. I'm excited to see Banzitos tomorrow. Are you going to the game tomorrow night? Yes. I am going as a fan tomorrow. Oh, The wife snap. is coming up. Okay, so Banzito's uh, taco truck is going to be outside the arena at... That's where we're going. Like 5 o'clock, I think they open. Then we're in there. Yeah. Like swimwear. Uh, that's right. So, ooh, gourmet tacos. Shout out to Adam. I think I'm going to try to stop in before uh, I go do media availability. Smart. Oh, if Tom you L. Don't, if you don't, hey, if you don't get in uh, before Mike talks, uh, shoot me a text and let me know what you want, and I'll just grab it. Oh, okay. And then bring it in. All right. Sounds good to me. I'm going to have my credential in my back pocket because I can't bring in food through the regular entrance. Of course you can't. <laughs> like, bring a but paper. I'll, but food, I'll like... bring you food. I'll be All like, right. this is for James Ham. They'll be like, oh, please, right there. They one. know. <laughs> They'll say, James already came through. We'll be like, yeah, I, I know. Like, yeah, but trust me. I know. Tom, thanks for stopping, dude. It's yeah, thanks, to Tom. You. And I think Tom doesn't live here. That's what we heard, right? Oh, is that right? I don't know. I, pull, I pulled up late. I think Tom I lives... was over. I got put in Narnia the other night. So you it took did. Me a second to get over there. <laughs> and there's a specific reason why that happened. It's oh. it, Spanish radio. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. I thought there was some drama that I missed. No, no, no. No, Spanish no drama. Anytime that. Spanish radio is there. I love that for them. I will sit wherever they put me. Yeah. Oh. It, yeah, if uh, if they win with Heather in the building, we might have to uh, yep. might have to get her out to a couple more games. Hassan Minhaj is, uh, has a show. We're at in Sacramento. Um, Greg, I, like, I think that it does matter a lot not having Trey Lyles. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I also think that um, there's even more pressure on Domas and and teams are able to send more bodies at Domas because the guys that are replacing him aren't the shooter that he is. Huh. Yes. Tom, we can blame Tom. I mean, yes, secure into Bagley. We can blame Tom. Tom was there. <laughs> I think he was also caught off guard by the fact that James talks like a sailor. Polo, there will be no Otani photos going up in my bar soon. Boo. Not until gambling is legalized, am I right? <laughs> hey, did you hear what Michael Porter Jr. said about Jonte Porter? No. Uh, I've known my brother my whole life. Yep. I know what type of duty is. I know he's expect excited to play basketball, and I highly doubt he would put that in jeopardy. Oh, well, okay. Well, okay. If Michael Porter Jr. says it, then. Well, and let's just be honest. He's a year older than his brother, so he hasn't known him his whole life. <laughs> he already he's lied. Liar. He's already lied. He already <laughs> lied. <laughs> put in a media request at the Nuggets. Yeah, we need to talk to Mike. We need to talk to Mike Jr. about some discrepancies in his story. <laughs> Sorry, Mike, I took the over on who was older between you and your brother. Uh, two shows tomorrow at the convention center, 7 p.m. and 10 p.m. He's not going to be at the game? Come on. He's not getting dialed in to A's Guardians? No, Hassan. He should be at the... Oh, uh... oh, oh. hang on, hang on, we're back.
Now, back to the Insiders with James Ham and Kyle Madsen, brought to you by Jiffy Lube on ESPN 1320. Misunderstood what you were saying there. Oh, yeah. So Hassan Minaj will not be at the Kings game. We have confirmed. No. Brutal. Brutal. I don't even know why they're playing. Well, I mean, he <laughs> is a very big Kings fan. Oh, I am fully aware. Yeah, I mean, and also Davis Grad. Yes. I've spoken with him on the radio before. Yeah? Yeah. Why don't you get him on? Because I don't know him like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would be a good show tomorrow. I don't even know That's if something I, we could do tomorrow. I don't even know if I have a contact. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe you do have a contact. I don't know. I definitely don't. I do not. Oh. Right. I'll, right. do, I'll, t- I'll talk to some people who know some people. Okay. I'll see what, uh, I'll see what we can do. All right. That'd be fun. Um, bad night for the Kings last night. <clears throat> it's also opening day. Uh, happy opening day to those who celebrate. Real quick, to put a pin in our conversation, for or to put a to put a bow on our conversation from earlier. Uh, I like the A's and Giants over win totals this year. I think the A's win totals like fifty six and a half. Oh, they're going to be bad. I don't think they're going to be a hundred and five losses bad. Uh, how? What's the Giants win total? Eighty three and a half. Is that right? Eighty four and a half. I'm not a Giants fan, but I will say that they they usually put a a pretty decent product on the field yeah dude they're gonna they're gonna hit more this year i think they'll be able to get some outs i i i i really think uh where where are we at the san francisco giants really not gonna just lay them out for me wow what a bunch of jerks over here um the giants are plus 160 to make the playoffs wow um yeah, I've got really okay, cool, great, thanks. Uh, there we go. Projected win totals for the Giants, um, eighty-three and a half. After okay. all that, I was right. So I'm going over that eighty-three and a half. I think they're going to pitch the heck out of the ball. I think they got a couple of guys who can actually hit the ball over the fence now, which is a which is a pretty significant deal. So uh, I like the overs on both of those teams. Bad night for the Kings last night. Here's who won in the West: the Warriors beat the Magic. Oh. The Lakers beat the Grizz. Yeah. The Clippers beat the 76ers, sort of. Oh, 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 the Rockets beat Oklahoma City. Mm. And the Suns beat the Nuggets. Come on. Because of course they did. Come on. Because why wouldn't they? Because Michael Malone hates the Kings. <laughs> <laughs> Take the nut off, boys. Look at the standings. <laughs> you know what I was shocked by the other night? How much De'Aaron Fox knows about the standings. Okay. Usually players are like, yeah, we don't pay attention to that. We're, you know, focused on our next game. Da, 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 da. But he's like, yeah, there's a huge game for us. You know, we we're up 2 0 in the season series and now it's 2 1. And now we need to get this win Friday because then it'll be 3 1. And then we have the tiebreaker because then it was like, oh my God, <laughs> you know everything. <laughs> yeah. De'Aaron Fox is actually really, really savvy when it comes to basketball. Yeah. No, clearly. Yeah. He's I, a basketball I re- guy. I remember early in his career, like, they uh, Dwayne Tickner told me one of the assistants under Dave Yeager said, Hey, yeah, I pulled him aside and said, Hey, we need to go over your, your seven turnovers from last night. He's like, okay, what do you want to know? He's like, well, let's just pull up the iPad and we'll go. He's like, no, no, I can like, which term turnover do you want to talk about? <laughs> he's like, okay. He's like, I can walk you through each one if you'd like. And he's like, so this is a reason. This is what I did on this one play. And this is how I turned the ball over. And this is what I need to not do. And he just went through all seven of them. And Tickner's like, I don't even need to pull up the video. Great. He knows every one of his turnovers, <laughs> how it happened, why it happened, and how he can avoid it next time. It was like, oh, okay. Um, this this game wasn't the most consequential for, for the Warriors, speaking of the standings. But our, um, Draymond Green got ejected. If you can imagine. Three minutes and 35 seconds into 36, the game? 336. 36. Give, give the man some credit. Okay. 330. That extra second. <laughs> He's not a hooligan. No. Um, second night of a back-to-back for the Warriors. Okay. On the road. Mm. Jonathan Kaminga out. They are struggling. Yep. The, Ro- the Rockets are right behind them. They need this W. Yeah. And Draymond Green... Supposed leader, supposed key cog in this team, supposed reformed, misunderstood guy, uh, gets ejected three and a half minutes into the game when they're already shorthanded. 
in a game they need. And then, and then he podcasted about it. If you can believe that. Here's what he said after the game. Here's Draymond Green. I said what I said. I deserve to get kicked out at that point. And what I said, if I'm all the way honest with y'all, I kind of was trying to turn my body and angle and go to the bench. And I said what I said, like a little too soon before angling my body to the bench. Um, oh. But yeah, it just can't happen. And, you know, uh, that, like, we, we need to win games. So, like I said, um, not going to overreact. Like, oh, man, like, stuff is never as good as it seems. It's never as bad as it seems. Like, I know where I am. I understand what what I what I'm doing moving forward and in my position just make sure that that's the exception and not the rule and so cool man uh Kyle there thanks Draymond that's, that's not the exception the rule right. is that it's, he gets thrown out that's how it goes every time this is a spot where he's supposed to be a leader on the team and you get ejected <laughs> Kyle, first of all, he sat there and barked and barked and barked and barked and barked. And then, like it's uh, the- Fox and and uh, and Monk picked up technicals in the game the other night. Yes, for saying something. Yeah, like that quick. Yeah, it was. You got Luca over quicker. there, just like like literally, no doubt. Like yes. like writing a song. Players are officiated differently. Yes, Draymond gets a long leash. He's barking, barking, barking. Oh, and then I I turned my back and called him a bleep and bleep and bleep. I didn't turn my body enough. Like, Too bro, soon. you were angled. Too soon. You were turned looking at that man in his face. As if it makes it better. Oh, I thought like, I turned dog. my back and he couldn't. And there's no, there's no, there's no better <sighs> visual for what that meant for Golden State. Like, forget that you hate Draymond for a second. Go, go be the, the Golden State Warriors. This is a player that you were relying on. This is a player that Steph Curry and Steve Kerr and everybody who matters in that organization has had this guy's back time and time and time and time and time and time. Hang on. And time 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 again. Yes. And time and time again. Again. And he does this in this spot where they they badly need a win in Orlando. They are dragging through this road trip. Oh, yeah. They are dragging to the end of this season. And then you see Steph Curry so visibly frustrated that he is in tears. Not like sobbing, crying, but there were, you could see it. Yes. And like, dude, do you understand what that, what that means? And then to come out and have him be like, oh, I'm not going to overreact. Like, da, 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 da. I know what the deal is. It's like, like, oh, you know what the deal is? Don't. What about, what about that? Like stomp to the chest midway through the playoffs. That, but that's that not even. Round. But that's not even that. That is that is separate from from all, like I'm sorry, not separate. That is included in all this. That's yeah. packaged into all of this. That's that was the second playoff series that he's gotten ejected and booted for a game from. Oh, of course. And then you choke a guy out and you punch a guy in the face and he got suspended a million times. And he, he's been very good since he came back. But in that spot, like, dude, you it, nobody's better at being Draymond than me. Like, d- but to understand the situation a little. He doesn't. This is a guy lauded his high basketball IQ. He's so smart. And did it. I, I did, did, Kenny brought this up a, a few weeks ago and I tried to defend it. I'm like, well, no, he is. And, and blah, blah, blah. And maybe he is on the court. But that was stupid. Oh, yeah. And trying to defend it as anything other than that is asinine. Yep. That was dumb. Draymond can be a brilliant basketball player on the court. And I think when you look at his size and his what he what he can do athletically or his 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 limitations athletically, the fact that he's carved out the career that he has is is remarkable. Cool. But this is bad. This is hurting the team actively again. They're <laughs> they're gonna it, miss a play-in tournament. In this season alone, he's done more than 99.9% of all NBA players do in their entire career. Ever. Ever. Combined. Like, and this is where... <laughs> Combined. <laughs> like, this is like when True. you're you're looking at, like, I think Warriors fans, and I think the Warriors, and I think Steph mm-hmm. Curry and Steve Kerr, they fully have Stockholm Syndrome. They have been Feels like held, it. like, captive by this guy for over a decade. And when they're done with him, my goodness. Like, the, the feeling of 
just like the weight lifted off you is going to be extreme. It's going to be crazy. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Can't wait. Yep. Can't wait. All right. Well, so we'll keep talking about uh, a bad night for the Kings. I just dream on podcasting after that is nuts. That's just so crazy to me. Just go be that. Lakers are right behind the Kings now. Clippers gain a half game. We'll talk about the Rockets. We'll talk about the Suns. We'll do all that. Chris Biederman of the Sacramento Bee joins us next. We'll loop him in on that, on the bad night for the Kings. We can also talk some A's with him. We'll talk some Niners. Uh, love talking with Chris, one of the homies. He'll join us next on ESPN 1320, Sacramento Sports Leader. Claire, hey, there's Chris. What? Can he not hear you? Uh, I can hear him. What's up, dude? How oh, I can hear you. Oh, there you are. Kyle can't uh can't hear you. Yeah, Kyle can't hear you. So it's just me and you. Okay. Like well, you choose your uh, lamp chops. I'll get all my bad man. stuff out of the way now. Yeah. What's happening? <laughs> How are you? Good, man. There he is with his self. Like your hoodie. I should have had my dude. on today. Mm. Talking a A's rotation, bullpen decisions. Yeah. Bullpen Pinch running decisions. options. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm excited to see a little bit of that outfield. I mean, their outfield should be fun. I don't know. I'm excited. <laughs> don't, you know, the biggest yeah. thing I'm, is, I, I'm excited for is that Tony Kemp's not there anymore. Like, uh, I never wow. understood. What? I never He's understood not a Tony, Tony Kemp. Kemp. Anti Tony Kemp. Uh, I've That's never, nuts, ever dude. understood Tony Kemp. Tony Kemp is Willie Mays Hayes. I, I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> Dang, that's crazy. <laughs> All that's he does super every time it's like a huge moment. He pops the ball up weakly to shallow right uh, right field. Like any. Like, in oh, fairness, he's... in fairness to Tony Kemp, who on the A's has come through in in a ton of big moments recently. Well, I, I don't even mean a big moment <laughs> like it, like a playoff moment. I mean, like on a Thursday. You know, sure. 60 games into the season, you're like, man, if they could only knock in a run, if he could only hit a ball on the ground to the right side, he could score the runner from third. But that pop sure. up to uh, to second base, that's not going to work. Yeah. Wild. <sighs> yep. There we go. David has my list. JaVale McGee, Tony Kemp. I don't hate JaVale McGee. And I don't hate Tony Kemp. I, I'm sure he's a perfectly <laughs> nice guy. I just Javale, uh Tony Kemp is an extremely nice guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure he is. I can I can say. I have um I was never in the locker room with him. I like I I was in the locker room a couple of times before uh, before he got there. Mm. Yeah. Covering covering A's games for NBC. Yeah, some good stuff there. I, I liked covering baseball. Baseball is really cool. So that makes one of us. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love baseball. I, I started out I started out covering baseball and um oh. as a former former failed baseball player, that's hey, what that I thought like, I wanted hey, to do. Is Chris talking? Yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, Chris. And then um you do like I've done a few like series here and there, and it's mm -hmm. like it's happened to me multiple times when you get an 18 inning game and then, you know, you're at the ballpark late and then you have to, then it's getaway day the next day and you have to be at the ballpark at 9 a.m. Because, you know, managers, uh, the manager's pre pregame availability is, you know, three hours before first pitch or whatever. Uh, and yeah, it's just, it's, a long it's day. just a grind. It's a long day and it's, you know, six, seven games a week. It's, it's tough. What I like is that, like unlike basketball where you have to rewrite everything like on the fly, like you, mm -hmm. that final minute of a game, the score can change five times. And right. so your lead has to change like five times. And with baseball, someone cracks a homer and they take a, a four, three lead in the ninth inning. You can rewrite your entire story in the next two pitches. Like it, oh, like yeah. there's the pace of it is so different that it's like, Oh, this is refreshing. I think yeah. I it would probably get old after a certain amount of time, but I don't know. I like that you get there early, a, batting practice, and then everything shuts down, and you can go eat for like an hour and a half, and then yeah, it's it's a little long. It's definitely a long day. 
How much time we got, Kyle? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. And you have to be at spring training for like six weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't think about that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't do well in the sun like that. <laughs> yeah. I just came across a tweet from a Browns writer I follow. It says, watch a couple years worth of Jerry Judy targets, and that sounds like the worst way to spend a day. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now, back to the insiders with James Ham and Kyle Madsen, brought to you by Jiffy Lube on ESPN 1320. Got a guy on Twitter bragging about watching two years of Jerry Judy targets. Oh, it's painful. That sounds like the top five worst way to spend a day. Yeah, what'd you do today? I watched some Jerry Judy targets. That's not great. Oof, gross. Uh, that's James Ham. I'm Kyle Madsen, and he's Chris Biederman, uh, host of the wildly successful and immensely popular podcast, Candlestick Chronicles. You can check it out wherever you get your podcast. He also does some writing for the Sacramento Bee. Uh, Chris, what's up, man? Hey, how are you? I am terrific. Uh, this is your debut on our, our program. And you mentioned to me uh, a couple days ago, you were like, hey, I've never been on your show. So, I mean, it is what it is. We're not friends until you come on. My, I, I come on your show. I was like, all right, fine. I uh, don't want this friendship to end. Um, so <laughs> you can you can come on whenever you'd like. And you're like Thursday. And I was like, great. So here you are. What would you like to say? Yeah, I mean, we've only done like what six or seven hundred podcast episodes together, but I'm glad we can finally be on the radio together. Um, yeah, and and you know, expand beyond Candlestick Chronicles and and you know the legendary podcast that that's become. Well, James and I have been been talking a ton of A's today. Yeah, and just kind of trying to get our sure. arms around the you know Lawrence Butler. Your thoughts? No, um, no, just kind of. <laughs> yeah, what, that's a guy. What, you're, <laughs> No, you're you're an A's guy. What where where do you land on on uh just this this season, these next couple of seasons and their kind of um limbo that they're in before going to Vegas? Yeah, I mean I, I do think that there's a lot of merit to the buzz that's been happening. Um asking around, it it does sound like that it's headed in the direction of at least Sacramento being under serious consideration and or a push being made to come to Sacramento um, starting next year for the next three years, barring, you know, nothing falls apart with the Las Vegas stadium deal, which, of course, we can't rule out that either. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm split on it. Like, it, it would be great to have Major League Baseball in town in Sacramento. I think it would be a lot of fun to be able to go to big league games. Um, I just don't know how anybody could trust uh, John Fisher to, you know, execute a deal and be a good tenant, right? Like is that what proof do we have that John Fisher is going to be a good tenant? It's going to be a winning product. Um, it's going to be something that, uh, that, that people in Sacramento, like, I, I understand why Sacramento politicians, why Vivek run a um, it makes all the sense in the world for everyone here in town to push for a major league baseball team because Sacramento, I, I believe would be a great market. I think you could build a really cool major league ballpark where Sutter health park currently stands. I don't think Sutter health park as it currently stands can be a major league ballpark in the long run. Um, but I think it's, it's got a great footprint and it's in a great spot for a major league ballpark. So, you know, all that being said, it's, you know, it's it, Major League Baseball would be great for for the city. I just don't know how you can have any confidence that what John like in what John Fisher is selling it at any level. And, you know, if he comes to Sacramento and then the Vegas deal falls apart, then what? You know, like what, like what what happens then? So is is John Fisher somebody that that Vivek Ranadive, the city of Sacramento really wants to hitch their wagon to? You know, that's questionable. And, and we'll see how that goes down the, down, down the line. Yeah, I think that would be, Chris, that would be the perfect scenario, though, for Sacramento, is that they do come to Sacramento, and then the deal falls apart, and then next thing you know, they've got, they can't go to Vegas, and you can maybe sneak in and swoop the team. I don't know how that works. Um, I don't know what John Fisher is going to want as far as, like, a purchase price, if he would ever sell in that scenario. 
but I, I think that that's why Vivek is doing this. There's a gamble here, and you're taking it that mm -hmm. number one, you can you can potentially steal the A's because you know Fisher is inept as an owner and one of the worst owners in professional sports history, uh, and like nothing is secure with him. But I think also on top of that, you can show that you're a major league city and that there's potential for you to be able to to house a team long term. And maybe if Major League Baseball does expand or there is another team out there that's looking for a new location and, you know, there isn't two teams in the Bay Area anymore, all of a sudden Sacramento becomes a lot more appealing. It is a great baseball town. There are a ton of Bay Area transplants. It's right on the river. There's a beautiful spot. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful weather city as well for baseball. And so I, I think there are a lot of pluses here. It's just, it does feel a little dirty, um, but I understand it. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I just wonder, like, you know, it, it feels like a short-term thing, sort of regardless, right? Like if the Vegas deal falls through, more than likely John Fisher is going to have to sell. If he has to sell, who's going to be the best Who's going to put the best bid together to buy the team? Is it going to be Vivek Ranadive? Is it going to be a group in Sacramento? I don't know that Sacramento is loaded with the type of financial capital that obviously a place like the Bay Area would have. And, you know, if you read the reports, there, there are a lot of people interested in buying the team in the Bay Area and keeping them in the Bay Area, including Warriors owner Joe Lacob, potentially. Um, so it's, you know, uh, it, like I said, it would be fun. Um, it would be novel. I wonder if... You know, we get to year two and year three of it, and the A's don't have really any high quality major league talent, and they're losing a hundred games. Like, what's that going to be like at Sutter Health Park? Right. Are people going to be going, or is the novelty going to wear off? Um, and are people going to look at it as a, as a failed experiment? I think on its face, obviously, it would be fun to have big the big leagues in town. Um, mm -hmm. in the short term, but to me, it doesn't. You know, it, it, it's John Fisher. It's not it's not an expansion team. It's not a guy willing to you know spend hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars on top major league talent. It's a guy that's that's really can't get any deal done at any level. He hasn't paid a player since he gave Eric Chavez a contract in you know, the early 2000s, whenever that was. We can't even remember. Right. Like that's it's yeah. just kind of a disaster of an organization um, from an ownership perspective. And, you know, I think there's plenty of risk in tying your boat to that guy. Chris Biederman in the Sacramento Bee joining us, talking uh, just, I don't know, whatever whatever the heck we're talking about. Uh, let's shift gears and talk about the Kings real quick. Yeah. Uh, what did what did you make of of the loss on on Tuesday night? And does it um, do you think there will be any long term ramifications from a 36 point home loss to the Mets? Yeah, not, I mean, not really. I think, you know, obviously it hurts in the standings and, and the Kings are doing all they can to avoid the play. And I, I think in my opinion, you know, the Kings are going to go as far as De'Aaron Fox and ultimately Malik Monk takes them, right? Um, or unless Keegan Murray decides to step up and be a guy who's scoring 20, 20 25 points a game. Um, the Kings need secondary scoring. And as good as Demonis is, uh, Demonis Sabonis is, you know, rebounding the ball and getting assists and being a hub for the offense, um, he's not a go-to scorer in the fourth quarter of games, and and what they need is they need De'Aaron Fox to to you know be efficient to score 30, 35 points in these big games, and they need secondary scoring, and and maybe that's maybe that's a night where you know they hit 15 threes as a team and shoot 45 percent, and Harrison Barnes is scoring 16 points, and Keegan Murray scoring 18, and it, and it's a group effort which we've seen plenty mm -hmm. over the last couple of years. Um, but more often than not, when the Kings are winning big games, it's, you know, it's getting a 25 point game from Malik Monk off the bench. It's De'Aaron Fox scoring 30 and then, you know, scoring 15 in, in the fourth quarter. Right. Like those that's kind of the Kings formula. Um, mm -hmm. And I just think right now, particularly with with the injuries, you know, Kevin Herter hurts their depth. His, his injury hurts their depth, obviously not having Trey Lyles is, you know, I think he's one of their most important bench players. And he's really the only non-guard, non-center that they play off the, off of their bench. I think that's one of the biggest flaws with this Kings roster. They don't really have a backup small forward. You know, their, their first three guys off the bench are Davion Mitchell, Malik Monk, Chris Duarte right now, and those are three small guards. And then you have Alex Len. And so there's it's a lot of small lineups. Um, and for the Mavericks, who at the trade deadline went and got P.J. Washington, and and Gafford um you know they got a lot longer and and I know the Kings beat them two times earlier in the season but that was before the trade deadline before they got those guys and so you know you look at the west and Mike Brown has talked about it a lot there's a lot of size in the west and and the Kings are one of the smallest teams in the conference particularly without Trey Lyles 
um, who can play small ball center and, and is their biggest forward um, that, that is, they have in their rotation. So, um, you know, I, I, they're ultimately they're going to go as far as Deer and Fox and Malik Monk scoring takes them. I think, I think, you know what you're going to get from Demona Simonis. I think the defense this month has been really encouraging and I'm curious to see if that's going to be something that lasts over the long run. Um, I think they're, they're fifth or sixth in defense uh, since March, which is a far cry from, you know, when they were in the early twenties throughout most of the season in defensive efficiency. Um, so they're closing out on the three ball better. They're getting deflections a lot, a lot better. Keon Ellis has, has provided them something that, you know, when we talked about the Kings at the trade deadline, a three and D guy is something we all said the Kings needed. Well, they're getting that from Keon Ellis, I think mm -hmm. at even a higher level than, than any of us could have expected. Um, so that's been a really positive development, but overall it's a small team and the, and they kind of lack scoring when, when Malik Monk and, um, and others aren't providing that uh, in, in addition to what De'Aaron Fox brings. So um, the Kings will go as far as their secondary scoring takes them, in my opinion. Yeah, it's, I would agree with you. I think that losing Trey Lyles has been a tremendous thing. And, and not only that, but it also hurts that Sasha, while Trey Lyles is out, you know, is also out. I mean, that's a problem um, because he is another guy who could at least stretch the defense and at least space the floor and give you some shooting from that position. And it really, when you lose these three players that they have, it's like six foot seven, six foot eight, six foot eight. It's, it's mm -hmm. all of your, your three and four depth. Yeah. And so it really does come down to what does Keegan Murray do and what does Harrison Barnes do? And Hey, we got to have you guys play 35 minutes a night because we ain't got nobody else. And I, I think that that is the flaw to the roster and it's something that has to be addressed. What do you think that this summer is going to look like for them? Because it does feel like, you know, we just went through not only a trade deadline last year where it was only Kessler Edwards, then we go through an off season where they don't address the situation of the undersized three and four. We get to the trade deadline. They don't go at the position as well. And at this point, I'm not sure that, that that's still on the table. Like, what are they going to do at that position? Yeah, that's that's a really great question because it does feel like their assets are, are kind of limited because, you know, I don't know that Monty McNair is really somebody who wants to depart with draft picks. Um, so that'll be an interesting question. And, and you know, would the team ever move on from Keegan Murray? Are they going to be able to sign Malik Monk, who could potentially get more money from another team like, say, Orlando? elsewhere being in Orlando over the weekend and, and hearing you know the media there talk about how perfect Malik Monk would be for them um, and you know knowing that they could potentially offer more than the Kings could uh, is has to be kind of a scary thought because if you lose Malik Monk that's going to be a really difficult guy to replace but it on mm -hmm. the other hand it will give you a little bit of fi financial flexibility in the long haul because you know you're looking at what a 20 22 million dollar a year contract from Malik Monk 25 maybe Mm -hmm. Um, and then when you have to pay Keegan Murray after next season, are you, you know, are you approaching the tax? Are you willing to go into the tax if you're Vivek Ranadive for, for this team, right? Like, um, some owners are willing to go on the tax if they're guaranteed, you know, home court advantage in the first round of the playoffs every year. Um, I, you know, to, for, for a team that's struggling to make the plan, do you want to go into the tax for that? I know, you know, that's, that's a conversation being had in Warriors land right now. Are they going to get, try to get cheaper in the off season because it's not a true contending team? Mm -hmm. Right. So um, it, it'll be fascinating. I, I don't you know, maybe maybe they can swing something. Um, I'm, I'm you know, I know the team loves Keegan Murray and, and loves the trajectory that he's on. And he, to me, would seem like the, the biggest trade asset that they could potentially have, because it doesn't seem like this is going to be a team that's that's going to be picking high in the lottery anytime soon when it comes to, you know, the draft picks in the future that that you might be thinking about trading away. So. <clears throat> You know, I, I think that the Kings, uh, you know, I mentioned their secondary scoring. It feels like for them to take the next leap, it's going to be, you know, Keegan Murray ascends to an all-star type level or they go get an all-star type player. Um, and, you know, the, the it's hard to get those guys. And and I'm, I'm not entirely sure what, what that looks like. Do they, you know, I, I know it's sacrilegious to bring up. Do they look at Demona Sabonis's future and say, you know, this is this is going to be our second or you know after De'Aaron Fox eventually gets his next contract which I think will happen within the next couple of years and Demonis Sabonis is a team's second highest paid player is the team going to look at it and say we want this guy to be our second highest paid player or do we maybe try to cash him in for for other assets for more depth right is is that something that's ever going to come up um, with inside that organization I'm not saying it is I know they love Domas 
Um, obviously, Domas has made it very clear that he loves Sacramento. Um, but when you look at that contract and you look at, you know, $40 million a year for potentially, you know, your second highest paid player, um, you know, what's that look like in the long term in terms of allowing this team to get to that next level of becoming a contender in the Western Conference? And um, so, you know, I, I think a lot of balls are up in the air. Um, I think it all starts with Malik Monk. Does Malik Monk come back? And then, you know, you kind of got to go from there. Um, but I do wonder, you know, the Kings have been very focused on internal growth. Uh, do they look at it the same way this offseason where, OK, Keegan Murray's going to take a step for us uh, and we don't need to make any major additions because that's going to be the way we get better? That's certainly plausible. Um, or are they going to say, no, we need to shake this thing up. We need to you know, we need to shake the snow globe a little bit and reset. And maybe that that means some big changes are coming. I, I you know, I haven't. Kings are very quiet when it comes to their thinking um, and, and all that stuff. And so it's hard to say, but I think uh, a lot of it is is in the air for sure. Talking with Chris Biederman of the Sacramento Bee. What's your feel? <clears throat> and James, I guess I'll direct the same question to you. What is your guys' feel on, if if any, on Malik Monk and whether he's going to stay or whether whether he goes this offseason? Yeah, James, correct me if I'm wrong. I think he can get more. He, he the max amount he can get from another team is more than the Kings can offer. Is yeah, the best the best the Kings can do is seventeen point four million starting salary of a four year, seventy eight million dollar deal around there. Um, and he has to at least play two years of that deal. So you can't even do an opt out like after year one. So he'd have full Larry Bird rights. It's going to be tough because a team like Orlando and also I'm going to throw Toronto. I think people keep mm. ignoring Toronto. Like Toronto came at him at the deadline when they were talking Siakam deals. And, you know, that's part of the, what we're hearing of maybe why deal the, the deal fell apart outside of the fact that Siakam really didn't want to play in Sacramento. Um, so when it comes to the money, yeah, like any like there, there are probably a handful of teams that can pay him. It just depends on whether he wants to go there, whether he likes the situation better. And look, it sure does look like Orlando probably has a starting point guard position. So it's it's not going to be easy. But I also think there are a lot of things that tie him to Sacramento, the opportunity, the way he's been sort of uh, like developed and like like his game has been fostered here. And so I, I think it's going to be a, a really interesting summer for these guys. And like, look, you don't have a lot of cap space if he does leave that. I mean, it doesn't help you if he leaves because you're already over the cap for next season. So it's not like you can just go out and replace him. And that's going to be tough. Yeah, yeah I agree. I mean, like. He he oh. likes it here. He obviously likes playing with Fox. He obviously has a good dynamic with Mike Brown. Um, so will he take a discount for that? I think that's a big question. I would lean towards no. Like if he wins sixth man of the year, um, you know, I think there's going to be a sizable difference in what he can get in the open market versus what the Kings can pay him at that 17 and a half a year mark. Uh, Chris Biederman, Sacramento B, also a host of the Candlestick Chronicles podcast. Uh, Chris, I wrote a mock draft. Uh, I know you read it and I want your thoughts. <laughs> How good is his mock draft? Um, I yeah, have, I, I mean, you had, had the 49ers Mitchell falling a little further than than he might. Uh, you know, I, I'm just interested in what you think. Yeah, I mean, that's a guy that the 49ers can certainly add to their roster in terms of what they're going to do in the draft. I definitely think adding a guy in the first round is going to be part of their prerogative. Yeah. Um, no, I'm just, I'm just I'm just playing with you. Look, like Keep diving the, the 49ers. The 49ers, in my mind, are going to do one of three things. They're going to sit at 31 and take the best defensive lineman available that fits what they like to do. They're going to, or they're going to identify an offensive tackle that they end up trading up for because there's going to be a lot of demand and a lot of good tackles mm -hmm. early in the first round. Or the big curveball, they trade up for a receiver and they give themselves a long term option if and when they inevitably split up the Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel um tandem probably after next year i don't think i don't think brandon Ayuk's getting traded this year um i think debo samuel might be out uh you know w w next off season debo samuel is going to be a big topic so maybe they end up going receiver and adding mm -hmm. some talent to that room sorry chris i've got people in my window here because it's it's uh, opening day today fyi and we all in which sport baseball in Major League oh, okay. Baseball opening day. Um, gotcha. <laughs> the, <laughs> um, and there is a, a spirit day in the office where everybody is wearing, everybody except James, 
is wearing clothing of their favorite major league team and they're standing in the window because they want to take a picture and they're all looking hmm. at me making the camera f- sign and I'm trying to tell them how much time we have left in the segment. I mean, we're and literally still, doing a radio like, show and people at the radio station think it's appropriate. And now, and now, come and now and get Kim you is take a standing picture. here just staring in the window like, dude, that's not going to make the clock go faster. Kyle is not a puppy, Kim. Photoshop me in. She, he is know. not a puppy. Stop staring through the window at him. Come on. Anyways, Weird thing. Do you want me happening. to just, I can do a soliloquy on how pop passes should be considered <laughs> rushing plays. You hate the pop pass so much. <laughs> it's, instead of passing plays will you guys go take your picture no you shut your mouth that's because i have patrick mahomes in fantasy football oh dude you <laughs> you're just cooking with me cool hardman on that's this. right <laughs> yeah that, that's my play bro that's my jam uh <laughs> no i i just it, let's um um god now i'm not, now there i got more people staring i hate this so much Chris, I, I, so I can take this. Yeah, Chris, please help me. Help help me. <laughs> Friday night. Just what are you expecting from this Kings That's team? That's exactly what I was going to ask. That, that. Like, what are you expecting from this Kings team? Because I I have no idea. I've covered this team forever. And mm-hmm. this year in particular, I just don't know. I don't know. We, we'll talk about it later. But they're on this streak where they win two, lose one, win two, lose one, win two, lose one, win two, lose, uh, lose one for the last like t- 15 games. They just yep. won two. They lost one. And what are we going to see on Friday night? I think we're going to see a much better Kings performance. It wouldn't surprise me if they win by double digits. I, I, I do think they have a way of bouncing back. Um, they obviously needed a couple of days off. It was a long trip. or Not a long trip, but a long trip in terms of you know the distance that they covered going yeah. to Toronto and D.C. and Orlando, playing five games in seven nights. So this is the last time before thir- uh, tomorrow's game. The last time this season, they're going to have two days between games. I think they're going to stew on it a little bit. Um, and it is a big game. And, and you know, it's, it's you know, kind of feels like what the Kings experience Thursday in D.C. Not that um, there, there's a whole lot of comparisons to make between losing and to the worst team in the NBA and, lo- and losing to the Mavericks right now, who are red hot. But the, the takeaway is that it was one of their worst losses of the season. It was a really p- tough performance. And they bounced back in a really big way with a lot of intensity. Mm-hmm. Um, and a team performance in Orlando that that gave them one of their biggest wins of the season. So I think they just they have that element of being able to bounce back in them. And I'm expecting them to um, to win uh, to win Friday and potentially win comfortably, particularly if they hit a bunch of threes like the Mavericks did on the on Tuesday. Chris Biederman, he writes for the Sacramento Bee. He podcasts for Candlestick Chronicles on the Blue Wire Podcast Network uh, with me. Shout out. Shout out to you, man. Uh, appreciate you, buddy. And we'll do this again soon. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. See you, Chris. See you. Hey, there he goes. Chris Biederman. My man. Popular in the chat. <laughs> I popular, I haven't been popular guy. reading the chat. Oh, but... I've been locked in. Oh, yeah? Yeah. When it's people talking trash about the homies, I got to... You're gotta locked into them. that. You're locked into the people out. Yeah, dude, I did everything you. except pay attention to our radio program. Though. That's funny. Uh, no, I want to address something he brought up in, in the next segment. Um, about trading to Montes Sabonis because I think it got a little bit misconstrued there. Um, I the I want to talk about that because yes, there's some conversations not around the team, around the media in Sacramento about that question, and I think it's a very interesting topic to take on. Great, we'll do that next on ESPN thirteen twenty. Clear. I'm going to go, so I stop getting yelled at. Yeah, go for it. I'm just glad I didn't wear my my baseball stuff, so I don't get yelled at. I don't get yelled at for not wearing baseball stuff, but what I do, uh, so so I don't get yelled at at all here. This is great. Um, Hey, uh, like, Biederman, Biederman is really good because... Um, what I what I like about Chris is he has he has kind of like an outsider perspective that you don't get very often because um, because most of us get like when you're covering a team you're so saturated you're so like knee deep in it that like you can't sometimes you can't see like the forest through the trees and. Well, I don't agree with Chris all the time, and there are plenty of times where I don't agree with him at all. Um, but I do 
think that he does bring a unique perspective of someone who just hasn't been in it for years and years. And like we do this uh, with our perspective as, uh, with uh, with the King's Beat podcast, right? So if anyone out there listens to the King's Beat podcast, which I think we're going to do one tonight, uh, today, probably not a live show, but probably this afternoon. Um, but Sean and Brendan and I, we all bring a different perspective. And Sean and I don't agree a lot of the time. But Brendan has a fresh set of eyes and he's not jaded by nine head coaches or with Sean, like 14 head coaches that he's dealt with. And so there's just like, a newness and a freshness to it and it adds to the conversation so oh i don't even know what's happening kyle what do you mean what Did something like all, all these people out there no yeah russell hunt i don't know what you said about john fisher oh okay yeah yeah let's not do that nope and I, I know you're just trying to be funny and it yeah, wasn't, yeah. 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 yeah, we just can't do that. Charlie's here. Hey, Charlie. Charles in charge. You have to give me uh, two minutes for me to get on. Oh, uh, okay. There's something going on? No. It's just you don't have anybody to play with. Okay, you, that's, that, go to that one. Uh oh. Uh, can you come back at eleven fifteen? Okay, that would be great. Yeah, I would just like to show. Please, please. I'm feeling very left out on this because I'm covering. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll set it up. Pop back in at fifteen. All right, my man. I'll have that computer set up for you. Or you can hang out here, and then we'll talk about it. Whatever, whatever you you run you run you run the show here. So, yeah, you do. Did you log into that computer phone? No. I can though because it's the keyboard that's right next to me. One minute. I hate your keyboard for me, Charlie. Oh wait, did it actually do it? Given how much work they've been doing in here, it wouldn't shock me if somebody came in and moved it. No, they didn't. Oh, that keyboard runs this. <laughs> yeah. I did that because the keyboard here died one day. So we asked for a new keyboard. Okay, your, your image, you're not in. Okay. All right. I will get back at 1150. All right. I just, you know how there's stories that you've done that you just feel. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I would love the perspective. Definitely. 30 seconds. Uh, no breaking news, no announcement. Uh, Charlie is just very passionate about the A's moving story and uh, follows it very closely and would like to uh, tap in on it. So we are going to take full advantage of that next segment. Here we go. Hour number two. He's James Ham. I'm Kyle Madsen. We are rocking with you until noon. Then D'Lo and KC will take over until four. And then a uh, quick reminder, speaking of four, we have a sweet 16 watch party tonight. Ooh. You have plans tonight? Well, no. Well, you do now. Four o'clock, you're going to head to Bar West, 2724 J Street. That's in Midtown for a sweet 16 watch party. D'Lo is going to be there. Casey is going to be there. Jesse Tapia is going to be in the building. Uh, he will also be there at Bar West, 2724 J Street in Midtown. That is sponsored by Michelob Ultra Superior Light Beer. Mm -hmm. uh, we just had Chris Biederman in the Sacramento Beyond, and he said something a little bit unpopular. 
he mentioned that, and I want to clarify because I've talked to Chris about this before. And so I want to clarify what he meant and then we can continue talking about it. So okay. he mentioned the future of the Sacramento Kings and over the next couple of years, looking at their team and their roster and figuring out how to maximize the pieces that they have. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned potentially trading Demonis Sabonis. From what I understand, and again, this is in talking to him, that is not this year, that is not next year. He's talking about if they keep running into this same ceiling where they're a first round exit this year and the, or in the first round exit next year, it's trying to figure out the best ways to improve your team moving forward. And sometimes that means moving your best pieces. So I think that's more what he's talking about is just a potential like, hey, over the next two, three years, maybe this is something that they look at. I don't think it was a matter of like, hey, they need to trade him tomorrow if they want to be good. I don't think it was that. Yeah. I mean, OK, so this conversation happens like around the media, like on occasion at, at Golden One Center. Mm -hmm. And I'm always, I, first of all, I stay away from it because <laughs> number one, it's just, it's just not realistic. Sure. I, I like for starters, like the problem that you have with a player like Sabonis is that his salary is going to go up like a tremendous amount here and right. he's going to be paid a ton and getting value for that contract is going to be right. like equal value. And so like, I, I, I've heard like sort of the conversation around with some of the other guys like, mm -hmm. Hey, you know, like some murmurs that OKC is going to come after Sabonis hard this summer mm -hmm. and they're going to have, you know, some tremendous package that they have to offer a bunch mm -hmm. of draft picks. Yeah. And what they're talking about is, is the Kings taking like a tremendous step backwards that they're not going to do. Mm -hmm. Like this isn't like, this isn't a point to reboot. This is a point. It's actually, it's long overdue, like mm -hmm. 18 months overdue. Mm -hmm. Get the right players around him. Sure. It's not brain surgery. Mm -hmm. Go do your job. Mm -hmm. Go do your job. Make a trade. Do whatever you have to do to sure. get the players to put around Demonis Sabonis sure. to maximize him. He is not the problem. Mm -hmm. To be honest, inactivity is the problem. Mm -hmm. Not getting the right players around him is the problem. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. It's not simple. It's just like, hey, Harrison Barnes and Kevin Herter and three first round picks is going to land me this. We talk about those things, but it takes two teams to tango, mm -hmm. right? So in my opinion, like we're years away from a discussion about Demonis Sabonis. And to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised Demonis Sabonis finishes career in Sacramento. Sure. I'd actually be surprised if he didn't finish his career in Sacramento. Sure. And so that's just, he's one of the top, I'm going to say it, top 10 player in the league. Mm -hmm. he is look at the stats look at what he does look at the impact that he has mm -hmm. now go get him the long athletic players to go around him mm -hmm. that hide some of his de his deficiencies because every player in the league has them i mean we're watching Nikola jokic win mvps and win nba championships mm -hmm. at seven foot two like 350 pounds mm -hmm. like the guy is totally out of shape most of the time and mm -hmm. how do you mitigate that you bring in Aaron Gordon and you bring in Michael Porter Jr. to mm -hmm. support him. Mm -hmm. You bring in a, a shooting guard who plays defense so he doesn't have inline drives coming at him the whole time. Mm -hmm. That's what you do. Mm -hmm. It's not brain surgery. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm of the opinion that that would be, it, it's crazy talk. And I don't care what OKC is coming at you with. Sure. Any deal that you're doing with them is letting them move years ahead of you and you take years behind, take years mm -hmm steps back and what that sure. that means you're a year maybe two years away from oh well De'Aaron Fox is now 27 or 28 mm -hmm. he's no longer part of the long-term puzzle right. that's not what this team has done mm -hmm. they draft older players so they don't have to wait for older players to develop as much mm -hmm. they're bringing in players that fit the same age group it's pretty simple to me yeah my my big thing about just this summer specifically is because I don't I don't I think you're right. And honestly, I think I think if you ask Chris, he would tell you the same thing. Like the idea that they would move him this summer is yeah, that that's not something that they're yeah. going to do. And I don't think that's what he was saying. But I do wonder taking Sabonis out of this for a second and looking at this summer. I have I, my concern is you say, "Hey, go get long athletic players and go do X, Y, and Z." 
And my question is with what? I don't know how valuable Harrison Barnes is if it means getting a wing who's better than he is. I don't know how valuable Kevin Herter is going to be, and we'll have to see with, with his shoulder, uh, given given the struggles he had this season. And again, not not to say that no team wants Kevin Herter, but is he going to get you a player who is demonstrably better or more effective? And then what are your draft picks worth if, you're, if your floor is now, yeah, hey, six, seven seed and in the playoffs every year because you have two all-NBA guys in Devonis Sabonis and De'Aaron Fox. And that's that, to me, is where the hard conversations come in. That, to me, is where if you're going to say, hey, this team needs to make a, a massive improvement, that's where you have to put a player like Keegan Murray on the table. If you're going to make, because I don't think they have the assets to go get this, this player that's going to make, make them that much better. And again, I know that sounds silly. And I know somebody's like, why would you trade him? He's only Ke Keegan here. Why would you trade him? He's only 24. Four. He's only 24 and he's getting better and it, defensively and this and that. Like, okay, if you believe in his ceiling, that's great. But if you're going, if if you're of the mind that, that you are, James, and you're like, hey, you have to go put better players around Demonis Sabonis and De'Aaron Fox, I I just I don't know that the Kings have the assets to to do that if they are not um making a, a dramatic shift like putting somebody like Keegan Murray on the table. Okay, so my answer is I don't necessarily believe you have to have better players. Okay. I believe you have to have different types of players. And I, I think I'll make this example. The Kings are a better team today than they were three weeks ago. Yes. And they're a better team today because Keon Ellis is different than Kevin Herter. And sure. it's not because Keon Ellis is a better player than Kevin Herter because he's not. Mm -hmm. He's just not. He's a better defensive player. Yeah, yeah. But he's not a better player than Kevin Herter. I think he's a better fit. And that's what the they thing. Needed. And so yeah. that's that's where you have to get to. It's mm. not that you have to go out and get a Kyle Kuzma or you've got to go out and get a Pascal Siakam. Mm -hmm. It's that you have to go get a Contavious Caldwell Pope. You've got to go get a long, athletic, defensive-minded player that for some reason the the New Orleans Pelicans like trip Churn and fall out. into every it's single insane, day. dude. And you can't. They're like the St. Louis Cardinals with 6'8 pitchers who throw 100. Yes. Ridiculous. Or the 85 Cardinals that just had like every stolen base guy in the yeah, league. Yeah. <laughs> if you Shout are to Vince Coleman. <laughs> five foot seven and weigh 135 pounds, you're you in. are you're in. Like Tom Bernanski, I don't know what you're doing out there in right field. Hit those 32 homers a year, but the rest of us, we run, baby. We're gonna put you at the end of the lineup. So I mean, like, look, I don't understand why this is like the disconnect. And you see one player go into the lineup. And it changes the dynamic yes, of everything. everything. Yeah. All of a sudden, Demonis Sabonis is not in foul trouble every game mm -hmm. because no one's running at him. Right. Because Keon Ellis doesn't allow that. Right. And so for me, it's just like go get the players that fit. Go yeah. get the players. You know, it's not Demonis Sabonis's fault that Brandon Ingram and Jonathan Isaac mm -hmm. and Kyle Kuzma tear this team up. That mm -hmm. has nothing to do with Demonis Sabonis. Yeah. It has everything to do with the fact that you didn't address a wide open issue on your team for the last 18 months. It all circles back to wing play. Same exact thing. Yeah. Same problem. And yeah. like, look, the fact that you you may have stumbled into something great with Keon Ellis, all right, that's fine. Do now go again. do it three th three more times. Preferably with someone who's taller than six five. That's the deal. <laughs> yeah. Like, and, and again, I, like, I don't think that they're, we have to be patient, right? Mm -hmm. Like Rome wasn't built in a day. Yeah. You know, that whole thing. And, and I, I've said this so many times on the show, people forget that the, for the 1998, 99 Kings, it was like John Barry, Tony Delk, uh, Vernon Maxwell. Like you get to the next year, there's Nick Anderson. You forget that it took until like year three of that build year four when Doug Christie and Mike Bibby step in like the organic way that a team grows mm -hmm. is that you, you see what you lack and then you go trade pieces, whether they're better players or not, you go trade for pieces that fit better. Sure. And that's all I'm asking. My, my hope is as we hit the break here is that there is a clear unified vision for that. Yeah. And what the coaching staff, or Mike Brown or 
uh, pick your favorite coach thinks they need and what everybody in the front office thinks they need really hoping that that's all because that's where things can get messy. Yep. So, um, maybe they can just go find a bunch of Gigi Jacksons or something. Go find an 18 year old who can shoot and play. Defense. They grow on trees. The Kings just don't know, don't know where that tree is. It feels like every team, every night we're like, man, the Kings had a player like that. Mm-hmm. Like where'd they get that guy? Oh, undrafted. Yeah. <laughs> Got him from Italy. Like, oh, come on, man. Figure it out. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm with you, man. They, they, there is a very specific need. It is extremely specific. It's just about going and finding that player. All right. Uh, we're going to talk. It's opening day in, in Major League Baseball, if you didn't know. Uh, our guy Charlie is going to pop in here uh, next segment because he is. we said something about the A's that really fired him up, and he's going to learn us something. And when Charlie speaks, you listen. So listen next on ESPN 1320, Sacramento Sports Leader. Ah. <sighs> Charlie coming in. Sweet. I had this same conversation. I was on the Light Years podcast the other day and had this exact same conversation about Jonathan Kaminga. Yeah. Where I was like, hey, if you want to, it's like, hey, if you want to get the pieces that you need, you're probably going to have to move a guy like that. And yeah. It was just blasphemy. Like, I, I don't think it's blasphemy. I just it's think it, the Warriors and Kings are in different spots, though. Different yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to go to the bathroom. Sorry. Well, and every team is, and and people who out there, oh, you know, like Kevin Herter has no trade value, or he has negative trade value. No, he doesn't. He just doesn't fit what this team is doing right now. And and not only that, but I'll I'll just keep saying this: Kevin Herter next to, let's say, Jaden McDaniel's, like he looks totally different. You put him next to, again, anyone, uh, Herb Jones. All of a sudden, Kevin Herter isn't a defensive liability. He's not a problem. So, I don't, how come I don't see you in here? I don't know. I'm here. Are you, oh, go enter. Oh, you're in the, all right. I'm going to, I'm going to add you to the. There I am. There's Charlie. I don't, I don't think your mic's on. Oh, okay. I don't know if you can control it from here or not. I'm oh, not sure. okay. We'll, we'll have to wait, wait for Kyle. Kyle. Yeah, we're, we're just talking, talking about a lot of the like the, the idea of trading to Monis bonus, which again in the the media circles has been like a quiet murmur, and it's something that Peterman brought up, and I just like I'm dumbfounded. <laughs> absolutely wait a minute did you say trading sabonis oh yeah yeah like and it might not be like they say well not this off season maybe not even the next one but again that's not what i like what i've heard from them a, a couple of the guys that that have this conversation which i don't partake in is oh well you know like okay he's going to come out of this year okay he thinks he's like an answer to like a huge amount of problems and it's like okay that's. That, uh, I don't know why we're echoing. Uh, oh, Charlie, hit your off button. There we go. Am, Am I still, still echoing? echoing? How, How about that? that? I don't think so. Here. Um, I, I think, think it's, it's that I'm coming, coming through on two mics. mics. Yeah. yeah. Kyle's mic is on. Oh. Sorry, Sorry guys. guys. Kyle, we have an echo. echo. Uh, just for reference, guys. There you go, Charlie. What you just did. I'm There's at the or Jesse might have done it. Oh, Jesse did it. Okay. So, um, James, just so you know, uh, on the bottom of the page here, you see all our little videos. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the microphone there. Mine should be the only one on. Oh, got it, got it, got it. So that's the echo, because that's people hearing you over the radio and through the. Got it. Camera. Okay. So yeah, so Charlie, when you're on, just before you hop on, just hit, just mute that mic. On the screen. On the on the screen. Yep. I believe you can also hit mute just down at the bottom. And we have a minute and a half. Okay. 
Oh, nope, one minute. I, I baffled by that. What? <laughs> okay, so I mean, sure, if I were a team, I'd make a run to the Olympics, but why would the Kings entertain that? I, they wouldn't. They're a team that, that chases stars. That's that's how, like, again, that's the Daryl Morey way, is you chase stars. So, and I don't know if people realize, Demont Sabonis is a star. Like, yeah, he's a star, so. And again, I will beat this until the horse is dead and buried and then resurrected. You miss the star in Luca. So you dare not, I mean, you've got a pairing mm -hmm. between Sabonis and Fox mm. that gives you a foundation for at least five seasons. Oh, here we go. Oh. Now, back to the insiders with James Ham and Kyle Madsen, brought to you by Jiffy Lube on ESPN 1320. I'm Kyle Madsen, that's James Ham, and joining us is our boss man, Charlie O, in the building. Charlie, what's up, man? Hey, how are you guys? Doing great. Super it's, happy you're here. It's fun to be in here. You came in fired up today. Yeah. Usually, so it, for people who don't know, usually Charlie pulls up and he has some, he has like our, our little notes for, for things to, to read for today. In fact, speaking of that, a Sweet 16 watch party tonight. Do you hear me doing this? I do. Uh, Sweet 16 watch party tonight. Uh, at Bar West, 2724 J Street in Midtown. That starts at 4 o'clock. D'Lo, Casey, Jesse going to be in the building down at Bar West, so make sure to get over there, say what's up to the guys, hang out, and uh, watch a little ball that is sponsored by Michelob Ultra, Superior Light Beer. But typically, you come in, you hand us little notes like that. Like, hey, you guys doing great? How are things going? No, oh, this funny thing happened, and you're out of here. Today, you were like, I need to get on air now. <laughs> So uh, you were fired up about the A's. What, what do you got? Yeah, guys, let me talk, just give everybody a little history. I'm not going to bore you mm -hmm. other than the fact to say that I have been covering the A's since 1985 mm -hmm. as a, a reporter. Uh, I have done things with the A's that people don't know about. I broadcast a game from the Coliseum. Uh, I have uh, been there for historical moments that people only dream about. I have roamed the Coliseum. Uh, in the tombs down there, uh, in the clubhouses, everything else. Steve McCaddy, who was a pitcher for the A's, was my broadcast uh, partner part-time when he was playing independent ball for two seasons. I have a lot of ties to that organization. Not the ownership, but the organization. Sure. He's part of the Alfredo Griffin era. Uh, of, of course. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so the situation is this. Anybody who is saying that the... People in Sacramento should be ashamed of themselves because they are trying to steal the A's away from Oakland. Need to shut up. Okay? Plain and simple. Because the situation with the A's in Oakland is dead. It mm -hmm. has been dead for a while. It was dead when the commissioner decided that he was going to pull the A's out of Oakland yep. for Las Vegas. Now, is Las Vegas the final destination? That is open to question. It really is because the financing's not in place. That gets to be a whole business discussion that we're not going to go to right sure. now. Sure. But the A's in Oakland is dead. And I'm going to prove that to you. Across the freeway from the Coliseum, next to the Toyota dealer, there used to be, and I'm going to emphasize again, there used to be an in and out burger. Is it there anymore? It closed last Friday night at midnight. Because the crime and destruction to employees' cars was mm. so bad. And God bless Oakland. And, and let me tell you, folks, I love the city of Oakland. Lake mm. Merritt, downtown, I got friends that live there, mm -hmm. everything else. I love it. But that town has been the ugly stepchild. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I'm allowed to use that term anymore, but I'm going to use it anyway. Okay. Of the Bay Area mm. for the entire time. Silicon Valley hasn't helped it. San Francisco, when it was its height, didn't help mm. it. And they never economically were able to become a part of the Bay Area riches. Mm -hmm. They're broke. Mm -hmm. They're dead broke. They don't have the money to play. Mm -hmm. And everybody knows it. They can't do anything. That team is gone. So no matter where the A's land, Portland, Vancouver, Nashville, mm -hmm. Charlotte, Sacramento, they're going to land someplace. 
But never, ever again is it going to be Oakland. The other reason why is because Charles Johnson, Larry Bear, and the San Francisco Giants yep. want them gone. Yep. So anybody who says, oh, Sacramento's trying to steal the A's, shut up. The 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 thing for me, and I, I, I agree with you, the situation with Sacramento and Seattle is not this. <clears throat> it's not it's not the the same deal. No. So I can if if you're a major league baseball fan and the A's are gonna be here and you want to go, like fine. I just know for me, it's not it's not the team, it's not Sacramento, it's not them it's just John Fisher. Yeah. It's like that's my problem. Yeah. Look, I'm not gonna support John Fisher whether he's in Oakland or Sacramento or Las Vegas or any of the cities you just named. I'm credentialed with Major League Baseball. Mm -hmm. I literally can go to any stadium in the country what a and in Canada. What a flex. I'm and, and be able to go to a baseball game. Yeah. I have not gone to an Oakland A's baseball game since 2020. Wow. And I not only can report on the games, I love the A's. Mm -hmm. I won't go. John yeah. Fisher. That's mm -hmm. why. Would you go if they were in Sacramento? No. Yeah. That's where I'm at. I'm not going to be anti Sacramento. I'm anti Fisher. Like, that's just, that's my deal. Yeah. I'm not against. Vivek Ranadive being like, yeah, hey, I want to try a major league team here, and this is my chance to to open that door. I'm not, I'm not against that. And real quickly, and, and then I'll get out of here. Everybody who's talking about this being from now until 28, it's not now until 28. No chance. It's it's now until at least 2030. Yeah. Just because if you remember when they built the Golden One Center, one of the things that they were concerned about in trying to get the time frame in is that they were worried about the steel superstructure to put the seats on mm -hmm. because there were it was so impacted they weren't sure that they were going to be able to get that done in time mm. well i'm just going to give you an example tragic example but yesterday or two days ago they had a major bridge go down right okay that's going to impact steel making all across the country for mm. the next five years so they haven't even started the plans let alone the materials build for a stadium oh, man. in las vegas You've been to Las Vegas recently. What are they doing in Las Vegas? They're building, building, building. They oh, don't yeah. have enough construction workers. They don't have enough materials. They don't have everything else. There is no way a stadium is going to be ready in 28. Yeah. 29, maybe, I doubt it, at least until 30. So this is not a three-year deal. It's probably a five-year deal at minimum. Well, that and Charlie, I, I'd add to that the building site that they're, they're talking about nine acres, which is exactly the size of what, of what the Kings took over the, the four city blocks. It's the same exact size, but you're talking about a stadium that is way bigger where mm -hmm. you go from an 18,000 seat arena to a 30 or 32,000 seat baseball diamond. Yeah. You got to remember the field is bigger. Everything is bigger. So where the, the Kings were able to slide like the, the Sawyer in there. Right. Mm -hmm. And some of the Doco stuff that was already there, there's not none of that space there. Nope. None of that because the stadium itself is like this gigantic. It's almost like the the ball that they built there. Like yeah. it's it's like like but they the sphere the, the sphere. Yeah. But the spot that they're going into, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, I, I like the sidelines. Everything's going to be horrible. So, like, look, I I think it's a gamble by Vivek, but also prove up that Sacramento can be that city. Sure. Then you got to find an owner. You got to find an ownership group. You got to find someone who we're talking about, like you need to find four or five billion dollars to build the stadium to pay for uh, whether uh, they wouldn't pay for relocation if they got the A's, but they would pay if they got an expansion team. You're talking at least two or three billion. That's oh, minimum. somebody is going to have to do all of that to build the infrastructure. And then you've got to have your minor league teams and all that stuff. Baseball really is a legacy. You have to have a lot of money yeah. to own and a baseball team. And on top of all that, um, <laughs> you're probably having to do all of everything you just laid out by 2028, 2029, if they expand in 2030. Yeah. Which is, I think, the earliest Jeff Passan said that they would think about expansion. Mm. I think so, yeah. So you'd have to do all, all that over the next four years or so. You know why Fisher's interested oh. in Sacramento, right? No. He's a real estate guy. No. He's talking, he's talking to he's talking to Vivek. Because if Las Vegas fails, he sees West Sacramento as a place where he could get together with Vivek, mm. co-own co the team, and build the West Sacramento skyline. 
Well, that and they have a huge, huge swath of land right there. Yeah. It's big. Mm. And the Kings and then still he can own... slap an old navy in Doko. Oh, there it is. <laughs> the Kings also <laughs> hey, beautiful. The Kings Ring still, the bell. <laughs> they still own two hundred acres oh, in Natomas. They do. Yeah. Uh, the remnants of the baseball stadium yep. are still out there. Fascinating. Wild. Man. That's it. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Charlie. All right. That's the Charlie O segment. That was a lot of fun. There it is. Can't wait to continue following this uh, John Fisher disaster film uh, that is playing out before us. All right. Um, we got to hit a break. We never got into why last night was so bad for the Kings. Mm. You want to do that? Sure. Yeah. Well, we can do that. Okay. We can talk about Sabonis right. and his... And his Couple his of slump, slump, his slump. He's really struggling lately. Struggle down bus to, down to 14, 14, and eight and a half a game. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, last night was a rough one for the Kings. We'll tell you why next on ESPN 1320 Sacramento Sports Leader. <sighs> Tay, I'm media. They would never consider that. Uh, if I would ever consider scouting for the Kings. Yeah. If I did all of this over again and started when I was young, I would have loved to have gone into the the front office side. Hmm. Uh, what's going on? I will say, like, I know this is, it's funny that Monty McCam, I, I find myself like for the most part, like who the players are that he's interested in and sort of where the direction that they go a lot of the time, like I see where he's going almost every single time. And I, like I don't disagree with a lot of what he does, but there are these like moments where you're just like, "Hey, you got a hole in in your rotation, and you got to fill it, and you actually have it's two holes. You need you need two players. It's not just one. And I don't care like falling in love with a player that you see overseas, like Sasha. That's fine, but I think at some point you got to. Like, how does he fit more than Trey Lyles? Because they basically play the same, the same position. I don't know why I turned on CNN. That's my bad. I mean, I don't. We might get a Sasha update from practice. I have no idea. It's possible, and I'm. I might try to book it down there, but like, there is not. A real window for me to get there on time. You want to jet early? I'll just chat chat with the chatty house for twenty minutes. Well, no, I mean, like, we could do a handoff, and I could uh, just I don't, jet I don't the handoff. Actually, think the handoff is happening today. Oh no, then that's fine. We'll just go. Uh, if, if I miss, I miss. It's fine. For the last like five seasons, the Kings have had practice at twelve forty-five or one o'clock. This year specifically, they moved it to twelve fifteen, and it's like virtually impossible for me to get from here at the station to the practice uh, facility on time. Fascinated to see where Michael Penix Jr. goes in the draft. Yeah, so am I. I've also never seen a quarterback prospect with as many surgeries as him. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. 
the injury stuff. He's definitely definitely has. I mean, you bring him in the whole time. You're like, how's how long can he last? Mm-hmm. You know, the ceiling is so high, but two season-ending injuries in college is a tough go. Yeah. It's also nutty that ESPN punted Todd McShay so Field Yates could be their draft guy. Is that who that is? Yeah. I think he's an AI creation. He he belongs on NFL Network along with Tom Pelissero, Ian Rappaport. Are him and the other guy not the same guy? Same uh, same dude. They both, uh, what's that guy's name? I'm a just Barry. saying. John? No, not Barry. They're not AI creations? No. They look like AI creations. They all, d- dude, they do. They look exactly like all the NFL Network dudes. Mm. Like Ian Rappaport, Field Yates, or not Field Yates, uh, Tom Pelissero, um, Jesse Palmer. Oh, yeah. All the same guy. Guys that can double as a host for The Bachelor? Thousand percent, yes. Got it. No, not Jesse Palmer. Who's the Jesse? Jesse Palmer is the he's Okay, then that's not who I'm talking about. Okay. He but does both. Also, yes. Yeah. Okay, here we go. I'm a dog. Now, back to the insiders with James Ham and Kyle Madsen, brought to you by Jiffy Lube on ESPN 1320. Jordan Palmer. Jordan Palmer was the name I was looking for, not Jesse Palmer. Okay. And Jesse Palmer does. Yes. He is the... a bachelor and a college football analyst. Yeah. 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 Yes. Um, I was thinking of Jordan Palmer. His, is that his brother? Who is on NFL Network, who looks like Tom Pelissero and that group of people. And they all vaguely resemble John Mulaney. Hmm. And okay. you've got Andrew Siciliano in there. He's kind of in that mix. Yeah. Just all the same dude. Okay. And then Field Yates also. And Jormer, Jordan Palmer is a younger brother. Oh, of Carson Palmer. Oh, then Jordan Palmer's not who I was talking about either. Huh. All right. This is going to annoy me now. Okay. Um, We need to go down. Tough night. Yeah. NFL. What is this guy's <laughs> name? James Palmer. James Palmer. That's his name. <laughs> Old Jimmy Palms. Um, <laughs> good, good, uh, good okay. name. Good name. If you'd like the context for that, check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash ESPN 1320. Also, twitch.tv slash ESPN 1320. We are hanging out with you until noon. Hey, Jesse, you want to come in for the handoff today? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Jesse's going to come in for the handoff. Oh, yeah. My man. All right. Uh, yeah. No D-Lo, no, no KC for the handoff. Uh, they have other business to attend to, so Jesse's going to pop in and do the handoff with us. Uh, they'll hang out with you until 4, and then they're going to be hanging out with you again after 4 because they're going to be down at Bar West for a Sweet 16 watch party. D'Lo, Casey, and Jesse will all be down there at Bar West in Midtown. That is sponsored by Michelob Ultra Superior Light Beer. Uh, and then James and I on Saturday. That's right. This Saturday, coming up, there will be an Elite 8 watch party with me and James out at Players Sports Pub and Grill. That is at 4060 Sunrise Boulevard in Fair Oaks, beginning at 3 o'clock. So 3 o'clock, James and I will be out there. Come out, say what's up, hang out with us. And uh, let's watch some college hoops. And someone said we might bring uh, Insider Sweatshirts. Oh. I'm just saying. The exclusive joints? Yes. There's a possibility of Insider Sweatshirts. Yo. So. Yo. That means that. Some of you in hey, the man. chat here, you probably need to roll up. That's wild. I was under the impression that was like, yeah, internal use. We got a giveaway we're going to use for, them, but we're just going to go hand them out. Uh, there might be a possibility. Those are tough to get. They are tough to get. Three o'clock. I'm not even joking. There's they're they're very limited run. You don't even um, want to know what I said to one of our salespeople out there who uh, <laughs> who asked if he could have one. I'm soft. I gave him one. You did. I know. I'm sorry. You were I'm soft. soft. You I'm gave him one. You felt bad. I, I did. Because I lit I him you up. dunked on him for no reason. I, I dunked on for no reason. I don't know if there's no reason. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> okay. I, no, I dunked enough. on him. Fair I dunked enough. on him. Fair I enough. mean, yeah. So James could have Euro stepped around this guy, but he forearm shivered him and then just elevated. And... I did. I did. <laughs> I did all of that. Just dragged it right across. No, never mind. Hang on. Uh... <laughs> oh, man. Um, Tough time for the Kings last night. The Warriors won. Doesn't really matter for for Sacramento. No. 
Um, the Houston Rockets, by the way, won again, 10, ten. in a row for them. They don't care. They don't. Did you did you hear Tari Eason after the game? Here's here's Rockets. This is awesome. Uh, here's Tari Eason, who hasn't played since January. He's out for the season with a leg injury. Here he is after the Rockets' overtime win, 132-126 in Oklahoma City. Super impressive win. No Shea Gildas Alexander for OKC, but still a very impressive win for the Rockets. Tari Eason was fired up. Warriors! Come out to play! Warriors! Come out to play! Yeah! I love that. Wow. This is so fun. Warriors at Rockets April 4th is going to be electric. I can't wait. It also gave us this. Yeah! 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 I'm going to be using the <laughs> heck out of that. Yeah, man. Uh, the Rockets are right there. They are a game back of the play-in. And man, shout out to the Rockets. I thought they were done. I thought they had their nice little run at the beginning of the year, and then they would tail off, and they'd Jabari Smith would be out for for a couple of weeks with a knee thing, and Jalen Green. Jalen Green, by the way, has been awesome. Holy smokes. He was kind of the guy that they were willing to move on from. I know. I mean, they offered, the rumor is, they offered him and three or four first-round picks for Mikhail Bridges at the deadline. Yeah. And, yeah. And someone said no? His last five games, starting uh, March 19th, 42-10-3. 26, 4, and 3, 41, 4, and 4, 27, 6, and 3, and then last night, 37, 10, and 7 with two steals and a block. Whoa. Like, oh my God. And he's doing it efficiently. So his three point percent or his, uh, his three point numbers in those games 7 of 13, 4 of 12, 7 of 11, 4 of 12, 7 of 11. Mm. I mean, just consistently. Nine he's on nine. a heater. Yeah, he's been awesome. Yeah. Uh, fascinating to see how that goes. He's averaging almost 20 points a game this season. Um, but yeah, the Rockets, good for them. I thought they were, I thought they were cooked. Mm -hmm. And now they've just won 10 in a row and right on the Warriors heels. Yeah, they're a game back. A Man, game it's, it's spectacular. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Uh, in King's news, the Lakers won again. And I know that we had kind of written LA off, at least I had, as being a worry for the Kings because it was like, man, looking ahead, it's Pelicans, Suns, Mavs, Clippers. There's so many teams mm -hmm. right there with Sacramento to worry about. Now the Lakers have won five in a row. Very quietly, very quietly a game and a half back. Yeah, they're two games back in the loss column, and the Kings have them uh, in the tiebreaker. Have the tiebreaker. So, so basically, yeah. they have to beat the Kings by three games in the final ten. Right? Yeah. That's So if they went, if the Kings go seven and three, and the war, uh, the, the Lakers would have to go ten and oh. I mean that's that's tough, no doubt. But you gotta watch. Yeah, we're adding the Lakers to the scoreboard. Watching, I think it's interesting, Kyle, because we always touch on, you know, like we look at the Kings' schedule, and then I I believe that we all think of the Kings' schedule differently than anyone else's schedule. Why? Because I don't think anyone fears the Dallas game, the Jazz game. Well, uh, the Dallas game, the Clippers game. The Knicks game, the Boston game, I just count as a loss. The OKC yeah, they game, great, but... the Suns, like, I don't think that's what you fear if you're the Kings, if you're Kings fans, if you're people mm -hmm. who cover the team. It's not that. It's a letdown against the Jazz. It's a letdown yeah. against the Nets. It's a letdown against the Blazers on the last game of the season. Mm -hmm. That's what you're, you're always focused on. It's like, okay, they can beat anyone. I mean, what are they? They're three and one against Denver. Yeah, they're you know most teams in the league, most of the teams in the Western Conference playoff chase, they either have the tiebreaker or or they're tied. I mean, the only team is what the Pelicans, yeah, I think who are four zero, mm -hmm. and then the Clippers, who they're down two one in the playoffs in, in but they the have series, and they have one more time. They're tied with the Suns, uh, with one more game to go. Um, but most of the teams in the West, you know, they're they're still up two one on the Thunder. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. The question is not whether they can win those games. I don't think there's a team left on their schedule. Uh, it's Boston. Boston. But that's true of every team in the league where I'm just chalking a Boston as a loss. Yeah. Except for when it's the Hawks without Trey Young. Yeah. <laughs> this is <wild>. Random. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, but that's that's every team in the league. That that's not exclusive to the Kings. Every other team there, 
the fear is not, oh man, the Kings just cannot beat that team. Mm -hmm. The fear is, hey, maybe they don't show up that night. Yeah. Maybe they get down 25 in the first half and punt. Like that's that's kind of that's more the fear than than anything. Um, and I think if you were if we went out to Golden One Center tomorrow, and which we'll we'll both be which doing, I will do. But if we if we did this instead at Golden One Center tomorrow and hung out outside the arena and just straw poll on Kings fans, said, Hey, um, are you more concerned that they are losing tonight or to Utah. Like rate rate your confidence level in those two games. Mm -hmm. More people would be like, oh, they're winning tonight for sure. And then losing to Utah. Yeah. Which is what you're saying. Like that's and that's the fear with this team. No, totally. Yeah. And I and I don't know why that fear is there, but I also I, I point this out. There are a couple of teams this season where they thump the Kings and then you expect the Kings to bounce back mm -hmm. against that same team. And the Kings don't. Mm -hmm. And so there is that fear with the Dallas just, yeah, they're enough different than they were before. Yeah. And so I, I, I don't I know. Just, here's my deal. Like Dallas, Dallas is playing really well. Like let's not get it twisted. Mm -hmm. um, if, if the Kings had done what Dallas is doing, we would be like, holy smokes, look at them go. So I want to give, I want to give them that respect. Dallas is not 36 points better than Sacramento. No, that is just not. They might Dallas could definitely win tomorrow. I'm done trying to have a feel for the Kings. I'm oh, done. I don't have I'm, a feel for this team. At I'm all. done because the other night, Tuesday night, I was like, they're winning tonight for sure. Mm -hmm. I feel great about tonight. At Friday, TBD. But I'm just I I'm I'm done guessing. I, I'm done going with the vibes because okay. I can't tell you. And I think that's the unknown. Is way, is way scarier than what their schedule looks like. Yeah. I don't know how to place this team. I, I don't know. I've got nothing. To do. Again, I, and I'm a guy who usually has a good feel, a good vibe for the team. Yeah. I just don't know. And, and I would like to tell you that, you know, like, oh, I'm super confident here or super confident there. No, there's there's nothing I can tell you. Like, I, I, I just don't know. Like, it, it, it felt like, hey, after they lose a game like they did Tuesday, they, they'll bounce back and, and play really well on Friday. I just can't. Okay. I thought after the Toronto game, they smoked Toronto. I'm like, all right, hey, they're going to go smoke the the Wizards and really get on a roll here. Nope, loss of the Wizards. Like, oh, oh, okay. Okay. Hey, they, they got a gritty win against the Magic. They're back on track. They got the Mavs. The Mavs are on the road. This is a great spot for the Kings. I love this for them. I think they're rolling tonight, get blown out by 36. Like, I just, I don't know anymore. Yeah. How much different would the Kings look right now if that, that Washington loss didn't happen? Significantly, yeah. Significantly. I've, got, I've got someone on on Twitter, Kyle, who says a oh. thousand likes or one point five billion to purchase the Timberwolves, and I'll drop the Kyle A. Madsen college talent show freestyle rap vid. This is Leo S. Um, I don't love that <laughs> because he has it, like he literally <laughs> does. I'm just saying. I don't love it's here. This. It's here on on Twitter. I. I, I have to, I have to live read. Hang on, hang on. Rap vid. Jesse Tapia here for the handoff. I'm in here. What's up, dog? Which one? What did College Town Rap Vid? You said he said a college talent show freestyle rap vid of Kyle. Wow. So so wait, how how do we get this out into the public? Wait, if Kyle gets one thousand likes, if this if this gets one thousand likes, or someone gives him one point five billion to buy the Timberwolves. Okay, well, we got like 300 in the, on YouTube right now. There's 300 likes right there. Oh, no. Kyle's getting nervous. I, I don't like say. any of this, bro. <laughs> the worst part is, the worst part is, is the Chatty House is creative enough and resourceful enough that they can probably just go find it. Oh, yeah, no. Like, the Chatty House probably will be sponsored. Like, they'll I'm be cooked, making money bro. and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm the cooked. Chatty House oh. is resourceful. <laughs> I've, got no, I've got no chance. Oh, I hate this. Uh, oh, boy. Wow. Oh, man. All right, Kyle. What's up, Jesse? What's up, guys? Hey, I'm really sorry about talking about the Celtics yesterday the way I did. No, like, seriously, when you guys were talking about it, I'm just kind of sitting there watching. It's like, yeah, like, none of this kind of matters at all. Like, even the 30-point losses or the 30-point wins, it's kind of like, get to June and we'll see what happens. Either yeah. I'm going to be really happy or I'm going to be crying. We'll see. <laughs> they have to do it this year. Yeah, no, it's literally. It's a must. It's a must. They're the 49ers, like you said. Yeah. Easily the 49ers. Like, yeah, they went and got 
Porzingis. They get Drew Holiday. Like, man, you're there every year too. It's like, yeah. like it's just at some point you just have to do it. Like the Warriors one was bad, but it's just now it's just you just have to now. There's yeah. no excuses. The Warriors one, the, the excuse was, well, it's their first time. The Warriors have been through it a bunch of times. Like, yeah. But now you've been there, you've done it. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. I, I'm not. Uh, Boston is so good, man. Every we've been doing a lot of net rating stuff. Like the oh, Kings yeah. net rating since it and Boston's always at the top with a hilariously larger net rating than everybody else. Statistically, they're one of the best teams, I think, ever. Of just all st- time. Statistically. I'm not saying like just the no, 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 yeah, yeah. Sure. stats looking yeah. at it. Like they have, I think they have the fourth best point differential ever. They're ahead of the yeah. 2017 Warriors, I think. Insane. Yeah. It's uh, 95 7 the game just it stole that and put a bunch of dot dot dots. I'm cash then. Just saying. Yeah. RIP. Yeah. Celtics just better saying. than 2017 Warriors. Throw it up there. <laughs> yeah. From Jesse Tapia. I know this has happened to me. <laughs> that, was a, that was a wild like month or whatever that warriors king series yeah i never want it ever to happen again no that was that was that was like i had to mute kenny. yeah that kenny got wild. muted yeah. yeah wow you guys were talking about the kings earlier though like what kind of team they are um i think i think they're a good team now but i think the issue is is that just everything that's taking place this season is kind of like caught up to them a bit because I think like the Washington do loss, I don't put that like the Washington loss as something where it's like, oh, yeah, something they've done all year. Like that was mm-hmm. kind of like a blip or whatever, because just because they've been playing better, they've kind of found yeah. their flow now. It's not kind of like, oh, they can't find the rhythm. Like Kevin Hurt is still not playing well. Like Duarte mm-hmm. is coming in. Like now they've kind of found it's like a new, not a new season, but it's just kind of like um, it's different now. You, you know what I'm saying? I agree. Yeah, I think it's inter- interesting, too. I mentioned it with uh, with Biederman. They've won two and lost one, won two, lost one, won two, lost one, won two, lost one. That's their last, like, what is that, 15 games yeah, or, or whatever it is. It's like there's a clear pattern, and it's just the strangest thing. Like, this team, they really do struggle to embrace success and to just, you know, there is no long winning streak mm-hmm. except for the six gamer at the beginning of the season. There, There's none of that stuff. So you're just like, you're at a loss. Like, I, I don't know what to make of them, and I, and I, I think it's fair for anyone to have the same question. I don't think they know. I don't. They don't know why things they walk out on the court and bad things happen. I, they don't. <laughs> I I know they don't. Like, well, they kind of know exactly what the yeah. problem is, but we're still just going to do it anyway. Well, they, they acknowledge as much after the games. Like, yeah. yeah, we know. Like, we come out against these lesser teams or whatever. It's just we can't figure it out either. So the the thing that that jumps out to me about the Washington game and then the Dallas game was they've been playing well enough lately. And Jesse, I think this is kind of what you're saying. They've been playing well enough lately that nothing happened in those games. It made me go, oh, man, like they, they've they been figured out. Mm-hmm. Like the last couple of weeks are an anomaly now. The fact that they've been as good as they've been defensively, like that was the problem all year. It's like, how do you figure out? Offensively, they're fine. They're going to they're gonna score points. If De'Aaron Fox, they have Demonis Sabonis, Malik Monk, they're, good, they're fine on that end. But can you get stops? Yeah, I think you look at the Dallas game. They gave it like what one thirty two or whatever. Like you kind of yeah, but even that's the outlier. Like as far as like the last ten or so games, like I don't think that's like oh like they're back or whatever. I think no, it's just the outlier right well, now. Well, and even that fine. even that to me was a product of their offense falling apart. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, they gave up so many fast break points and so many easy buckets because they were scrambling on defense because they weren't doing the right things offensively. I don't. I I saw nothing that happened against Dallas, and that's part of why yesterday it was kind of like yeah, lost, but you can still go get him Friday. I'm yeah, not just go one Friday. Yeah, I'm like, not. The, well, it's not ending season's not over. Like you just got to pick yourselves up on Friday. And like even if they were to lose, like, they make adjustments as a closer game. Like I'm I'm not gonna knock the Kings every time they lose. Stuff like that's just part of basketball or whatever. But now I think what's different for me is just now that it looks good finally. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm also looking like I don't remember the last time I felt like they really like let go of the rope. Right. Yeah. So yeah, like the, sure. maybe the loss to Denver where they um they came up way short against Denver, like yeah. one seventeen to ninety six on February twenty eighth. But again, they had just beat Denver twice, like the two weeks before. Mm-hmm. So it just doesn't feel like that, that that's part of who they are anymore. That sort of, oh, this game's over and just kind of walk away. Yeah. So I'm intrigued. I mean, most of even like their losses, they've been they've been pretty good losses. Uh, you know, they've they've been battles, right? So again, you don't like to lose to Washington, but it's 109, 102. That's not a horrible loss. The loss to the Knicks. 98 91 and that's with Jalen Brunson literally turning into like prime Isaiah Thomas unless the game too where like you kind of the Kings were like just physical with them too like it was like playing New York's tough they kind of yeah. they hung around they didn't get they didn't get beat up the whole time yeah, yeah they the, themselves well the Rockets sure. 112 104 that's not a bad loss to a team that's coming up 
the Bulls. We, everyone circles the Bulls. Oh, what a horrible loss. 113 to 109. I mean, it's a four point loss. So they haven't really been stomped. They haven't had like that embarrassing loss for a long time. Been highly competitive and in every game. And uh, I don't know. Well, because you look at it too, because a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, I was talking to Dilo and KC, and I was like, I don't feel good about this team at all if they get to the plan. I am terrified. Like, if they get to the plan, I'm not even sure they're going to get out. Now I feel a lot better. Just, I do too. Because they're just playing good basketball mm. now. They're playing Kings basketball. They're playing, yeah. I don't even know if you call this Kings basketball because they're playing defense now. So this is not something you've seen over the last few years. So they're just, they get to the play and like, say they don't make top six, fine, but they get to the play and like, I like their chances against whoever. They're playing the Kings basketball Mike Brown has wanted them to play since he got here. Yeah, there it is right there. Yeah. That's, that's more what it looks like. And I'm with you, Jesse. I don't, I, I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, they can win a title now. Yeah. I don't think it's that, but I feel so much better about their chances in a playoff game where the games get tight and the games get shorter. And I feel so much better about their chances to, hey, they need two stops and a bucket down the stretch to close this game out. Well, a month ago, it was kind of like, well, they can win if just everything works out that right. night. If it's just that given right. night, they're good. Now it's just kind of like, yeah, they're playing good basketball the way defense or whatever. They can win because of this, this, and that rather than, well, hopefully they show up that day. Or hopefully they hit every three they take. That's exactly. it. That's it. They yeah. have another pitch now yep. where they did not before. Before it was, eh, that three is far, they don't. Yeah. And that's just not conducive to, to winning four out of seven games four times. Mm -hmm. But now, hey, Threes aren't falling, but we're going to make this a 98 to 102 game. They yeah. Kind of and I like, think they can do that now. I mean, it's all hindsight now, but like, what if they threw in Keon Ellis maybe a couple months ago and stuff? Like, how much different it would look? But, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's all questions for the offseason, too. Yeah. Next season. Yeah. I do kind of wonder that, though. <laughs> like, if they had just Keon from the jump. It, well, it's like, like Ham said earlier, it's like he's not better than Herder, but he just fits. He connects mm -hmm. it all. He's different. Yeah. Yes. Like yeah. now, De'Aaron and those guys don't have to like worry about covering for Herder and stuff like that on defense. Like you said, Sabonis doesn't have to worry about Herder's guy getting to him or whatever. I'm not yeah. trying to pick on Herder; it is what it is. It's just now, it's just a little bit more connected. Jesse Tapia, lighten it up. Uh, he is the producer for D'Lo and KC. D'Lo and KC are coming up next. James and I will be hanging out with you tomorrow, and make sure to go hang out with D'Lo and KC tonight at their Sweet 16 watch party at Bar West in Midtown, sponsored by Michelob Ultra Superior Light Beer. We've been the insiders. We're sponsored by Jiffy Lube. We'll talk to you tomorrow on ESPN 1320, Sacramento Sports Center. Bye. Goodbye, friends. Thanks, guys. Hit the thumbs up for us. Appreciate y'all. David, after yesterday, I'm staying away from all the Hogan stuff.
Yeah, I'll be out there, Zay. We'll come to that one too. Watch party. Awesome, man. See you tomorrow. Yep. yep. Appreciate you. Okay. What's up, Dr. David? Check one, check two. Yeah. Hey, Rex. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got him screaming, D-Lo, KC, D-Lo, KC, D-Lo, KC. We got them screaming D-Lo, KC, D-Lo, KC, D-Lo, D-Lo We your number one spot, we your number one spot for some sports, huh? Got the city going crazy when we work, huh? We top two, but we ain't two, we in first, huh? And when you need the real, we is who you search, huh? D-Lo, KC, D-Lo, KC, D-Lo, KC, D-Lo We your number one spot, spot Let's go, baby, we in here, come on, baby. yeah, 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 yeah. One more time for the vibe. Hey, One more time down. for our opening day. Yeah. Well, Kenny, Kenny got new ears today, so now he can actually hear us when he talks. That explains so much about the history of this show. Because for the first time in four years, Kenny can actually hear what I'm saying. It's amazing. Oh, man, it's a whole new world, like Pocahontas said in, uh, in that movie. You remember that one? I don't know. I don't, I don't know if think I like that. It. Was Pocahontas? Yeah, it was a whole oh, new. No, or, no was it? Was it Little Mermaid? I think that's a Little Mermaid. Oh, okay. Or is it Aladdin? No, it might Ooh, be you might have it. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. it's Aladdin. That sounds it is, right. It is. Boy. It's Princess Jasmine. Aladdin. It's good Disney that's, that's knowledge right there. Me. It's a bad job by me. Shout out the genie. Um, shout out the Aladdin show at Disneyland too. That used to be fire. It's a bad job by me. Look at Kit. Look at Kyle heard Disneyland and he got excited. <laughs> Kyle heard Disneyland. He's like, huh? Huh? <laughs> Y'all need me? You want me to come in? You want me to come in? Right. <laughs> yeah. Draymond just got ejected again. Oh, man. Hate come to on, see man. it. Come on, man. Let's Hate do, to see man. it. Let's... Yeah, can I say this? Last night sucked. Last night was terrible. Nothing, nothing, literally nothing went the King's way. I mean, look, first of all, let them know who we are. No, we got to talk yeah. about. We got to talk. Well, I'm Damian Barling. The ultimate needle mover. He's Kenny Caraway. Yes, sir. Acknowledge me. Man, are we in here with the Thursday, March 28th edition of D-Lo and KC. We outside today. We out at Bar West, 2724 J Street, Midtown. Come through, hang out. Immediately following today's show, uh, we are headed down to Bar West, man. We'd love to see you to watch the NCAA tournament with us. So, you know. Before uh, KC uh, takes the air. Uh, it's CBS 13 with our That's crew right. over there That's to break right. everything yeah, shout down. Shout out to our guy, Jay Gayton, to our girl, Sarah Hodges, and to me. We're going to be on there uh, following the last CBS game. So that'll be, that'll be, that's always fun. It's always good times. Good stuff. But, you know, we're talking about last night, how disastrous, disastrous it was, how terrible it was. And it was that. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, there was another really bad night about three weeks ago for the Kings. This might have superseded it. This isn't the new worst night um of the season for the kings but then you got you know and and i like the guy i like the guy there's no shade to him but kelly Oubre, 
You want to go around well cursing out the the officials. Well. I'm sitting there watching the game. Kawhi Leonard clear, clear lane to the basket. Like, oh, I got a clear lane. Why are you fouling? Mm. Not once, but twice. Mm. And then, Kelly, you get an inbounds pass and you weren't strong enough with the rock. Just damn near throw it out of bounds. And then, Kelly Oubre, you get the tip. And with 1.5 seconds to go, hell, 0.5 seconds to go, you said, no, nah, let me go to the cup. What are you doing? Shoot the J. And then, and then he went out. See, that's the problem with, with, with this society in basketball culture right now. And then he want to go to the refs and curse out the refs. Bro, you had four mistakes in the final 30 seconds. He did, but he was fouled. That that doesn't. Fouled foul by who? At the he, end of the game, that last. That he was fouled by Paul George. Refs acknowledged it as well. Yeah, he was fouled that by Paul George. That, that wasn't no foul. It, no, I, would, on, I wouldn't man. want that He call. fouled Paul George. I, would, I wouldn't George want that call him. in that situation. Oh, did he technically foul him or whatever? Yeah, cool. All he right. fouled him like he he made a lot the, of to contact be, with to him. To be honest with you, I got to see it again because I hadn't really I like, I broken down it. the film. I don't even know if it would have been on time. It was. It was Cause on time? My, yeah, because Mike Breen kept saying that. Because Mike Breen kept talking about the shot, the shot, the shot. I, and, and maybe he corrected it and I just missed it. Mm. But the the point, was, and, and again, I have the benefit of synergy in front of me. Mm. It's a split second. I actually have it pulled up because I was looking at it this morning. Um, it's not the shot. It's the foul. It's where the foul took place. The foul looks like it took place with like 0.3 or 0.2 seconds. Let me see here. Let me see here. All right. This will break right there. There's 0.3 on the clock. Yeah. That's a foul. Uh, that's not a foul. That's a foul. I don't Come care on, what the officials say. It works. So, so verticality doesn't, doesn't it's matter. Not vertical. He's going straight up. It's not vertical. No, he's not. He's going straight up. The hands they are straight see. up. The body straight up. No, he's what not. What are we talking about? The ref said um, after the game they thought he went straight up, but they acknowledged that he did not. He's not straight up. It, Kelly Oubre running into him is what makes him not go straight up. He's initially going – when he leaves his feet, he's going straight up. He's straight up. Look at him. He's straight. Uh, Kelly runs into him, and that's that's where he goes over. And when Kelly runs into him, he does a good job of not lowering his arms. His arms stay straight. No, that's not, not a foul. The refs nah, are wrong, like they always are. Well, they are always wrong. And Kelly Oubre making ten mistakes doesn't matter. But that was, the, 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 it doesn't erase that. That was a foul, especially after the fouls you called on the other end. That was a foul. The, what what fouls on the other end? The blatant fouls of smacking the guy no, on the arm no, by not. Kelly Oubre. Well, if you, <laughs> what did Kelly Oubre do to you? Yeah, he lost. Well, he did lose. The that's game. what he did to me. He lost the game. And this was I after, needed that. And this was after Shavano's heroics. I was preparing. Shavano. I was preparing yeah. a pro buddy tweet, but got taken away from us. <laughs> Shavano's moment in Sacramento got too. taken away from us. That was big time shot by by buddy. It was. <laughs> yeah. That's a foul. It's also the refs like, are wrong. Refs stand on business. Say, yeah, we do. We, it's, 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 wasn't enough contact. Like, oh, oh, we do. We got this wrong, and that's only because Nick Nurse went at him the way that they did. Nick Nurse was well. So, so I uh, help. Did you watch the end of the game? Mm -hmm. Help me understand. The quad box was popping last night. Shout out what, YouTube TV. What happened? Because I had the volume down, so I didn't get to hear what was going on. I didn't get to hear why Nick Nurse was so upset. They. Did they, the foul that was, they called for Maxi. did they overturn that and say it wasn't a foul? Because it wasn't a foul. Uh, no, he was calling. So that was a dumbass review in my opinion. Yeah, it was stupid on the, I, they called a foul, right? They called a foul and the Clippers on refuted. the ground. Mm -hmm. He was calling for the challenge. For it to be in the air, for Nick it to Nurse be on was? the line. Yeah. And I thought this might get overturned yeah, I was about to, and it say, not be a foul. I was like, shut up. Nick like Nurse. he he may have like completely like blown this. Yeah. Um, but no, he was calling for this the foul to be in the air. Did they call the foul? They did call the foul. <laughs> These guys are awful. They did that wasn't a foul. foul. Uh, how do you it, it, how do you look at that and say it was a foul? The only thing I can think of is one of the replays. Like it looked like he he hit him with his arm, but I thought I, when I honestly <laughs> thought Nick Nurse just threw this game away trying to get a 
a, a shooting foul and it's going to get overturned into a non-foul. Right. So what, what I thought happened, because once again, I watched it with no volume on. What I thought happened was a foul was called. They reviewed it, saw that it wasn't a foul, but the ball went to Kelly Oubre. The possession should have been with the Sixers. And I thought that's what happened the whole time. They actually upheld it and said, yeah, it was a foul. That These guys are awful. <laughs> How do you look at that and say this guy who just loses well, his footing falls? He just falls and say it's a foul. Yeah, he fell. That's what he, that's what he did. He fell. <laughs> and they said, nope, he, he got fouled. He fell. And you want me to be like, yeah, the ref said that was a foul. These guys stink. Well, they're not good. Tyrese Maxey had a rough, rough final minute. Yeah, he couldn't keep his footing. He fell twice. <laughs> He fell twice. It was it was six. <laughs> that is one of the worst turnovers in history. The one with uh with, the backcourt with, joint. Yeah, yeah man, that's that tough. is one of the worst in history. That's tough. that's tough. My man just fell and passed the ball <laughs> to uh what's boy's name? Uh, uh, coffee. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's brutal. Just <laughs> brutal. Come on, man. Even Buddy's like, "What are you doing, bro? What are you doing?" But all this got me turned up because it was just and an awful night. yeah, yeah, no, this got you turned up. This is all moments after the Orlando Magic are down one with under two minutes to go and couldn't even get a shot off. Come on, man. Come on, a 24 second violation with under two minutes down one. Steph then proceeds to assassinate you oh. for the next 90 seconds. They get what they deserve. Woo. Come on, uh, Orlando. I mean, first of all, the fact that Orlando, and I like Orlando, but I mean, what you, these guys had 37 points at halftime. That's awful. Yeah, it was bad. That was a, that was rough. That, that was these, rough. It was almost like uh, uh, Golden State's defense didn't die when dude got oh, thrown out three minutes in. Almost the like they got better. They had better players on <laughs> the floor. Okay. <laughs> KC said, we're we're in the we're, we're doing the the KSFM stuff. He's like, hey, Draymond got thrown out. I'm like, the game didn't even start yet. What are you talking about? Draymond got thrown out. I'm sitting there, Draymond I'm sitting there thrown out. looking at the game and he's going in on the ref. And I'm like, that's crazy. They're not like giving him a tech or anything. There was no more text to give him. <laughs> he had been thrown out. Who knew? That's embarrassing. We got to talk about that. Yeah, we, we will, man. But again, it t- Warriors win. Lakers win. Don't, don't, don't look over your shoulder because they right there. Mm. Uh, Rockets win, which I guess is fun. That keeps the race for the 10th spot mm. uh, open. But uh, as we just mentioned, the Warriors uh, beat the Orlando Magic last night without Draymond Green, who told his guys way to hold it down without him. Okay. <laughs> Okay, bro. They, 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 it's more like they, they hold it down improved. when you're around. Yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly what it is. What's this guy talking about? Hey, I got, I got something that it's not epiphany, but mm-hmm. I just, I just want to speak on something real quick when we, when we come back. Kings also, related, or is this about your ears? No. Okay. Neither, actually, okay. but okay. we can we can talk about my ears. I guess this we don't is, need to. this is great. This is awesome. But um, NBA wait till, related. <laughs> wait till you hear Mitch for the first time. <laughs> wait till you hear Mitch for the first time. NBA related, and actually, they're both NBA related. I got a statement, and then I need my flowers. I need my flowers. All right. I need my flowers from a lot of people out there. I need my flowers. Okay. I'm calling for him. All right, dude. You can get your get your Pro Flowers account ready. K- Casey was right about something, I guess. <laughs> Stilo and Casey here. We're just getting started. We're happy you're here with us. It's Stilo and Casey uh, on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320. We talking baseball at all today? Yeah, Other than it started. Yeah, I mean, Giants fans are talking pretty nice before the season starts. You guys might need to... Give someone their flowers the way you guys are talking. No, and so yeah, I'm I'm gonna talk about it. I'm gonna talk about it. I'm just saying I'm gonna talk about it. I'm gonna talk about it. I got I I I'm aware. I'm aware. Just saying. They, I mean they need to settle down just a little bit, just a little bit, because I did see the opening day lineup and you need to 
the middle of the lineup ain't exactly uh, goddamn Bonds and Kent in, in, in 02. So let's sit down a little bit. But well, you got to go to the steroid about. guy for that. Do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. Everybody else probably doing it. Jimmy G doing it. Uh, No need to cut anything for me. Like, I'm not going to have time today. But I have the Hogan clip that I'll use for, like, tonight or tomorrow. And then um, you cut something else I was going to use. Yeah, I can use that tomorrow. So let me be be good for today. The Otani less angels kicking things off. Does he have a date that he's going to start playing? Oh, Otani? Oh, Otani less angels. Yeah. Nope, Russell, I'm staying away from that one. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> well, they want me, they want me to stir it up again. They want me to go Hogan and Jordan again. Mm. <laughs> Jordan Brand Classic at the Barclays Center. I wish those would come out to the West Coast. Actually, I think Jordan Brand came to Vegas a couple of years ago. It's the closest out West they come. I'm glad everyone can still get excited for baseball this year, too. At least most of us. Like, the Red Sox are out here paying their players on afterpay now and stuff like that. Oh, well. I think the first day of baseball is always exciting, and then I think tomorrow people go back to not caring. The thing, the thing about baseball that I love – I really like at least is it's on every day every day you can watch the giants every day no he got his ears clean <laughs> specifically it was just one ear and i didn't know it was a problem until now it's like oh yeah yeah Hearing different out here. All right, Quiddy, settle down. We don't, we don't need all that. Calm down, Quiddy. Where are you at again, man? Because you like the the Bucks, Braves. You you in the South or you in South? Where you at, Quiddy? Yeah, I mean, come on, young sir. Like, what? Come on, man. This, and it just makes me—it makes me think about some things. Oh, buddy, buddy! I remember watching that play, and he wanted to shoot it before that, and he said, "No, I'm going to do the right." Look at this fool. Are you? And then I didn't foul him. What the hell? Just, oh gosh, Kelly Oubre. Seriously, what this. did Kelly Get Oubre do here. to you? He lost the game. That's what he did. Let's not forget that play. I forgot about that play. Get that shit out of here. Look at it. Three, two, one. Let me go to the cup. What? Pull up. <laughs> I didn't even see that. That's funny. That's funny. You see the latest Paul George um, thing on his contract? I guess the Clippers aren't meeting his demands or whatever. I think Keith Pompey tweeted that out. He might be on his way out of there. Well, he's also like, Keith tweeting too, like, I think the Sixers are going to try and go after him. Yeah. Yeah, I've been hearing that. So, yeah, I'd have to see that. They're saying it was a slight drift to the left. 
on the All right, man, let's just get this over with. What do you want your flowers for now? Well, we'll start with the flowers and then we'll go with uh, my observation. Okay. What year was that again? I can't remember. It doesn't matter. I don't even know what you're talking about. A lot of people said I was crazy. For saying, yo, still Jalen Green is, he's that dude. I know y'all like Cade and all this other stuff. And Cade is a fine basketball player. He's really, really good. But Jalen Green is that dude. And they'd be like, Jalen Green? He's not even better than Evan Mobley. All right, guys. No, no, we're no. We're not giving you. you we're not giving you flowers for saying the third pick in the draft was gonna be good. No, I said he was I said he was gonna be better than Cade and Evan. Said any yeah. of those things that you just said. Roll, get the tape back. Literally everybody. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? You don't get flowers, get your boy, dude. No, Literally, that's no, your boy. He came no, to the party with not, you. That's no, your boy. No, Literally, everybody. Said no, that. no, no. Literally, no. what are you doing right now? What are you doing? Who? No, who? Look, I'm not gonna say who? no one said that to you. But if this is a Twitter conversation, will you keep it on Twitter? It because no one was the chatty house. Who was all no that? one did. Well, I mean, you, you, all right, in the chat house, if you said this, please come forward. What are you talking about? Every, I was a one man wolf back now. Oh, now, for now, God. Now, all of a sudden, Thanks, now all of a sudden, I wasn't a one man wolf back. All right. You all right. can't be serious. I said, Jay, so remember, we had the conversation. Remember, we had the conversation. You may remember this. I said, yo, and this is where I, full transparency. I said, yo, Jalen Green is the best player in this draft. Jalen Green's the best player in this half. Now, remember, I said, somebody said, all right, so if you're the Pistons GM, would you have the Coco Jones to not take Cade? Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't know if I'd have the Coco Jones not to take Cade. But Jay, but that was the conversation. I remember that. That was the conversation, That's right? That's not what you just said, That's, though. I remember that. Everybody said Cade is way better than Jalen. I are was you talking one. about Brian Winhurst? Like, who are you talking about? Who didn't say that? Let's let's start there. Well, did you guys I, say Jalen was way better than Cade? I don't remember. To no, be I, I I know we didn't say Jalen was way better than Cade. I know I asked questions about Cade, and you were the one who were like, "No, nah, Cade's him. He's a, he's, he's, a, he's a bad boy." And I didn't say Cade's not good. I said, "Yeah, I, I'm like we're sh like this is definitive. Like Cade is the one because there's no talk of anyone other than Cade." Yeah, no, no, Cade's the one. Say? That was it. What did you just say? What did he just say? Did you just hear him? He said there was no talk about anybody other than Kate. That's what I've been saying. That's I'm, what I've been saying. So then who I was the only one that said, yo, Jalen need to be looked at as number one pick. You didn't say that, though. Yes, roll, I did say literally, roll the tape. I did you say that. You literally just said you wouldn't have the balls to do it. I, I said, I don't know. Because somebody presented the question. I don't question. think that's what you did. Cause, cause I, I don't, no, no, no. Because nah. I presented the question. I think you remember the conversation. 99.9% .9 accurate till you get to your answer. The that question, was not your answer. The question was presented to me for a reason. You don't get, no, it doesn't matter. This is dumb. You don't <laughs> get any flowers. The question, you know the no, question you was presented, to, on you you was presented the question. So, no, I didn't. Somebody you, asked me that. I told you somebody asked me that. You you said, okay, then somebody someone, asked me, would someone, you have the Coco Jones to take Jalen over Cade? Because off the I was so loud about Jalen being the best. Then someone off the show asked you because you brought that conversation here. That's that, well, all I'm saying is if, if you're following, and you me, said it, it, so it was I a conversation. So, so, so look, that, that it doesn't matter. That you goes, don't get no flowers. No, I definitely no flowers. get flowers. No, no, because I was no obviously flowers. being loud enough no. for long enough for somebody to say, Oh, so you take him over, K no number flowers. one. Come on, man. you can get Absolutely. flowers, Absolutely. but they're not, you no, they're not roses. No, you are not see. roses. We're no, not giving you no roses. flowers. Why would I be asking uh, you can get randomly? You can get carnations. Yeah, you can. Go go pick some yeah, from outside. There's a dandelion on the side of the there road. You go. Yeah, Give him the dandelion. Here, take this. You don't get nothing for that. Get Give out me of my here. damn flowers. None. Give me my Absolutely damn flowers. Absolutely none. Hey, Cancel your hey, orders. Hey, Goodness gracious. Hey, hey. That boy going crazy. Yeah, he's nasty. He's he nasty. I had some numbers right on now. him. Did I did Woo. I put him in the notes? I had some numbers on him, man. They, I, I might have wrote him in for right later. Now. Here they are. 28.9 on 49, 42, and 83 in the Rockets' last 14 games. Everybody's focused on the win streak, rightfully so. I get it. It's at 10. They're 12 and 2 mm. in the last 14. 
And that and and that's 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 basically 29 points per game for Jalen in that stretch. I think I saw something. Um, oh man, where did I, I saw it? This the numbers, but I think in like the last five games, he's averaging like 35. Yeah, I mean that that uh, I can I can actually give you that because I have the. He's going. Crazy you said last right five. Now. Yeah, he scored 42. Yeah, it's 34.6 in the last five games on 52 percent from the field, 49 percent from three mm. uh and 82 percent uh round up 83 percent from the free throw line uh about seven rebounds eight assists and a steal and a half mm. to go along with that over the last five games the totals 42 points 26 points 41 points 27 points and 37 points uh in a win against the oklahoma city thunder last night mm. really impressive stretch for the rockets really really impressive stretch for that kid, Jalen Green. Hey, man. So give me my flowers. No. I'm expecting by the end of the day. You get nothing. Go pick a dandelion while you go touch the fence and back. <laughs> yeah, make a wish while you're at it. You get some French fries at, at Far West. Uh, I was, I was the only one. I was the only one out here in these streets saying the best. Not one of the best. Anyway. And you still didn't have the balls to take him number one. I said, I don't know if I would. That's I'd have to think about it. not what you said. You said I wouldn't I said, do it. I said, I don't know if I'd do that. See, so That's what are we giving you flowers thing. for? The same thing. It's the same. It's what? If, All right. Uh, it's so there's a di there's not a difference between no, I don't know no, and I wouldn't. No flowers. Casey wants flowers. No okay? flowers. Just to simplify this down. Casey hey. wants fly flowers for saying the second pick of the draft could have been better than the first pick of the draft. Everybody was saying Evan was better than him. No flowers. Hey, give me my damn flowers. I'm snatching them right now. You get give me my flowers. Like 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 Jesse said, go snatch them dandelions. <laughs> So, so now for my NBA statement. Statements and flowers. Jesus, what a start to this show. Hey, man. I, I, still, I still stand with, I think this is going to be really, really tough for them to end this season. But I don't know if you want to see the Suns in the playoffs. Hmm. <laughs> this team is built for the postseason. But yeah, that's, that's exactly what they're built for. Like, who wants to see KD, Bradley Bill, and Devin Booker? Like, like it's not going to be Royce O'Neal. It's like, all right, KD, Book, like, take us home. Them boys are built for a series. And if they mess around and get in, and I'll go a step further, if they mess around and play Denver, there's something. I know Jamal Murray didn't play last night, but there's something about the, the matchups or something that they give Denver fits. I'd have to see, like, if they match up, I'd have to really dive into it to say, hey, I'd pick Phoenix over them. But that then, Phoenix, you don't play. I, everybody needs to hope Phoenix gets knocked out in these playing games. Tell me they might not be in the play-in. I know. Tell me I why know. Phoenix is built for the playoffs. Those three guys that they are then when 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 the game kind of slows down the way it does in the playoffs. When it's really about the matchups, when you look at a situation where, hey, I need three defenders, you know, to to even give these guys problems, you're not ever going to stop them. But to give these guys problems, who who got three defenders to do that? Because if a really good team got two perimeter defenders, and then that leaves another person, Bradley Bill, Book, KD, somebody with a with a bad mismatch. Hmm. I and Grayson Allen is shooting the ball well from three. Um, if Nurk is able to stay healthy and you get him in the right matchup and he's able to play, he's a problem. I and you and look, you know where this is coming from. Good old KC. Who hates Phoenix more than me? <laughs> Who hates the Suns more than me? Nobody. I don't like the Suns, but damn. They they handled the Nuggets last night. Once again, no Jamal Murray. I understand that. But Denver had a hell of a time with him three weeks ago. They couldn't stop uh What's my man's name? The backup, Eubanks. Jokic couldn't stop Eubanks. They hmm. couldn't stop KD. I don't even. Th I don't think Book played in that game. I think, but I think uh, that was the game after Book got hurt. Yeah, I can't remember the last one. For some reason, I remember Eubanks. I don't remember Book. Anymore. Yeah, you. But think, like I know what you're saying. Like things are getting really lumped up now in that in that West between four and. Nine, mm -hmm. so they might not even be in the plan. But if if you get them in a playing situation, I think a lot of the West 
needs to hope that they get knocked out. And if they kinda, get in the playoffs, they they could be dangerous. We kind of slept on this year. I don't know if it's just because the past years or whatever with him, but KD, he's been KD this year. Mm-hmm. Like he's KD. He's back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like he like top like he's, top ten all time. Like that guy's here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm not there yet, though, with okay. Phoenix. I'm not there. A point taken and understood mm-hmm. the big three. Um, I just I just keep an eye on how do the rest of those guys do in the playoffs? Mm. Uh, Grayson Allen has actually played really well this mm-hmm. season, for the most part. Well, not for the most part. He has played really well. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought Bull Bull was a, a a pickup that made sense. I don't know that he's going to work in every series, mm-hmm. but I don't know why he wouldn't. Right? He gets stressed for. There's a lot of things he could do. Yeah. I'm not there yet, but I get it. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to fight anyone who says that. I'm not there yet, though, in and terms I- of a series. I don't want to play Phoenix in a one game playoff. Well, there's that too. But like I'm not I'm not there to where I'll 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 start, you know, moving them along this bracket if they're uh if they're a top six team or if they advance in the play in and, and get a series. I feel like it, like once again, I feel like they're they're a little bit of a I don't know exactly what it is, but there's something there that Denver Denver's not a hundred percent comfortable going up against Phoenix. Hmm. Something there. What, what do you think about Denver? You've been kind of like everyone's been kind of like putting them in the finals, but you've been kind of fighting that. Yeah, we ain't uh, I just don't, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't see that they're just nobody can beat them. That that's kind of what I push back on. I think they can get back to the finals. Um, I think they're a hell of a team. It, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, but this whole now. Uh, Nobody can touch those guys. That, yeah, I, I think that's the that's national right. narrative. I think that's yeah, the that's national true. narrative. That's like it's Denver, they just they want to justify their MVP picks. That's why they're oh, saying there's that, that too. There's that, that too. They, they want to justify their the, Jokic pick. That oh, that's the other thing I was going to equate to Phoenix. I think Phoenix could be this year's Lakers, where last year sure. the Lakers were just like, okay. man, we just got to get in, yeah. and we like our matchups. We like what yeah. we can do. I think I think Phoenix can can be that version. The Lakers could be this year's Lakers. I don't think the Lakers are as good this year. If I could throw another team in there, I'm just making conversation. Um, another team turned it up. What about the Kings? I think the Kings, I think they can get. Do you think I, they have the star power for that kind of, like, to take them that kind of far? Because like, I would say the Lakers late in the season started turning it up, found their flow. Mm-hmm. Suns, I think, found, found finding their flow and stuff like that. Kings finding their flow. Can they do that or do they have the star power for that? It's really, I feel like it might be matchup based with those guys, but. Remember, we talked about it about a week ago, and I think we all kind of saw it the same way. Like, they can they can win a series. They can, they can win a series. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people looked at it before the season as they have a ceiling of first round and out or mm-hmm. something like that. No, mm-hmm. I think their ceiling's a little higher. I think their ceiling's a little higher. And if they were to get in and, and play, just, just for argument's sake, they got in at the seven. Mm-hmm. And played. I don't know what the standings are. I it'd think be Minnesota. They'd, they'd be Minnesota at this at this yeah. exact moment. It'd be Minnesota if they played Minnesota and OKC in those two rounds. They can't win both of those series. They could. I mean, it really is kind of matchup based. If you could get to the the conference finals, if you're the Kings, I think OKC would be the one where it kind of breaks right for you. Mm. I think if that's the one. Mm. What you think about Minnesota? <clears throat> I like Minnesota. Ant Man's kind of turned it up. Nas Reed's um really stepped in since the Towns. I like I like I'm I like Minnesota a lot. They play defense too. I think that's a big plus. Mm-hmm. And like we were talking about Jalen Green earlier, just Ant's starting to tear it up and break out right that's now my too. Boy, right there. You I see- don't think very much can happen. And I'll take this down to the Lakers and the Warriors. I don't think there's very much that could happen in the Western Conference where anyone would go, man. I'm really surprised by this Western Conference Finals match. Now they might say Sacramento, mm-hmm. but we're smarter than that. There's nothing, there's not a team in here that I can't see advancing to the conference finals. Not one. Mm-hmm. And that includes the Warriors and Lakers. The Warriors can't get to the conference finals. Yeah, I'll push I don't back on that. I think one. so, yeah. but I, I don't, would if the Warriors got to the conference finals, I wouldn't be surprised. I'd be surprised if the Lakers did too. Lakers are playing really well right now. This is kind of their thing, too, which is yeah. first. 75% of the season doesn't matter as long as we're turning it up and playing. I mean, you heard LeBron yesterday. Yeah. I'm not worried about the seating. Like, mm-hmm. I, I've never, 
he didn't say this, but mm-hmm. it's been, he's never missed a playoff game. Mm-hmm. He's played damn near 300. He's never missed a playoff game. Now, see, I don't think they can beat Denver. So if they if they play Denver in the first round, like a one eight, it might be more of the same from last year. See, Kenny kind of like mentioned be- earlier breaks it all open in the West. If the Suns get Denver in the first round and the Suns get past there, it's literally mm. anyone's game. Mm. Maybe right. maybe my thing is I'm just not sold on Denver. Not not mm-hmm. sold on Denver like right him with a pen. Right, right. No, I feel the same way. Is it Seth Davis line sharpie him through? Like I'm not yeah. like that with Denver. Yeah, I feel the same way. And I, I mean, all this has been shaken for me as well, though, because the Clippers have just fallen off the face of the earth. Well, see the the, the I, I think with all of these teams, there's a certain level of, you know, it's the playoffs, right? We're talking a series. This mm-hmm. isn't this isn't the hottest take I'll ever have, but you have to be playing your best basketball and you start matching up these teams and, and, and you, you try to, Hey, if Dallas is playing their best basketball, can they beat Oklahoma city playing their best, best basketball? Mm -hmm. If Sacramento was playing their absolute best, can they beat Minnesota playing their best thing with Minnesota is they may or may not have Carl Anthony towns. And if they do, is that good or bad? Yeah, like like that could mean a lot of different things if they do have Carl Anthony Towns when the playoffs start because they'd be trying to figure they could be trying to figure some things out. If the if 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 the if the playing matchup is Phoenix and Sacramento, L.A. and in in Golden State, like there's it's wide open in my opinion. I think it's, so too. it's completely wide open. I think so too. And look, I understand like the betting favorite. And if I just had to say who's the best team in the West right now, Denver for sure. Like I, I would I would say Denver. I don't want to, it sounds disrespectful if I say by default, because I don't want to say that. They're they're a good team. They're a championship contender. I just don't they're see it. They're only a half way. game up on Minnesota and Oklahoma City. Yeah. I just don't see it the same way everybody else does. It's like nobody can beat them. I, I don't I don't see it that way. I think uh what they say last night before they lost last night, I think they're what. 15 and two since the all-star break or something like that. Wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Jesus. Denver was. And I, well, and now they're like 15 and three and two of the losses are the Phoenix mm. it, at I home. I didn't know that. At home. They didn't lost them twice at the crib. So I, I think Denver is the, the favorite, but I think I think there's teams that could get them. Yeah. I'm with you. I, I, I think this conference is, I think this conference is wide open. Uh, I don't feel that way about the East. Mm. I think this conference is wide open. I agree. Anyone could be in the conference finals. Anyone can come out of the conference finals. Uh, but a lot will have to break right for some of these teams. Uh, maybe Denver is the one where it, it, things have to break less for. Mm. Minnesota needs some things to go their way. Part of that is because of the Carl Anthony Towns injury. Oklahoma City probably needs some things to go their way. Like they're going to take some lumps their first round of the playoffs or their first time in the playoffs. Clippers, you know, Clipper, C- Clippers didn't even look good last night. Mm-mm. Clippers looked good the last three minutes because it was like, oh, there's Kawhi. Okay. Yeah, there's Kawhi on both sides of the ball. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. yeah, they didn't look good yesterday, in my opinion, against uh, against Philadelphia. Yeah. That, so, I, I mean, we'll, and we, one team we didn't mention, one of the teams we didn't mention, what do we think about Dallas? Well, Dallas, I think very highly of Dallas. <laughs> I'd like to state that for the record. I think that's a hell of a ball club. <laughs> I think Luca's a hell of a player, um, MVP caliber player, real stand up guy, doesn't whine or yeah, cry like yeah. he is a. That's he, a that's a that's a bad narrative that we yeah, need to get rid of. It's just a terrible narrative. We yeah. like Luca. Luca, I think, is really misunderstood. Uh, Jason Kidd, also, my goodness, if if there is if if there's a Coach of the Year award out there, yeah. Uh, hey, Jason Kidd. Both I mean, of those guys, true champions. True, true champions. champions. Modern true day champions. Phil Jackson, I'd say. That's what it is. He doesn't do too much. Just kind of let, let the boys do he, what they he, do. He really lets them figure things out on the floor. And, and a lot of it's people, almost as if he's a fan. Oh, it's see, it's so. tremendous. And, and see, a lot of people, you know, they look at that, and because they don't know basketball, mm-hmm. they think that he's not doing anything. Yeah. But mm-hmm. in, actual, in actuality, he's doing everything. Yeah. It's How deeper, it ever heard it's deeper of it? than people realize. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's just it goes over the head. Yeah, there's no way I'm it gonna say it. Over the head. There ain't no way I'm gonna say a bad thing about Dallas. As a quality champion, 
They could win it all. Like, fo, fo, fo. <laughs> they could win it all. I'll say that. Just got to the conference finals a few years ago. The, the, uh, yeah. Very Man. legitimate. Right? True champions. Right? Yes. True Casey champions. never once disrespected that run that they never. had. Never. once. No. Never. No one has. Give him his flowers for that. Please do. I'm not giving. Please no. do. That would be the second bouquet of flowers I've don't. Got, got today. No. Definitely deserved. Yeah. No. Luca, and, Luca misunderstood. In all seriousness, they're playing great. And I, I do yes, think. they are. I do think. Um, I mean, if you're. If, if if you're getting this, no disrespect to Luca because he's putting up crazy numbers. I think you said like 34, 10, and 10, damn near. Pretty much. But if you're getting this Kyrie Irving in the playoffs, yeah, they're they're dangerous. Well, I don't think and it's once crazy. Again, you, you know I don't like Dallas, but it is what it is. We respect Dallas, though. I don't think it's crazy to say this is the best Dallas team that Lucas had going into the playoffs. Oh, yeah. Like not by even far. Close. Like this yeah, team can actually probably win close. some games. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, this team, this team is good now. This Dallas team is good now, and they have a future. Yeah, and then New Which Orleans. We, once again, we hadn't mentioned New Orleans. That one, and I think New Orleans. I once again, I'm a little more sold on New Orleans than than maybe you are. It's not but, that I'm not sold. It, it, of of the <laughs> of the ten teams, that's the one. It's not being sold. Mm. It's just the one that I don't understand yet. Mm. Seventy games into the season, seventy two games into the season. Like, I don't know. They're obviously good. Mm-hmm. They're physical. Um, they're long. Like, they're, they, Zion is, it's Duke Zion. It's that guy. Mm-hmm. You're dealing with the Brandon Ingram stuff. I don't think that's as serious as, it's, don't, it's not as serious as the Carl Anthony Town stuff. But you're dealing with something. But it's also showing you, hey, this is still a pretty good ball club if Brandon Ingram isn't around. Yeah. All right. I don't know what to point to, though. It might be you, a glass you know ceiling I mean? team. You could see yeah, but it. I don't even. I wouldn't even know what that is because if they're as physical and defensive oriented as I think there are, why would there be a ceiling on them? Well, that's the thing. It's just like we can all. I think we can all see them get into the Western Conference Finals and beating up whoever. Mm-hmm. Like we can all see that, but it's just kind of, are they going to do it? It's just, we're waiting for them to break through it, and they just haven't. It's yet. like mm-hmm. if 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 you said, "Hey, tell me why Dallas is going to get to the Conference Finals." Mm-hmm. I feel if we did like some like Mike and Mike game. Tell us why. Well, that's your boy. Yeah, you well, guys have the same. Well, uh, <laughs> well, they were right. It's the one thing, perhaps, in the history of that show they were right about. Hulk Hogan is the Michael Jordan of wrestling. I can't believe you pulled that up. But I can't believe I found it. I was just looking for a picture, and there it was. But if you said, hey, tell me why Dallas is getting to the conference finals. Like, okay, here's why. Tell me why the Lakers get. I could do that. Tell me why the Kings. I could. If you told me to tell you why the Pelicans are, it would end at, like, physicality and I wouldn't know what to offer that conversation the way that I could the other ones partly because they just beat the crap out of Sacramento repeatedly and I didn't know what to take away from that well so I'll I would answer that and I would say okay Zion is a matchup problem when he's locked in Brandon Ingram is a matchup problem then you got CJ running around that could give you 25 to 30 then you got Valanchunas and we haven't even got to Murphy Herb Jones, like Murphy can give you 30 on a night the way he can shoot the ball. And so you, there's no, there's no, there's no question of how this team performs in a series. There's no question about There's, there's question because we haven't seen it. There's question because that that's what it, we haven't seen this group, number one, healthy together in the playoffs. Zion is going to be making his first, mm-hmm. well, potentially his first playoff mm-hmm. appearance uh, this year. So we we haven't seen them on that stage together. They've added a couple of guys. I don't think I don't think CJ was there when when they played Phoenix a couple of years ago. No, he wasn't there. So we haven't seen CJ with this team in the postseason. Um, I don't think. Maybe I could be wrong, but I don't think he was. But you know, we we just haven't seen these guys in the postseason, and that's why I can't say for sure they're this that this is what they're going to do, whatever the case may be. Because we haven't seen them in a series. We haven't seen them with them lights, them lights on them. I see the matchup problems all around, especially with their two, their two main guys. And and I mean Ingram and and, and Zion. Obviously, CJ's right after that. But yeah, that's a that's a tougher one for me. Uh I'm anxious to see them. Uh, uh I'll just we'll go with an assumption that they stay here at the fifth seed. That's one of the teams I'm most anxious to see when the playoffs get underway. Mm-hmm. From the teams really from the fifth it. seed back, we can even throw the Clippers in there. Um, which one do you guys think can make like his most poised for runners of the Suns? I think for me, it's still the Clippers. 
where the from the Clippers to the to the to, yeah. to the Warriors, the, the, the fourth seed, four to like the tenth seed, whatever you want to call it. Clippers got me a little shook, man. Understandably, yeah, yeah, yeah they no, they haven't, no, they haven't been playing I wanna, well. I wanna, of all of these teams that are playing well, like like New Orleans is playing well, Dallas, Phoenix, hell, Sacramento, the, the Clippers are not. I want to stay with the courage of my convictions, but they got me a little. And then, he, right then he's going to demand flowers when they get to the yeah, conference. You know well, I, haven't, I haven't left. I haven't left. I'm sitting there thinking about it. I'm going to stay with it, but they got to start playing better. No, he just set it up. It it's literally, no, 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 he set I it know, up. It's literally Cade and Jalen no, Green. I know he's what he the did. The Suns go on the run. He's like, well, I mentioned the Suns. I, know, I, know, I mentioned them, you yeah, guys. I know what he did. No, I know what he did. That's <laughs> slick. No, that's good. We'll come back. Much more ahead. It's Dilo and KC brought to you by Sky River Casino here on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320. That's it. That's it. I need a drink. I demand my flowers. For I am Casey and I am the wise one. Shall give me my flowers for constantly being correct. Yeah, I see Trey shooting at practice. So Sasha. So is Sasha. Trey must have got some work in. He's got them ice wraps on, so he must have must have got some work in somehow, some way. Put a little bit of excitement. If we did a whole show with D'Lo doing Luca's voice, which voice would you guys want to see Casey do the whole show? Mm, that'd be awful. I disagree. That'd be so awful. It's not even Luca's voice. It's just what I imagine Luca sounds like. Luca's really soft spoken when he talks. What was I just looking for? Does anybody know? I know. The insider stuff. Insider stuff. Title of yesterday's show, Hulk Hogan is Michael Jordan. That's tremendous. Let me see the show page. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Let's go to Dio and Casey. I looked up and saw the magic highlight. Like, oh, they trying to get Malik to the magic, huh? Okay, okay. Y'all scared of Sacramento. Zach, fix your bookshelf, man. <laughs> Goodness gracious, bro. <laughs> that is the weirdest thing they do when Kendra turns. <laughs> that is just so weird to me. No, it is bizarre. What are we doing? It makes me wonder if there's a like a can like a, a monitor. Screen, yeah, with Zach Lowe like in the camera. I don't think there is. I think they just tell her to do that for whatever. That's reason. so weird. This guy. Pacers defense improving. They just gave up 123 to the Bulls last night in a loss. Hey, man, they just be saying anything. Like if that, if that would did did Zach Lowe say that the Kings defense improving yesterday after they lost? Come on, man. I see everything. I see everything. Cajun Kenny talking about his coach Kim Mulkey. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. So the Mulkey article got to drop tomorrow, right? Like, Ooh. is LSU play tomorrow? I think they play Saturday. It's it drops of, when they lose. Oh, drop it when you lose? Think about that. Get her out the paint. 
if it's a hit piece, like whatever they're calling it, or like just one it's of those articles. Well, not a hit piece, but just one of those articles was going to be like just have some nasty stuff, and then you drop it when she loses. Mm. I think they play Saturday because Saturday's crazy. Saturday is crazy. I think they all play on Saturday, like all the, the happy. They, hitters. they, they might not. They might play Sunday. Because well, I just looked so, up well, Saturday. Oh no no no! Oh no! Wait, where's? Oh, there they Friday's are. Okay, the sorry, day. there they are. Yeah, it's LSU UCLA. Uh, Saturday, sorry, ten, I think, 10 a.m. I think uh, Saturday is LSU, Duke UConn. I think Caitlin plays, and I think Juju plays on Saturday. Saturday's crazy. Uh, USC and Baylor. Yeah, Iowa and Colorado. That's uh, ABC, ABC, ESPN, and then the main event at five o'clock. And I think South Carolina plays on uh, Saturday, don't they? If anyone's gonna know, it's you, bro. Yeah, that's that's. <laughs> I don't know. You tell us, big yeah. dog. <laughs> nope, they got the Friday two o'clock game. Well, you know, they, they got them on Friday. I'll be watching that in the studio. Go to South Carolina. To our time? Yeah, on your uh, on your iPad. <laughs> Go South Carolina. The hashtag. Be, be watching it on your iPad. I, I mean, don't know. Yeah, I can't yeah, remember I wanna, how. He... Yeah, I like South Carolina. Well, why are we doing this? Then even though I like Paige Beckers, ask me who I'm going for in that game. Come on, man, don't do that to me. Dude, he's really a South. Like, like that's crazy. He's really South Carolina full fledged. Like, first of all, family ties. No, no, no. Respect. And that. You, you won't even say your your mascot. Yeah, they're 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 the Gamecocks. There you go. I'm no problem. What is the hashtag? Well, see now you. What yeah, is the hashtag? Know. Look, remember Bruce. Remember the second graders. No, what is the South Carolina <laughs> hashtag? <laughs> I don't know, bro. We've been doing the show for four years. Now we're gonna care about the kids. <laughs> Well, shout out to the second graders. I guess Kenny draws the line somewhere. Wow. But the South Carolina Gamecocks. I got that's love what for them. They are. Yeah. I love what them. they are. But but like I said, you know, you know, mm. Paige is my girl. Mm. Who am I going for on Saturday? Don't play with me. Well, that's because you're trying to get a, a pair of uh PE sent this way. <laughs> Don't play that's with fun. me. All right, let's say no Blue national Devils. title. We got Blue Devils versus the South Carolina team. I hand you two jerseys. Which one are you taking? What what, what 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 kind of hypothetical is that? Which one are you taking? Wow. Who are you a fan I'm of? Taking, stalling for time. I'm taking I'm taking Duke, man. You're stalling, taking Duke, stalling, man. Stalling for I'm taking time. Duke, man. Don't do that to me. I'm taking Duke. But you're not gonna root against South Carolina. Like <laughs> oh, you're just what, gonna put why the, all the caveat? You're just why gonna, all the caveat? You're just gonna you heard put, me say Duke. He's just gonna put the jersey on and sit there quietly. Every time South Carolina South he's Carolina gonna, scores, he does a Tiger Woods fist pump, just slowly. He's he gonna, he gonna sit there with his hands folded like why y'all the caveat? Why that? Why? You ain't never seen me pick my boogers. Not one, two, or three. Oh, that reminds me that he got gay when he goes. That's why they call you booger, because you pick your boogers all the time. He said, why you got to say that? Why you got to? You ain't never seen me pick my boogers before. Now, first grade, second grade, or third grade. In case he's daily movie reference. Brought to you by uh, Universal Pictures. There you go. Universal Pictures did not compensate us for that, so you are welcome. <laughs> Yeah, Saturday's a day. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you spot on Saturday's a day. And and we still gonna we gonna have uh trips to the final four for the men's uh tournament on the line that day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be lit. Yeah, we'll be out at Bar West today if you want to come watch some of the games with us. 27-24, J Street, uh right there in Midtown, man. Great food there. Great, great, great atmosphere. Uh if you want to come through, hang out, man. We're gonna have a really good time immediately following. This show, mm -hmm. uh, we'll head out there uh, to Bar West, and we should be there uh, probably about 4.30, 4.45 or so. Uh, we'll watch these tournament games together, man. It'll be a good time. Absolutely. It'll be a good Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Hey, can we, uh, while we're still talking about the NBA, can we talk about your boy, man? We can go a little in-depth with, with your boy. I mean, it's not going to take a whole segment, but get your mans. Let's get Maddie first. Okay. And then we'll talk okay. about uh, your favorite player. 916-909-1320. What's up, Matty? Yo, what's good with the big homies? How we feeling today? We good, Matty. What's up with you, bro? Sir, man. Happy happy opening day. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Man, um, you know, I, I rock with the A's, man. That's been my team, you know, growing up, going to all these A's games. And uh, it's uh, it's a little sad today, knowing that this might be the last last uh, opening day here in Oakland. Um I know most A's fans are sort of like, like I'm done with this team once they move. And for me, like, it's not that easy. And, 
you know, I'm a big baseball fan, so it's not like I'm just going to never watch the sport again. And I just kind of wanted your thoughts on like fan etiquette. Like what's, what's next if the A's move? Like, I know like for me, myself, like I hate the giants with the passion, right? Like I hate that stupid orange. I'm, I'm jealous of about understood that. that stupid every other year World Series y'all had in the 2010s. I hate that they blocked the A's from moving to San Jose. So, like, Giants are off the table for me. Mm-hmm. Um, what What's the fan etiquette like of of sort of picking a new team, or would you guys stay with the A's if they moved to Vegas? What y'all thoughts on that? Well, mm-hmm. the, the ultimate fan etiquette for me is do whatever you want to do. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Do whatever feels do good to you. what makes you happy. You yeah. know what I mean? I, I know – when the King situation was going down, I sat there and thought about it. And I was like, I can't, I'm not following this team to Seattle. And at the time I didn't have the same feelings about the Warriors that I have now. So it wasn't like Maddie with the giants, but I was like, I don't want to be a Warriors fan. And then, you know, I like the Knicks, but at one point in time, obviously I was a big Iverson fan. I really like the Sixers, not like my favorite team, but I I, I love the Sixers. I loved Allen Iverson. And, you know, it's like it's the East Coast. Like, it's different following the East Coast team. A bunch of 4 o'clock games. And I was, and so I said all that to say I thought about the Knicks, and I was like, I don't want to do that again. Hmm. And really, I didn't know what I was going to do. I, I was like, maybe I'll just watch the league. Maybe that would have been a time when, you know, I just kind of find favorite players and, and follow players and stuff like that. But I didn't know what I was going to do. I'm not going to tell Maddie or any A's fan what they should do or any fan. Like, mm-hmm. do whatever you feel like. You know what I mean? Like, if you want to follow a new team, cool. If you want to just follow players, cool. If you're done with Major League Baseball in general, that's that's understandable too. You know what I mean? So my my advice would be do whatever you want to do. The tough yeah. part about this too, I feel like, is that like the team is still like it still exists. The team you love, it's just like it's in Vegas now. It's like you like you can't love them, but it's like like that's like your squad. Like that feeling, I feel like it's still there. Like like for like the Chargers move to LA, I'm sure like there's like San Diego Chargers fans like they hate the team, but it's like you know like that yeah. love. It's like you just hate watch or something. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, for real. That's a tough spot. For real, it is. It is. Uh, and there's and there's people that do travel right that do go with it. Like I, I spoke about it yesterday a little bit, but it's. It's, you know, a little older case, but there's people who are like, man, I've been a Dodgers fan since Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying, or something like that. So there are people who travel, and if you want to do that, like, cool, that's cool too. So Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a tough position to be in. I don't – I'm fearful these owners think – like everyone's like the Raiders. Mm. Like the Raiders, if, if, you, if you pay close enough attention to the Raiders, it's the Raiders. It's not the Las Vegas Raiders. It's not the Oakland Raiders. It's not the Los Angeles Raiders. Right. It's the Raiders. Right. And that's different. Have a seat. Who? Oh, yeah. Have a seat. Go ahead. Um, and I'm I'm fearful that too many. I'm fearful that too many owners think that this is uh, this is normal. And like and, it's the Oakland A's. Right. It's not the A's. Right. And and the sports are different too. Like almost, almost, almost. If we really like dove into it, maybe it'd be a little different. But almost any NFL team can move at this point. And NFL teams have such a national following, like it, it would still work. You know what I mean? Case in point, the Raiders. You know, it still works with them going to Vegas. That's also a special situation because you got LA people mm-hmm. going to Vegas. You still got Oakland. People. Vegas actually does embrace the Raiders. I don't think they'll embrace the A's the same way so uh, baseball needs to be really careful there's there's only select places where it may work out that way yeah and i don't know if vegas is one i don't know if it is either for baseball right i don't know if it is either you're listening to d-lo and casey on kifm west sacramento krx qhd2 sacramento espn 1320 always live on the free odyssey app we're going to uh hit pause on all this stuff we're going to get to draymond green Obviously, we're going to talk about the game uh, tomorrow night at the Golden One Center. We'll talk about the Sacramento Kings. Jesse pulled up some pulled up some interesting numbers uh, that we'll talk about here uh, as the day progresses. Maybe we'll finally get to the NFL rule changes that we haven't <laughs> talked about all week. Um, and then, of course, in the final hour of the show, Matt George is going to join us. 
So we just had this conversation about baseball. Matt has some very passionate topics or, or very passionate feelings, excuse me, about the topic of the Oakland A's moving to Las Vegas and how Sacramento may be a buffer with that. We're going to talk to Matt about that. And then, of course, we're going to talk to him about the Sacramento Kings as well. So that's all coming up. But we're going to talk now about something. So so we're late on this. I'm going to pull you up on the screen. So I don't want you to be startled when you see that pop up. But you're, we're on a video stream and all that. Go ahead and pull the microphone close to you. You got it. And um, let me... F- Oh, you're the main talker. Yeah. Okay, you're the main talk. So, so we'll 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 switch seats here, and we'll talk. So, Casey and I linked up. This was at Kiki's Chicken for shout out Kiki's Chicken. Shout we love y'all. Kiki's Chicken. What up, dog? Um, amazing food. Yes, we were doing a toy drive, uh, for the Stanford Sierra Youth and Families, and Carla pulled me aside and said, "Hey." We're in need of mentors here, specifically a specific type of mentor. And you know, it was like, you know what? <laughs> I think we can help with that. Yeah. So let's, first of all, Christmas was a long time ago. So I'm sorry it took so long. Uh, the year's for moving this. fast, though. The year <laughs> is moving we're, fast. We're like gearing that. up for the next toy drive. <laughs> and we thought this would great be a great way to, to, to kick it off. So pull that microphone closer to you, if you could, a little bit. And let's talk a little bit about the Wonder Mentoring Program, because you need mentors. And I think we got some brothers out here who might be able to help you with that. Great. Thanks for having us. Um, I'm Beatrice. I'm one of the program managers at Stanford Sierra Youth and Families. Um, you, can get, you can get even a little closer. A little closer? Yeah, yeah, do not be afraid of it. Like all up in it? Okay. Well, well, is that so better? Well, yeah, this, this, this <laughs> she fits right in. Like, like she's been here 30 <laughs> seconds and that's what we're doing. But yeah, that's it. Just that's like that. Great. Um, but I, I oversee wonder and we do need mentors. So we've had wonder open for like 23 years now, but Stanford's had it for the past, like three or four under after our merger and it's grown. So it's a fully fundraised program completely. So there's donors across and there's, um, people like you guys that really show up and show out for us. So it's grown a ton. Our goal every year is to hit 70 matches, which we've hit already. So we're at 77, which is Mm -hmm. huge, but we have 22 kids that are males that need a male mentor, that are requesting um, representative mentors. So the biggest thing with this program, these are youth that are impacted by child welfare. So whether it's active foster care, kinship, guardianship, adoption, any touch points like that, we really want them to be connected with someone who can really just show up for them outside of all of that, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't want what you're saying to get lost. Yeah. When you said a representative mentor, what do you mean? So we need males. We need men of color. We need um, our LGBTQ community to show up. Um, it's a female dominated program mm. and we need males. We have male referrals that come in that are mm. saying, well, I'm up in Auburn or I'm in SAC and I'm adopted by a family that's all white or I have a family that is whatever race or a culture. Mm-hmm. And they're saying, hey, they're connected. And how great would it be for them to have someone who's also black who can share more of that culture piece, yeah. something that we can't give. No. there's a gap that's not filled what um what what does that look like for somebody that is interested in it right like what does that entail say i was interested in wanting to be a mentor what does that entail like um uh, you know constant communication through phone um i'm not trying to be funny but like going on you know lunch dates or something like like no, what is, what does that what does that entail like anything any, uh, yeah. is it all encompassing so it looks very different so i'm sure all of you heard of like big brothers big sisters there's mm-hmm. a bunch of volunteer programs out there what separates wonder is that we also have a coaching element to it so if someone let's say you were interested in it mm-hmm. what it would look like is we would have you attend one of our orientations so kind of what i'm doing right now is giving an overview of the program and that program it, it kind of shares like the requirements so given we ask that you're at least 21 Okay. 21 is our baseline. Um, the youth that we're serving are in Sacramento and Placer County. So just those two counties, that doesn't mean our mentors can't come from YOLO or anywhere else, mm-hmm. but just the confines of the kids are within that. Um, and then you'd go through orientation, go through that, and we'd interview you. So the interview, it's a very formal term for what it is. Mm-hmm. It's really just a space to kind of get to know you, like truly. So we don't randomize the matches. Um, so right. let's say you're super, uh, you're a Giants fan. That's right. Um, yeah. So we know, like, what do you like to do? Um, we have people who share, I love to read. I love to be outside. Any, like, hobbies or interests. Mm-hmm. And then we also share, like, are there any particular, like, traits that we should look for if we're looking for a match for you for um, an explorer? We call our mentees explorers and our mentors guides. Yeah. 
I should have led with that. <laughs> um, and so from there, we also do the same thing for the kids. So they also ask them, like, you know, what do you like to do? Mm -hmm. um, and then for trades, sometimes we have people who are like, hey, wherever you think I'd be a good fit, match me up. Sometimes mm -hmm. there's people who show up who are like, well, I've been adopted. If there's someone who's adopted and I can share that piece too, mm -hmm. great. Um, and then from there, we go through a training process. The training is pretty extensive. It's a two-day in-person training. And it's sort of like a cohort style. We had our biggest class in January. We had uh, 17 mentors, which is great. Half of them were men, which was the biggest one we've had yet. Okay. Um, through that training, we go through an overview of welfare, kind of what to expect with the program, confines, anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, and we do a background check. So the same background check that foster parents go through, mm -hmm. our volunteers go through also. We want to vet the right people, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, once all of that's complete, that's when we start the matching process. And so like if we had someone who was super outdoorsy, we'll try to match them up based on the need. Mm -hmm. But the particular thing that we're running into is that there's kids who are like, I want a male. Mm -hmm. And we don't have that. We have a lot of women or we have youth that are asking for a very particular need. Black mm -hmm. men are the big need right now. And then our LGBTQ community. We have a few youth who um, have identified with that community mm -hmm. and they're blatantly saying like, hey, they're connected to all of these things, but we're missing a gap. And that's where wonder could step in. Mm -hmm. But that's also with the basis of what kind of volunteers we can kind of recruit. So it ebbs and flows. So this is a huge opportunity for us to even showcase that. Yeah. What's the age group of these young people that you're talking about? Because it it feels like when you're talking, you're talking about like an older group of young people. But what what is the age group? So referrals is the youngest age we go to is five. Okay. So five up until 15 is the referral window for kids. Mm -hmm. They can stay in the program up until they're 18 or when they graduate high school. Sometimes one comes before the other. Mm -hmm. But I think the majority of the youth we have pending right now are about preteen, teen. So like 12 to 15 is the window right now. And who initiates that? Like, does the young person initiate it? Do their parents initiate it? Because I'm just fascinated at thought of a six-year-old going, I need a mentor. Yeah. I need yeah. someone. I need a Giants <laughs> fan in my life to talk to because this is tough. Yeah. So it's both. So a lot of the preteens, like they're either in because I'm 44 and I need a mentor. <laughs> me too. <laughs> I need someone to um, I need someone have... to guide me to make better decisions. <laughs> Adulting. No yeah. one signs you up for this. Um, but they range. So sometimes the kids that are involved know others and it's word of mouth and they share and they see that. For the younger kids, a lot of times it's parents. We'll get referrals from parents, from social workers. Um, or either other agencies that are like, hey, I heard you have a mentoring program. I have a kid who's tied to all of these services, but they really need an additional person. And the referral will come from there. Of course, the families are aware. And this program is voluntary. So everybody who's participating, sometimes mentors will come in and be like, do these kids even want a mentor? Or is this mom mm -hmm. wanting it? Mm -hmm. And no, these kids are really eager. And we'll get calls from parents saying, hey, just wondering if, there, if there's an update on someone available for us. And it's it's hard because because we don't want it to be randomized. Mm -hmm. A lot of the matches we have, we ask for a year commitment. And that year commitment, going back to your original question of what the ask is, we're mm -hmm. asking for at least a year, um, meeting six to eight hours a month. So the beauty of Wonder 2 is we do sponsor outings. Um, we'll get really generous donations from like Kings Games tickets. We'll have we'll host bowling. We have a camp, an annual camp weekend we do every year, ice mm -hmm. skating, all the things, because we don't want finances to be the issue, right? Yeah. Right. Um, and then also a lot of the matches we have right now have been together for years. So mm -hmm. we ask for a year. I think the oldest match within our program is nine years. Wow. So we have some that they leave and they continue. But what age did that start? Oh, my gosh. I think like 10. Okay. Yeah. So that was. So they're out of the they're out. Yeah, and program. That's, that's yeah. what I was thinking, too. I mean, it could be out of the program. These, these are relationships yeah. that can be built. They could be lifelong. That's you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And it's it's really neat. We had um we have one right now who's there. There's two that have been matched. I think for six years that are graduating high school this May, um which has been just a huge feat. And they've had their mentor consistently, so they've navigated a few placement changes. Mm -hmm. But their mentor has been there consistently. So she's graduating. She's coming to camp this year. And so her goal was I'm 18. She's going to be 19 soon. Um at the end of the year, she's like I want to come back in two years. I can come back and be a mentor. So there's such a cycle that comes with this. And there's a lot of beauty that comes with it despite you know what they're having to navigate outside of wonder too I, I know you're here talking today about um looking for for mentors but where can somebody if you know if i had a, a son or daughter that felt like they needed somebody needed to be in this program needed a mentor where can they go to um, get in touch with you guys to to be a part of this as far as somebody that is receiving that uh 
that type of mentorship? Yeah. So Carla, um, I will throw her name in there too. There's a lot of marketing that goes into the changes that we've adapted. Mm -hmm. So our website, so ssyaf.org. You just look into the Wonder Program. All of our links are on there. So if there's ever an interest to refer a child mm -hmm. or if there's an interest for someone to just explore more information about becoming a mentor, all of that is on that same page. So they can reach all of us from there. Or even if there's just questions and curiosity about kind of what this is, we can mm -hmm. definitely answer them there. Gotcha. Stanford Sierra Youth and Families, by the way, is what those those letters stand for. Stanford Sierra Youth and Families. Um, is there anything else that you want people who are contemplating this or listening to you and thinking about, man, maybe this is something I, 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 I could help with. Maybe this is something I could do. Maybe I know someone who could help with this. Is there anything else that you find really, really important for them to know right now? Yeah, I think if there's any inkling or just curiosity to mentor, I think a lot of the things we hear, it's like, what qualifies me to be a good mentor? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just this random person. Like, I'd love to help. But what if I don't have, you know, what it takes? Mm -hmm you showing up is plenty. A lot of times there's this expectation yeah. where people feel like I have to have some kind of educational background or I have to be some kind of person yeah. or I have to work a particular industry. And I think that's exactly the downfall sometimes that that makes people hesitate. Mentors, are, it feels like a strong word. It is. It is. It's a lot of responsibility. And I think a lot of it comes with role modeling. Mm -hmm. And role modeling doesn't mean that everyone just has it all together because I don't have it all together. Nobody does. <laughs> um, but I think there's something about knowing that we will equip you with things. We don't have you just showing up blindly. Mm -hmm. There's a coaching aspect in it. So if anyone has any interest, it really comes down to if you want to serve please know that these these kids just want someone to connect with yeah. and whatever you have to share is more than enough. So there's really no caveat or requirement on a baseline of education, but just a desire to help and show up for a kid. The consistency is really what we need. It's just kids to know that there's someone out there who just wants to be curious with them and play and go out and explore things and experience things, just the connection piece. And after COVID, that was a huge gap that was missed of kids mm -hmm. not being able to experience. So mm -hmm. anything like that, but we'll equip you with everything else. But you showing up is more than enough. And sometimes not having it all together, quote unquote, is maybe more appealing to somebody yeah. because they're looking, you can talk to them and say, Hey, you know, I'm not perfect right now, but I'm getting up every day and I'm working hard. Just like I'm asking you to do. And, and the, the kid or the teenager can look at it and be like, man, you know, I don't have to be a finished product at this age or at this time or something like that. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm looking to get better every single day and they can, look at their mentor and say, Hey, he's in the same, you know, the same race, still trying to do it, still trying to grind out every day. And that's something that could be appealing and relatable to some of these kids. So you touched on that perfectly. So with our program, of course, when we look at like measurement, what we're looking at is really building that self-confidence, building that community and just being future oriented. A lot of these kids have, maybe they have, or maybe they haven't, but having a volunteer come in and say, Hey, like, you can too. And mm -hmm. whatever it is that you're trying to do, I'm trying to show up for myself the same way that you're trying to do it for yourself. Mm -hmm. I think that's role modeling planning. What mentoring is, is just yeah. showing someone that there's never the growing doesn't like the learning doesn't stop and it's always ongoing. Yep. I think it's also important to point out like something you said earlier kind of struck me a little bit. Some, some people see stuff like this and I work with like kids who have been pulled from their families when yeah. I was younger and that's not necessarily the dynamic you're talking about. You're not talking about like troubled youth who need to be steered the right way. Like you use the example of I, I'm, I'm adopted. I want to, you know, is there someone who in this program who has been through this before? You, you talked about the need for black LGBTQ PQ community. It's just finding someone to relate to exactly. someone to have conversations with yeah. that aren't your parents, because normally those <laughs> those conversations can be the most difficult. Right. No, absolutely. So these youth, like I said, so because we're asking for volunteers, something else to note is these are youth that are able to maintain safety. <clears throat> Excuse me. They're not youth that like, again, I know the whole troubled teen idea, mm -hmm. the stigma around it. Mm -hmm. It's youth that really just want someone else to connect with. That's really what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. So again, like you're saying, hearing it from your parent is one yeah. thing. Hearing it from someone else is it lands differently. Hearing it from Kenny Caraway hits different. <laughs> right? That's what it is. I don't know how how much better that would be. I'll you got you. kids running around talking, demanding their flowers uh, from their parents moving forward. SSYAF.org. That's Stanford Sierra Youth and Families. Um, so we need to do this more regularly. We need to check in and make sure you guys are getting what you need. Because I said we've got a great community here. The ones in the chatty house, the ones that are listening. Like we have a great group of people who support this radio show who I think can support 
this program as well. So anytime you guys need us, just tap in with us and we'll make something like this work. Love it. No, really, really appreciate you guys having us too. Like I said, this is just plenty. Just sharing the word again, even if no one's interested, just sharing the word. Maybe there's a youth who needs it, didn't know this existed. You don't know what you don't know. So got to share it too. Absolutely. Uh, Draymond Green needs a mentor. We'll talk about that <laughs> with Tilo and Casey return here on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320. Great stuff. All right. Oh, we in here, baby. Uh, we can't post links in the chat, man. Um, just ssyaf.org. Stanford Sierra Youth and Families. Ssyaf.org. Bryce, you'd be good at it too. I think. I think Bryce would be fantastic at it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that's next on uh, Get Up. That's facts. <laughs> TCG, that's facts, bro. That is facts. That is facts. Yeah, a lot of you sign up for mentors. <laughs> <laughs> for real let me put a little bit of excitement and you can't mentor Beatrice I saw y'all knock it off well, I, I forgot bet. to hide the I mean, every time, chat over there. Every time a woman comes in here, I get nervous. Every time I get, I get, I get nervous. <laughs> That's I like get, trying to talk about serious stuff too. I get nervous when I realize I didn't close the fucking chat on my computer. I need well, to lie to her and say we have a great group in here. <laughs> no, they're great. No, they're no, they're they're good. Well, they're they're well. Could you imagine? Like, yeah, we had a great group here. She's like, really? I've seen the messages. <laughs> really, really. There's like ten dick jokes just since I walked in. <laughs> well, when you were gone on Friday, Coach Katz, boy, they were they were calling for a big time flag. <laughs> hey, oh no! I'm not, I'm not, like we were trying. Oh to deny, no! Like we should have. Oh it. no! Should have threw. I don't even. I'm not gonna do it to Coach Katz. Oh know. no! <laughs> He well, said something to the effect of like, yeah, when the <laughs> some about oh. bumping or something. I don't know. He said something about when the girth gets to grind. Oh, and yeah. the <laughs> well, shout out Beatrice who leaned right into it. Said, "You just want me to take it all? <laughs> you want me to get all up in here?" Yep. Yes, ma'am. That's how we roll here, bro. And BS. That's that's all that matters. <laughs> if that's what it takes to get y'all to pay attention, I'll take it. <laughs> that's what he said. Oh, cats. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. Okay. All right. 
Uh, shout out to our people at the Stanford Sierra Youth and Families uh, Center. Uh, yes, great work indeed. with that mentoring campaign. Shout out to the Chatty House who mostly behaved themselves during that conversation. Mostly. But there there are guys. Bryce, you're one of them, man. We think there are people who could be really, really helpful with that program. So if you got time uh, in the means to just take 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 some time to check that out, man. I think there's a group of young people that could uh, really benefit uh, from you. Absolutely. Uh, too bad Mitch not here. Mitch would Mitch make would a great, great mentor. He's a great grandfather, though. He is. 916-909-1320. Mitch, what's happening, my man? How you doing, Jesse? Casey? Um, what's popping? Uh, I hear you're at uh, some uh, club, bar, having a white Russian on me. Bar West tonight, Mitch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bar West. Bar West. Yeah. Mitch, when are you coming out to Sacramento, man? Come on, you retired now. Get out of here. Yeah, I know. I know. Everything settles down. Okay. Uh, hopefully, you have a longer show. I don't have, I don't have that three hour window. A, a longer yeah, show? Well, I don't think we need a longer show, sir. Mitch, we're on the air 10 hours a day. Is that not enough? Well, I don't, well your, your second part, you, you just, you know, showing your moves and your music knowledge. And all that. I mean, you call that work? Well, that's all right. a, that seems fun to me. Well, you're, you're right, Mitch. <laughs> you're right, Mitch. Mitch, are you mad yeah, at me? Yeah, Mitch, why are you diminishing are, our, our, our efforts? Are you mad at me, Mitch? No, I'm not mad at you, Damon. Okay, I'm just making sure. You said hi to Jesse, you said hi to KC, and the, the chatty house just happened to notice you didn't say hi to me. I thought he said hi. It, it kind of broke up when he said I, hi, I, Damon. Yeah, this is the equipment I got here. Uh, before I get to basketball, great, great to see opening day. I mean, it's coming. It's pretty much written in stone that Dodgers going to win this year. And if any happens to uh, Shohei Otani, they'll defer it, right? The, no, they, they just get him out. Get Shohei Rose out of here. Oh. Matter of fact, get the Dodgers out of here. They were complicit in all this. They knew what was going on. Suspend them for a year. I know. I know. It, and I still think the Dodgers will win. I want Corey and Cody back. You can, you can have Joey Otani. Give him back to the Angels. They're the ones that they're the ones that uh, paid to find this key uh, fee. They did a lot for, for Joey Otani with the Angels. He should have stayed. That, that's loyalty for you. Right, hey, uh, what's the basketball take you got, Mitch? All right, the Kings. Um, they just need another. They had to get a little bigger. Fox <laughs> and uh, Sabonis got to be more selfish. Score more points. Keegan, I like Keegan and Bond. I'm liking that Bond to turn around the last uh, two months. I'm loving it. And with his college ball, I'm liking the women's better. Maybe because it's only the only one Pac-12, Pac-2, excuse me, Arizona. I'm liking the women's where Juju uh, Watkins. Mm -hmm. That's your girl. And it's two girls on the UCLA that I like, uh, including Haney's sister, Gabriella. Wouldn't that be something of the heat? And you say women's wins it all in basketball. Would that be the first brother and sister combo to win championships in the same year? I'm sure. Yeah. It would have to be. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah, sure. It would have to be. Yeah. That would be our, pretty cool, though. Women's college basketball uh, analyst there right there. Is. Our man mentioned New there Jersey. He is, man. The big, I don't know what he's going to do. Well, he's just going to follow SC. I course, wonder what but. Mitch was going to say next. Like, he covered b baseball opening day, basketball. He probably Two tournaments? Talk, well, Mitch, he's maybe been go, covering. Like, he's been getting his calls in in a timely manner lately. He is, Maybe, man, maybe he's going to be a mentor. Mitch, once again, will be a fantastic mentor. Like you said, he's a fantastic grandpa. Let's make him a mentor. Um, Mitch talked about it. Mm. We can spend a little time on it here, man. It's opening day. The Giants playing the Padres in San Diego. Mm -hmm. Getting underway uh, right now. They're in the bottom of the first. Sorry, uh, Danny in San Francisco. But, um... I wonder when the last time Danny in San Francisco listened to this show. Oh, man, I should text him. I'm going to text him right now. Be like, What's last, what up, Danny? When's the last time you listened to the Last show? time was probably like three weeks before we left us. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably true. That's no shade. Danny that's, was the best boss. What, that's probably he, Danny, true. Danny's my guy. Danny puts What's it he, first of all, damn. I know what you just <laughs> did. No, I no, I get it. No, no you, I'll talk. No, about, I know like, what you no, just I'm did. Not, I'll, you know me. I'll talk about it. Like Danny was our best boss. No, Danny was me. Danny was that dude, man. I wouldn't be here. Oh, poor Charlie. Me. Sorry, shout, Charlie. Shout out Charlie. But I wouldn't be here if it went for Danny in San Francisco. But remember, um, guys, don't was... say the score of the game, like because people <laughs> would just, oh, the game is on, and turn you guys right off. Guys, if we play the music on Twitch, we're gonna get a ten thousand dollar fine. <laughs> the very next day, 
Butcher and and and, <laughs> and Bonte play the like whole E40 goddamn E forty album. Guys, I don't think this wrestling talk is gonna hit. Like, no. maybe a couple minutes and then the shot clock, and then yeah. get out of shot it. Shot clock, no, a couple minutes. <laughs> yeah, you got a couple, yeah, a couple seconds. seconds. Yeah. Yeah. You literally have the the college uh, shot clock. Yeah, you got thirty seconds. Yep. You get it, get it in. Come get on, it guys, out. you're losing them. You're losing uh, them, guys. He he t- he was in the chat like a year ago. Remember that, Danny? Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. like a random. Like we were actually like talking about. Well, it. I think like, it was. I, hear you guys. I think it was the playoffs, wasn't it? it might have been. Yeah, I think it was the playoffs. So like he was. We, we it's funny we kept drew down we lost danny in san francisco <laughs> yeah man but real quick because I, I got something i wanted to say about that too mm-hmm. but um about the drew giant, down well no about the just that time in life that was a crazy oh. three weeks well, but it um it definitely was <laughs> but the giants look everybody knows i haven't been crazy about anything that they've done this offseason starting with keeping farhan around guy's awful I will say this, though. Look, it's opening day. I love the Giants. I am Giants. All right? I'm always going to be Giants. Um, okay. No, don't do that. No, I mean, it's no. been in question. Don't do that. No, it's, it shouldn't it's be in question. Don't ever question it, anybody out there. I'm Giants. Mm-hmm. I'm always going to be like Giants. Maddie said, that stupid orange. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know the orange was hated like that. That's funny. Well, see, that's the thing. Oh, Kyle's Looks great. They, Ace, I don't understand why Ace fans hate the Giants so much. Oh, like, it's, it's I, they, not they, the color. It's just. No, they hate the giant. I mean, I understand maybe the whole little brother type situation or whatever. But I've always said, Giants fans, we don't, we don't worry about the A's. If anything, I want to see the A's do well. You want to talk about who we hate? We hate the Dodgers. We hate the Braves. We hate the the Cardinals. Mm-hmm. You know we. No problem with the A's. Then they get to start talking crazy. We're talking about in a baseball sense, guys. Obviously, we're mm-hmm. standing with them with everything that's going on. Mm-hmm. But in a baseball sense, they get to talking crazy. Then it's like, all right, you can go to hell too. <laughs> we let's smack you up too. Oh. You know what I mean? So that's, but but in our hearts, we don't worry about the A's. We ain't got no ill will to, but they hate the Giants. They hate the Giants. It's crazy. But um with the Giants, so I this team is probably a little better than my lack of excitement this offseason shows. They did make some moves. You go get Blake Snell, that's a good look. You go get Matt Chapman, that's a good look. Oh, hey, Solaire, that's a good look. I like the uh, the the rookie they got from, I think he was in Japan, uh, Young Hu Lee. I like him. Um, I already like my, um, I already like Bob Melvin being there. Although Bob Melvin... I'm hearing some things that's like, all right, settle down. Let's win some games. But Bob Melvin is a proven coach, a proven manager in this league. Mm-hmm. So that's a that's a good look. Um, still like Lamont Wade there. I wish the young guys they sent down um uh my, what's my boy's name? Uh, Luciano. They sent him down to triple A uh to this morning, mm-hmm. which is kind of like, damn, like I thought he was next. Like he can't he can't stay up. So that's a little disappointing. But I mean. I was talking to Kyle before the show. I mean, this is a team that's going to be maybe a little better than 500 this year. And and I say that saying that probably that's going to get them either in the playoffs now that, you know, there's more teams in there or they're going to be competing for a playoff spot late into September. Farhan made some good moves. He made some, some cool moves or whatever the case may be. It's just, I got to see it. I got to watch it. And I will be watching. I will be locked in. Robbie Ray went and got him. He's not going to be ready till probably the middle of the year. But when you get um, him in there, you got a starting rotation of Logan Webb, Blake Snell, Robbie Ray. It's a good look. Mm-hmm. Well, my boy Camillo closing things out. They have a good bullpen. So, look, I mean, all right. I just – I. I the, the thing that kind of upset me a little bit today didn't upset me, but I was like, you know, I'm feeling good or whatever, feel better about this team. And then I look at the lineup and it's Wade Chapman and Yaz at three, four, mm. five. And I was like, okay, well, all right. If that was like five, six, seven, like, yeah, all right, we cooking. That's three, four, five. The hell? But it's opening day. I, uh, I'm always excited for the Giants on opening day. Opening day is Vamos the best. Uh, opening day is the best day in baseball, in my opinion. It's the best day in baseball, and then it just you know, gets quiet for me a little bit after that. I pay attention. 
I'm why like I in, in intriguing games, matchups. All of different September's things. pretty fun. Okay. Well, I mean, that's when the season's on. Oh, September. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 No, absolutely. That that's that it's it's uh March 28th. <laughs> like that's like like if, if I'm saying March 28th is exciting, well, September's really exciting. Oh, uh, I yeah, you're hundred percent right. I got some time. I, I mentioned it earlier today. I love baseball because the for I think this is the reason a lot of people love it. It's every day. Like for the next, what is this, five months or whatever, mm -hmm. the Giants are going to be every day. Mm -hmm. You know, you get times where the Kings are almost every day. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like a, it, maybe a, a stretch where they play five games in seven nights. You almost get them every day. Mm -hmm. But then you get, well, the Kings don't get this. The Suns get it. They don't play for four days. Yeah, the Suns have had the strength. This is, the Suns get like nine days off between games. Right. So they don't have that football. Obviously, you got to wait one week at a time. Yeah. Baseball every every day. You can get into a routine of watching baseball. And I'll be I'll be watching my Giants, man. And and I'll be hoping that they look great this year. Okay. Vamos gigantes. All right. Um the the other thing I was gonna say though, I mm -hmm. was just it's funny you brought up losing Danny in the series, gaining Drew down. Mm -hmm. The other day I was just randomly thinking, that three weeks was wild. No, it was pretty crazy. <laughs> It was pretty crazy. Know, three weeks. Yeah. The radio personalities were beefing. Radio personalities started talking crazy to other radio stations that weren't involved in the initial. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it was funny. There, there's, there's someone inserting themselves in the conversation. Like, bro, what the hell are you doing here? You don't have no business here. Sit your ass down. You are not a part of this. Maybe. This is not a triple threat match, bro. This is a one-on-one -on -one match. <laughs> Maybe this is a regular occurrence. I don't know, but I don't. It feels like because I, I would listen to a lot of radio around the country, and you know, I'd hear other teams obviously during the playoffs. It didn't feel like there was radio wars with the competing cities on the regular. And this was, this wasn't one two games. This was three weeks. Yeah, this was a um, <laughs> this was the marquee first round series that went seven games that the NBA stretched to make sure they got the prime <laughs> TV slots. It went on forever. Not to mention, it was a playoff series. Mm -hmm. There was no playing implications for either team, so you had a week before the games even started. <laughs> this is like a football lead up from the end of the regular season. <laughs> So the start of the series, you had an entire week. It felt like it was a month <laughs> of of Kings versus Warriors. And yeah, man, it 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 was something. I, obviously, it, it was not, fun. Not trying to say it like we played or I played or anything. I'm not gonna lie. By game seven, I was worn. Oh, out. I, it was over. I was yeah, worn. I was. I was <laughs> done. I just like I obviously wanted the Kings to win. But I just wanted this aspect to be over. But it was so it was so <laughs> unique. It had never happened before. Yeah. It was, you know, two teams, you know, so close in proximity. Um, the championship, mm -hmm. you know, pedigree versus the, you know, upstart. They finally did it. Um, stars all over the place with De'Aaron and Domas and and Steph and so on. And it was, yeah, it was but, the recipe for it, it and and everyone's in on this now. Yeah. Not that it was a work, right? Those are our guys over there. Yeah. That's when other people insert themselves into the conversation. <laughs> it's like, bro, get your ass. You might want to leave before we jump your ass. You don't have no business in here. Guys sending out apologies. Guy, I I've never seen such behavior, bro. Shut the hell up. This ain't got nothing to do with you. Sit down, <laughs> all of you hoes. If you're not on this, show, sit down. We had a blast. Yeah, it was a lot. And of by fun. the way, for those that have been coming to work at the same building, yeah, man, shout out out New York. It was all fun, it man. <laughs> the same boss. Of course, I was prepared for it to be over, uh, but it was definitely fun. <laughs> it was, it was, it was a wild. It was a lot of it was fun. That Popeyes cook and when that game seven ended, it was like, whew, it's over. <laughs> right. Well, look, then, like all, all of everything that you just mentioned is a hundred percent what added to it. But then you get to the games mm. and the drama within the series mm -hmm. that obviously Steph just the took buzzer. it to a whole nother level. Like this wasn't some bland yeah. series where yeah. the games weren't close, where you know there wasn't controversy off the court, nothing like like 
There was letters. There was stomps. <laughs> there was there balls. But basketballs were being used as weapons. Come on, man. Uh, there was a curb stomp heard around the world. There was the league is favoring the Kings in this series. <laughs> Uh, there was a Steph Curry miss shot at the buzzer. There was Davion Harrison putting the game Barnes. away in second quarter. There was the Sky River Harrison Barnes game. Um, then there was a blowout, and then there was another blowout, wow. and then there was Steph's fifty. And there was a and the second blowout. There was a march from uh, there, there was from from the restaurant to the beam. There was where uh, Javier said, hey, "I got D on KC with me, <laughs> sir." <laughs> I don't know who the hell you're talking to. I would have walked just opposite of where we were going at that. We point. are not with this man. <laughs> yeah. We are just walking to the same place. Yeah, we are not with oh, this individual. Man. I was just random. And there was me. and there was a, a meeting. There was there was hundreds of yes. fans yes. Uh, at the Golden One Center. That Friday night was crazy. That Friday, that downtown Sacramento. Was it wasn't even dark late. when the game ended. No, you had no. to wait. Yeah. <laughs> Downtown Sacramento that Friday night was a movie. And, and so movie. We, we hear this might be in the notes. I can't remember, but I know I've been thinking this, mm. thinking back to that 50 game mm. seven. Obviously, Kings have previous memories of game seven. Mm -hmm. If for whatever reason, the Sacramento Kings can't finish in the top six, mm -hmm. I do not want that play in game here. Mm. Are we just out on them playing. At I do not want that play in game in Sacramento. Now, at some point, you got to exercise the demons. I do Bring it not here. want that game here. Bring it here. There, now, if the game play is in Phoenix, play in if, if, LA, Dallas, wherever, I don't want it here. If, if the game is here, I will acknowledge there's going to be a certain nervous energy that runs through that arena. Mm -hmm. like, and I believe sometimes you, the, the players can feel that. And mm -hmm. it can reverberate mm -hmm. down onto the court. Mm -hmm. It doesn't ultimately affect well, it, but like game seven is a great example of that. Yeah. The energy around game seven was not the energy around game one. Mm -hmm. It was very, very different. Game one was relief, mm -hmm. celebration, jubilation. Game two, it was similar. And then by the end of game two, it was like, hey, we could do this thing. Mm -hmm. And I can't really remember five. Five was. I don't really remember the vibe in game. Well, five, five, five was a little. It was like let's let's rally. It was almost like a rally type thing because that's when De'Aaron had broke his finger. That's right. And that's right. we and that when we broke when he broke his finger initially, it was like, bro, like we're done. Mm. And then he said he was going to play. Mm -hmm. Then I remember looking to you when he was announced, and the place went crazy. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's the loudest pop he's mm -hmm. ever gotten, and he's gotten some loud pops. Yeah. That's the loudest one he's ever gotten. That's yeah. when, you know, we always loved De'Aaron, always loved De'Aaron, but that's when it was like, no, he's. The Aaron is ours forever. Yeah. Forever, as mm -hmm. Cardi would say. Like, that was the loudest pop ever. So you, we thought it was going to happen. Didn't happen. They went in game six. And game seven was like nervous energy. And I think in a play-in, yeah, I, I think it'll be a lot of nervous energy there. But you, yeah, I'm so a believer of it in Dallas. I'm a believer. You got to exercise those demons at some point. Okay. At some point, you got to exercise those demons. Why not? No, No better time than here. Crazy thing is they they'd have two. If they got seven, they'd have two. At least so what you're saying is, all right, at least give us well, the Well, seven or eight, they'd have two, right? Eight, they would go to seven. If they were eight, like as it is today, they would play they would go to Phoenix. And if they if they lost that game, they'd be at home for nine. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. I got you. Yeah, yeah, I got you. You're saying they'd have two games. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. So you know, yeah, maybe maybe your point is, hey, see if you can get it out the way yes. in the first game and not have to have the home game for for the next one. I I don't know, man. I don't like that. I don't like that <laughs> home game. It's 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 it gives me that nervous energy uh, that you're talking about right there. And yeah, uh, game five was the Draymond Green game, unbelievable. So this dude had like and not 40. the not the not the Draymond Green stomp game, but the game where he was like, well, he's a difference maker tonight. I was out here shooting like Dale Ellis from three. He was a difference champion. maker last night. He got thrown out the game, and the Warriors look fantastic. Yeah, won him the game. Steph pull, Steph getting consoled by uh, – that was a great work by Steph. Well, okay. That, all right. Okay. That was a great all work right, by all right. Steph. Well, that, oh, Jesse, Jesse, I need Jesse. I'll ask you as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are authentic. <laughs> Wait, are we talking about the tears? Yeah, is that authentic? And if it was – Yeah, he's fed up. 
Well, I mean, where where do we stand on that though? I thought he was. Yeah. Where, what you don't you don't think it was authentic? No, he was. Uh, where do we stand think, on that though? On the, on the Willie Green scale, I get that because you know what? Uh, like, we can't cry when someone gets thrown out. Of I don't think he's. Well, Why I think we... I think he's built up with frustration, though. I think that's what it is. Like I'm sure the Warriors are going to do like, dude, figure are it out. Are we please. sure he was crying? It looked like he was. It looked like he was. He had his jersey over his head and kind of put it down. Like it looked like he was crying. No, I would no what visible I... tears. Co correct. There's no visible tears. It was what appeared to be. He looked uh, like he was crying. Go ahead, run it. He looked like he was crying. I don't know if this has Steph's reaction in it, though. Oh, okay. I got you. But, I mean. Uh, well, we could watch Draymond get thrown out. It's like, I mean, let's, I'll, I'll ask about Steph in a second. But let, let go ahead and run the clip. First of all, this guy, the foul's not even on him. Second of all, it he was a even foul. Near the play. Yeah, he ain't even near the play. What is, what is this? Third of all, it's four minutes into the game. What are you that turned up about? This guy is, he's a mess. He, he's an absolute mess. And I tweeted it out. I'll say it on here. We need to just. Well, so this is are. funny. At this point, he hasn't gotten thrown out yet. He has not stopped talking to the official the entire time Kenny was talking. He has not been thrown out yet. He doesn't get thrown out until he walks away. I think so. I think he was thrown out. No, I think, I think you're wrong. Because the Unless, whistle blows that, like that right the here. One right there? The whistle blows right here. The only reason I thought he was. See, maybe, look, you saw you saw Chris Paul's reaction right there. That's when the whistle came in. Because the ref, the ref tells him to chill out too. Um, coming up, watch. The yeah, ref, look at the away. yeah. The officials are pulling him away. Puts his hands like he says, "Stop." Left. Yep. Like what is he so upset? So your boy, this guy's. He said the magic words right there. This guy's a mess. All right. This guy's a mess. Get the, get, you, take, take it off the screen. The NBA is going to get a hold of us. Hey, guys, you can't do that. <laughs> can't play soundless. WWE got us. Did you see yeah, that? Yeah. Did they? I think they got us for the Vince McMahon torn hamstring. Oh. Redacted still working, I guess. Redacted <laughs> still work. Damn it. They got us. I mean, it, like I said, we, we're – shout out TC. We are real with ourselves here. But it's time for everybody. My man, MT2. You know, Anthony Slater, you know, all my people down there in the Bay Area, definitely everybody national. This guy, this guy doesn't affect winning. Like, he doesn't affect winning. If anything, he's, he might be a hindrance. Like, he does not affect winning at this point in his career. He, the, so He's not that good at this point. He's just not. I don't, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. Um... Do you think they, okay, given the reaction, right? Because Steph's reaction became a bigger story than Draymond getting uh, thrown out three seconds after tip-off. Mm -hmm. Does that start an off-season conversation? Because if I'm Steph, I'm 36 going on to 37. Mm -hmm. I've got talented guys around me. Championship talent? Uh, I don't know, but I got really good guys around me. Can we get away from this dude? Can my last three years, four, four years in the league not be dealing with this? Do you think that conversation gets had? Um, Maybe. Maybe. But I would, I, if I was Steph, I'd almost look at this as a hopeless situation. Who's taking on that guy? Who's taking on that guy with that money? So <laughs> not even Detroit at this there's point. There's a there's a there's a there's an interesting caveat. I know Drew Downs on the line. Drew, just hang on one second because I don't want to cut you off because we gotta we gotta step out in a heartbeat and I want to hear uh, what you have to say. Um okay. In fact, I'll I'll that that'll be the that'll be the tease. I have a thought about that. Mm. Um because you know Mike Brown loves him. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we'll come back. I, 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 have a, I have a thought on that, given Draymond, the Warriors' relationship, and where it appears Draymond is now. Um, 
We'll talk about that. It's Dilo and Casey brought to you by Sky River Casino here on Sacramento. And Drew now, hang tight. 916-909-1320. It's Dilo and Casey uh, brought to you by Sky River Casino here on Sacramento. Sports leader ESPN 1320. Way to start this season off, big dog. Let's go. One nothing, Gigantes. Let's go. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna use no more content till we get back on the air. And for the record, for people what somebody was asking in the chat earlier, it's PSA. Yes, the social media handles have been changed by your boy. I know we tried to, you know, reverse it, make the name our own, but it's just it's too out of control. And it's probably gonna get worse. Can't be can't be can't be nobody's ditty around here. So if you're not already, go follow me on Instagram and Twitter at King KC underscore nine one six. King KC underscore nine one six yeah <laughs> i don't I, I don't think he's gonna last though i think i'll all out uh i don't want to say i'll live but you know yeah no what about i am k redacted <laughs> That would be a good one. Hell, that might even just be my name. Redacted. <laughs> I am redacted. <laughs> Safe. Uh, you see we got tagged in the, the Steph video. Oh, no, I'll look that up right now. Yeah. Appreciate you in the chat, Jeremy. Yeah, I think a lot of you follow my dad on Instagram. I don't have Instagram, by the way. So if you think you're following me, it's probably my dad. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? We oh, are back. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Yeah. I didn't even know how to answer it. It's on it's on both. No, sh- no, our man Ken. Shout out to our man Ken over at the Eagle. He lost his he lost his puppy oh, uh, man. over the weekend. And I'm a sympathetic ear to that, yeah, man. man. So he was he was telling me because he hasn't been here for a couple of days. He was telling me what was going on. So uh, 
but then he, he's they a Giants fan, and he yeah. saw that she had the, the the Giants on, and he's he's still a bit new here, so yeah. he's not sure where to find it. I'll, I'll find a way to tell him it's on TV. If he has the same, he's, everybody he has, has the, the same, same setup. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah right so it's it's on uh, uh, NBC Sports Bay Area. All right, shout out to our man Ken. Um, let's start with uh, Drew Down. And then I'll, I'll give you my thoughts on Draymond that we were talking about a second ago. I know Drew Down is fired up about this. He hit us up last night. Drew Down, what's happening, baby? Hey, what's up with my two local radio yahoos, man? <laughs> what, what, up, up, baby? what up, baby? Hey, so, man, I logged off at work at 4.30 yesterday, and apparently Draymond logged off before that already. <laughs> Dude, that's facts. I mean, four minutes into the game, I mean, man, it, there's no excuses. To me, when I rewatched it, it seemed like he almost wanted to get kicked out. He just mm-hmm. kept talking. Kept talking, and he just kept on walking straight to the locker room. So, I don't know, man. That, that was whack. I mean, four minutes into the game, that's like taking a call from Kamara at the start of the game. By the time you hang up, Draymond's already gone. You feel oh, me? Like, man. That's, that's, and, then he, and then he had a nerve to be in the locker room hitting the night-night. Like, come on, bro. Like, <laughs> we had a group. Did he did that for real, sir? Huh? He did that for real? I didn't he see that. A, he was in the locker room doing a night-night. Like, oh. bro, you had a group project, and, and you did nothing. and still got an A on, on, on the project. You feel me? That, that's that's. That's wild. Yeah, man. But um, but um, yeah, I called um, you know, I called I called a post game uh, show um, you know, in the in the Bay Area yesterday, and they're talking about well, you know, it was a uh, the Doves won, so they when Dennis Green let him off the hook, so Draymond gets a mulligan. I'm like a mulligan. I'm like, man, they need to have Sunday. They need to have Hello Kitty nights uh, at Good One Center, sponsored by Draymond 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 Green, because that cat got nine lives with this organization. You feel me? So a mulligan, a mulligan's wild. But um. I, I just, you know, the, I thought Steph's reaction just kind of spoke volumes. People want to talk about just crying, you know, whatever. At the end of the day, he was obviously visibly upset. You know, it, it's just kind of, he seemed at the point where it's like, I don't know what's really going to happen, but it's like, he's just like, man, like this is, this is a big game, bro. Like, like they're fighting for their lives just to hang on to the 10th seed and you're going to do something like this. And he wasn't like he, that like Casey said, it wasn't even, he, he didn't even hit the foul. It was, it was Wiggins. Yeah. So it's just, it's just crazy, man. And I, you know, I've been defending that man, but it's just like, you know, I thought he, he had been keeping his temper, but it just, you know, it all goes back to the fact that it's, it's not if with Draymond, but when. So that's just, you know, a bad look. Luckily, they got the W, but I don't know, man. I think it's gonna be some fireworks when when they got the Rockets coming up. So oh, I don't know, oh, bro. oh, oh talk is, about it. It's gonna be my talk CTV. about it. Drew. I think that's next yeah. Thursday. I I gotta see that. I gotta see that. Are we in or out? Um, in or out on Tar East and shoot, I'm sending out videos and stuff like that. Warriors, watch out and stuff. I mean, I wouldn't advise I mean, it. I yeah, mean, that, yeah, yeah I don't like that. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, don't do that. I don't you, think you should have done. You're that. still in 11th, right. and they're still the Warriors. Mm-hmm. Hey, you're playing well, mm-hmm. but but I'll give them this though. I'll give them this. That appears to be them. Yeah, like ahead. that's that that's their personality. Go ahead they're, and do it, young guy. Yeah, you know that's, what I mean, that, absolutely. Be careful. Yeah, be careful when the dog bites. Yeah, but. Yeah, like that's their personality. Yeah, I need to, I need to see that. I think that's next Thursday. I need to see that. That's for sure. Is that prime time? Flex that game. I don't know. I don't <laughs> know where that is. Flex that. That uh, and I don't. Let me see what game is because they yeah they definitely can get one of those games out the paint. I want to see that one for sure. That's good stuff. Yeah, that's good stuff. Okay. All right. So we were talking. Um, They're not on TNT by the way next week. Hmm. Five o'clock regular game. You can hear the Warriors announcers call that one. Oh, well. okay. Well, what's is there? <laughs> okay. What? How, well, we could do. We could watch on mute. You could do that as well. TNT is is uh, Nuggets Clippers. Oh well, no we. Hey, you wanna, we don't want you want you want to boot one or what? No, no, no. Let's talk about it. You want to boot one? Yeah. It's Kings Knicks. Yeah. <laughs> You heard it there, KC. Hey, 95-7 the game. Dot, KC dot, dot, dot. Wants to flex Kings Knicks dot, oh, dot, dot. Yeah. For well, Warriors Rockets. Well, well. Put it on a tweet. Well, damn. <laughs> Be on people. Oh, man. Yeah, no, we keep we keep international TV games as they are. Um, I asked about Steph. Mm-hmm. Steph's reaction got a lot of attention last night and today. Um, is there a scenario where they work out a deal? Perhaps mm-hmm. they go to Draymond, like Draymond, you're being traded to. We have a deal in place with Detroit, and Draymond says, "No, you don't," and mm-hmm. just retires. The end for Draymond is near, and he's acknowledged it. Mm-hmm. He's gone so far as to say. He won't do a tour because he knows he sucks and he knows people will treat him like he treated Paul George on uh, Paul Pierce on his way out. Mm. Does he just retire rather than 
put on the Seattle Sonics jersey like Patrick <laughs> Ewing did? Or or was that Orlando? Or was Orlando, it both? It was both. Oh, he both. played for the Sonics too. Yeah, he yeah. played for the Sonics. Yeah, Elijah does, played for the Raptors. Does he do that? Part of me wants to say yes. This guy. Every part of me says yes. Th- this guy, he doesn't want to play without Steph Curry. You gonna pass up that money though? He's he's not he's not well. He's not poor, but you're not gonna get that well, deal like ever again. Oh, well, let's go. Well, let's go. go. How not poor is Draymond (laughs) Green? 11 years in the league, and man, this is where I feel like Kenny really struggles. 11 years in the league for the former number 35 Second second round pick overall pick in the draft. Draymond Green, 12 completed seasons with three guaranteed years left. Let's count those years left. Count those years left, which means the highest grossing year of Draymond Green's career will in fact be what we believe will likely be his final year, the 26-27 season. Mm -hmm. The question was about retirement, though. Oh, we'll do the whole Walking country. away from the money. Yeah. I vote that we go with the 12 existing seasons and leave the next three years out. We could do that as well. I have a number for both. Wow. Do I'm, you this accept, game is serious, bro. Do you accept the challenge of a doubleheader? Wait, the doubleheader? Well, he said he has... Oh, a, you want to do both? We can, we do, can both. do both. But the rec- it's going to count for both. Whatever, I'm Shouldn't about to be win this. It's it's whatever. It's, 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 okay. It's whatever, I'm winning right. both. So we know right. where he's at now and where he's going to end with that. So let's start with where he's at right now. It, come to think about it, no, it's too, it's too, it's too easy. It's too easy. We'll do the, we'll do the full year. We'll do the full con, the 15 years. We'll do the, the 15 contract. years. Okay. We'll do the whole thing because we all know what he signed for. Right. And, so okay, it's too, yeah, it's yeah. too easy. We all know what he signed for. And we might as well just do the, the whole contract. Yeah. It's that the same it, football. It, 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 right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Okay. So the, 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 the full contract, uh, the most year, the most money he will earn is in the final year of this deal. It is the 26, 27 season, $27.6 million that year. Draymond Green. That will be his 15th year in the National Basketball Association. The former number 35 Mm -hmm. overall pick in the draft. Mm -hmm. Projected career earnings for Draymond Green will be what? Well, Bob. Why do you call me Bob? I'm going to get this W today by saying... 224. 200. Oh, that's. Oh, it's going to be a dirty game. The champion is disheveled. It's going to be a dirty game. 200. I got my guess. 200. I got, 200, I got it, 224 million. All right. Is Kenny Caraway's guess. So let's talk through this right now. My guess was going to be 223. When, when, when do was. we get to talk through anything? We don't talk enough. The champ. We don't talk. Give the champ give does answer. what the champ wants. I don't know if I want to go 223 or 225 now. I was going to go 223. I'm going to stick with 223 because 217 was on my mind a bit. I'm going to go 223. 223 is the number from the champ. A costly decision from the champion gives Kenny Carraway a very rare victory in pocket watching with the number being 255. Five million dollars, two hundred and fifty-five million five hundred and sixty-two thousand one hundred and eighty-four to be exact. I'm back. If you had gone with two twenty-five, you would have won again. It's all good. We got we got some breathing room in the sand. This is all good. There's chinks in the armor. There's chinks in the armor. I see it. I see it. You're not back. You're five and twelve in pocket watching and you're like three and 12 versus Jesse. What? Who even brings up those numbers? They don't even, they don't even matter. They're accurate. Numbers. They don't even matter. I'm back. Oh yeah. I'm about to start cooking. I'm so, about to start cooking. This man's one of 20 from the field and he's 
We played as well as we could today. We tried. Um, I don't know what the reason is why we lose to teams like this. Hey. I mean, we beat teams like the Nuggets all the time. I'm not sure why we come in hey, Jesse. and we lose games like this. We're trying, but hey, uh, we'll try to figure it out tomorrow. Well, big Warriors fan here hitting the night night. Isn't it crazy? He just hit the night night. Isn't it crazy? The one pocket watching he gets right. I'm pretty sure last time he beat me too was Steph. So Is Draymond I mean. Green? Wow. I, I said he was the LA wow. Caraways. That's my fault. The nobody knows Caraways. Nobody knows the Golden State Warriors like hey, Kenny Caraway does. Okay. Hey, Justin. Who, hey, did he get Kyrie Irving wrong? He got him wrong. But he got Draymond Green yeah, right. Draymond. Man. Getting ready for that dinner, hey, huh? Man. I know, I know, I know my uh you got to know your enemies better than your friends. Wow. Art of War. I got that one wrong out of respect for Paul Pierce. Art of War. Hey, honestly, I thought. Zabo. I thought. KC Dagger, the lead is cut to 27. <laughs> it's Mark Jones, the early years of Colin Kings. <laughs> that's first year of Mark Yo, Jones right there. That's a hell of a callback, too. That's Big so time good. shot by De'Aaron Fox right there. <laughs> and the lead is down to 21. That is good stuff. You know, I thought uh, I thought Jesse made the right decision. I was hoping he wouldn't go under. He did go under. I know. I was oh. hoping he – I mean, I was hoping he uh, would go over. I thought oh. under was the case. Yeah, how many uh, – I was too busy celebrating. How much money is he going to make? Uh, 255562184 Hey, I ain't mad. Dude, so the number – That's a lot of money for somebody. The number like in which started the conversation was – would he walk away from up, upwards of $78 million in the final so. three years? He has a total at this point, 78. That's a good number over the next three years. $177,883,613 mm. on court earnings from Draymond Green mm. at this point. I don't think he'll walk away from that. So... That's why I would I would like to think, oh yeah, he you know he don't want to play with Steph, but I, I don't think he walk away with with that. I know it's a hypothetical, and you're just asking for this situation. I, I the Warriors ain't they ain't they ain't moving off. Number one, they can't. Number two, I don't think Joe Lacob will move off. Of him. Would Joe Lacob move off of him if Steph said, "Could you look into this?" Maybe. Maybe. I mean, I wouldn't say he'd he'd pick him over Steph. Like if Steph said either get rid of him well, or trade yeah. me. Well, but I don't think would, Steph would do that. That's the whole thing. So him like Steph would never put him in a situation to make that type of decision. So I you're right. It's it's crazy. This dude's contract just started. Number one, his game ain't no good. And mm. second of all, he's always getting thrown out. This guy's game ain't no good. Draymond Green, Draymond Green, he does some cool stuff on the on the floor. You know, his defense, his IQ, is talking. You know, little things like that. I ask, I ask, ten, eleven, and twelve year olds to do that. You know what I mean? Those are important things in the game of basketball. But we just, I mean, you know, remember when? Remember when the uh, the Warriors after he got suspended or came back from suspension? And the Warriors started playing good, and everybody was like, "See, it's because Draymond's back." Ain't nobody saying that now. Draymond been here since they stunk it up the last three weeks. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody talking about, "Oh, it's because of Draymond." That's why. I, that's why I said then. I said, "Stop saying that nonsense. Stop. <laughs> Just cut it out." Because he he don't have nothing to do with whether they win or lose. He has nothing to do with it. He's he's just another player. Stop acting like he's something more than that like he's special like he's um some type of uh game changer he's not he's just another player he ain't no different than Corey joseph he's a he just he just Corey, Corey joseph, joseph that, don't get thrown out four minutes that's in true game. too he he ain't nothing but Corey joseph that plays 27 minutes that's it he, he is not mm. a, a game changer and that, and that, I wish they'd stop on it. They won't because everybody, I don't know why, why it is. They want to sound smart or something like that. Bro, stop. And, and it's the same stuff I've been saying about this dude for about five, six years now. This ain't new. He's everything I told you he was going to be five years ago. At, well, I don't know how much basketball you and I were talking five years ago, but I trust you. I, I'm sure you were saying it to me somewhere. Uh, Dr. Um, David, check the tweets. 
Well, you can do well. <laughs> that I did. That I don't doubt. Um. I don't know what I was going to say. I'm thinking about your Twitter account now. So it's fine. <laughs> uh, it's uh, King KC underscore nine one six. By the way, on by the Twitter. way, that's I a, made, by, hey, I made by the, the way, PSA during the break. That's yeah. a that's a that's a shoot. Oh, did you make that when I stepped out? <laughs> I have I have for the for the radio audience. Um, PSA here. There has been I, an adjustment and a change to my Twitter and IG handle. No. It is no longer at I M K Diddy. It is at King KC underscore nine one six follow me this is the second time you've changed it <laughs> this will be the last time well what was it, it ain't before? going back to k diddy i know that well <laughs> what was it before again i think it was like kc 916 or something okay yeah. it might change again i, I might uh i think you I have think another one i think you have another instagram handle living out there somewhere yeah yeah that's uh you're the only one KCB. with a burner account that's your yeah. name kc kcb can you carry basketball still out there still no out there. i think there's another one I think you got KC916 or either that or someone it's made the, it's one. That, it's that. Oh, it's that it's one. It's that account. Okay. I someone tagged on you in the... it. Like someone that worked here <laughs> tagged you in it. I was like, um, ma'am, that's not, um, I, I don't uh, know what that is, but that's not his active IG account. On one of the accounts, um, Kenny Caraway isn't available, I think. Mm. And I was trying to have him like be the same. No, nah, that's, 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 that's a good call. Kenny Caraway. It might be. I don't know. You didn't try. I, no, Kenny Caraway is available time, on Twitter. I remember last time I tried. I told him um, um, during the break, he should have went with I am K redacted. <laughs> <laughs> so as of now, King KC underscore 916. Go follow your boy. Well, they probably already do, just for the record. It's just if you have trouble when you go to tag Kenny in something, know that it's <laughs> it's a little it's a little bit different. Uh, it's a little bit different. Um all right, let's. What else do we have here? I don't have anything else on Draymond Green. Like I, I, I don't think that's a an offense that Adam Silver has to be upset by, but this whole this whole stuff surrounding Draymond Green over the last this entire season has been such a joke. You gotta, um, and I, honestly, you probably just don't even care enough. But I'll ask anyway. You got a problem with him doing the podcast afterwards, and then like speaking about it on the pod? No, I mean, that's no, it's no different than a post game conference. Huh? Well, no, it's but, no, it's it's his business, right? Like LeBron's got a pod like guys. No, I don't have a problem with it. And there's also the aspect like it. Draymond Green goes in the be- business for Draymond Green, too. Like, right. That's just who we. It, is. Yeah. I mean, if anything else, it exemplifies how selfish he is. Yeah. Like like losing four like getting ejected four minutes into the first quarter when you weren't even fouled or anything your team needs for you. no reason like no the way reason. Steve Kerr Steph and like we don't believe it or whatever it may be like the way they talk about you like they depend on you clearly mm-hmm. and for you to get yourself ejected because that's what he did he got himself ejected it wasn't like the ref messed up like you're all about yourself yeah. uh, he, he's he's all the the great teammate he's not he's a he he rides Steph's coattails. And that's the only one he's really like that loyal to because that's the guy that gets him all the attention that he wants. He ain't that loyal to nobody else. Yeah. Just that. And then like, I really, I'm, I'm sorry. I really do have a problem that they like try to throw that together as a trio, like Steph, Clay and Dre together. Like, bro, Draymond Green is not on the level of those two guys. Like, stop. It was nasty work stop. after the 22 man. finals against Boston. They had those three guys out there when it should have been Steph, Jordan Poole, and Wiggins. Yeah, man, stop. And they're like, all oh, the the Steph, Draymond, Clay era. Like, bro, he's not. No, he's just there. Just because he's there doesn't mean it's his era. He's not on the same level or anywhere close to the same level as those guys. You've also completely wiped out KD, huh? And mm. I and and we mm. could have the conversation mm. uh, again. This whole they wouldn't have won without name them. Name the ones they wouldn't have won without Draymond. Real talk, KD is like just erased from yeah. Warriors lore. What what you could make an day? argument for the first one? I think we kind of talked about it. What happened when didn't Draymond shoot a shot at KD's low low key? Oh, after when he came back, when he came back from therapy, he. Said he took a shot at KD in a way where he's like, "Yeah, guys, saying I need help and stuff like that." Like, don't help my back. Like, basically, oh. like, KD was talking about like, "Yeah, I hope he gets help." But Draymond yeah. took offense to that. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah, bro, you need help. <laughs> like real help, not the fake stuff that you did at the beginning of this year. You need real, genuine help. You know, there's something wrong with you. You know what, though? That he, he don't need no help. That's that's almost a cop out. He just is who he is. He's a selfish individual. You don't really get, I don't know if you get help for being selfish. Like that's that's who you are. That's in your blood. He's gonna be selfish to the day he die. Mm. You don't go to therapy for three months and come back. I'm not selfish he, no more. Maybe you can I like think, have a better understanding of why you are who you are, and maybe like maybe not get there as quickly. But that's who he's gonna be for life. Well, let's let's keep it a buck too. Like um, I'm not gonna knock his therapy. Like maybe he did get some out of it or whatever. But the NBA sent him. I don't away think he for, actually did it. Well, well, that's the thing. The NBA sent him away for three weeks. They sent Jaw to drive through therapy for two days or whatever. Like let's not act like when they're sending these guys out there. Like like come on. Like they're sending them away so we forget about it for a few weeks or whatever. Maybe he goes right. and talks to someone. And then they're back and it's like all right, let's move on. Like like therapy is therapy, but I don't. I'm the NBA therapy ain't real. You want to fill Will in on what he missed today? A W for your boy. He, so I'm expecting an updated graphic he, and an update. As a matter of fact, matter of fact. Look at that. He's posing for the graphic. That's I what need, he's doing. I need that. No, it's good. I need that. No, no, I have to explain that because this is a freaking radio show. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Kenny. There's levels to this, all right? Boston Celtics culture, Charlotte Hornets. We're smiling for 4 and 12. Yeah. That's what we're doing. Yeah. We're smiling for 4 and 12. You want to post for We're hitting your... the film tonight. We're going to see what we did wrong. We're not happy. All right, this is BS. We'll be better tomorrow. But I'm happy you're four and twelve. It's three well, and twelve versus you. Well, That's well, facts. Three what and twelve. What was that? Uh, would Would you say Jesse? You know, a couple months ago, it's hard to get up. You know, for KC on a Thursday. You yeah, know, playing I'm not lying. It's yeah, hard yeah, to, it's yeah. Hard what to, happened this it's Thursday? Hard to play yeah, hard yeah. Against the KCs. <laughs> All right. For the for the for the Willsies, we're ready to go. For the Bobby Marks's, we're ready to go. For the KCs, it's a little tough. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, did you? Uh, Soren says KC really is Lamelo Ball. You see that story? No, Lamelo out for the year officially. I mean, it's not a big surprise, but it's just a, a fin finality on another season that he wasn't able to end. I, I think next I season. I actually thought he was already ruled out. Yeah, my bad. I mean, bad work on my part. Next, ne well, I mean, I hadn't even thought twice about it to be honest with you until I saw the tweet this morning saying he's officially out. But well, I had the a Hornets game on the box and mm -hmm. the quad, and I saw him. I was like, oh yeah, he is out for the year. It, I didn't hear anything. That was right. just my thought because he's right. in street clothes. We're ten games away from the end of the season. Charlotte's not doing anything. Right, it's just an assumption. I mean, next year is a big year for him. Next year, this all this summer and next season. Is a big season. You know how much I like Lamelo. That's that's my guy. But he's got to decide what he wants to be. And I know he's getting injured. He doesn't have any control over injuries. But maybe that goes into how you're preparing yourself in the off season. You know, maybe that goes into a, a number of different things, like your your professionalism. If you're just if you're doing everything you're supposed to and you're just getting hurt, you have no control over that. I don't want to say if that's the case. You know, it's all his fault because it's not. You can't control injuries. But, I mean, he's got to prepare himself. You know, he's got to he's got to do a better job preparing himself. And at the very least, the from the outside looking in, it looks like you know it's a big season for him, man. He's got to he's got to take it as such. I'm rooting for him. I like Lamelo. I do too. Yeah. Uh, I do too. But I don't know what a big season for him does for them. It might do I, a I lot, though. It might. It might do a lot. And, it might. And when I say big season, it's not just being on the floor. It's, you know, his maturity level, his, mm -hmm. his, his leadership, and some of the things that have been in question the last couple of years, his durability. You know, hopefully he can get all that in line next year. And I'm not saying he's going to be out the league if it doesn't happen, but, you know, it's it feels like a fork in the road moment for his career next year. Yeah, he's not even approaching out of the league. No, no, not at all. He just signed a contract extension for a hundred and some million dollars. Yeah, I mean, tomorrow, I mean, I mean maybe when we come back, it's, we can see how much he's already made. Well, no, we're not doing. He's got like two. No, okay, I know you're feeling good right uh, now. I mean, will you I'm, stop? I'm trying to collect. Will you stop? I'm trying to collect. Sleeping on your boy, so I'm trying to collect. This guy. <laughs> All right, we'll come back. Uh, much more ahead. Matt George is going to join us uh, just about an hour. He's got a lot. 
Uh, he's got to say Sweet 16 gets underway. We're going to be at Bar West. We'll tell you about that when Dylan Casey return here on Sacramento Sports Theater, ESPN 1320. I I got the t- I, th- I got the time all wrong. That happens. Was that uh Jim who walked by and, and said uh was checking to see if it was on TV or not? Ken, yeah. Ken, what did I say, Ken, Jim? Ken, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I was going to tell him something. One nothing, Gigantes, top of the fifth. Let's go. TC asked me earlier what I was eating. Some kind of kettle chips that Kim gave me. They're actually not bad. They're good. Hey, shout out to the um, shout out to technology. Shout out to our vending machine. At least the one that gets the the drinks. I tried to get some cranberry juice, and there was a glitch in the matrix. the The machine missed the cranberry. Juice. Mm. It goes down to the bottom and it goes through its own little procedure of going to the place where it lets out the drink and it opens up and you get it or whatever the case may be. It was able to detect that it did not drop off a drink and it didn't charge me. Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah. It was like no drink dispense, zero, zero dollars. There's a few in the snack vending machine where like the little rings don't work as well. So if you play it right and you buy it on the right day, it won't give you the, like say if I want M&Ms, like it doesn't give me the M&Ms. Yeah, I was about to say It'll give me the M&Ms, but it'll give me some more M&Ms after this. I get two for one. I was going to say that that M&M slot. Yeah, there used to be be a fruit snack one too. I think that's why they (laughs) took it out. Dude, I was cashing on fruit snacks like every day. (laughs) Well, Jay, it's not necessarily two for one because the cranberry juice dropped to the bottom of the machine mm. and it can't be can't be picked up. Yeah, the two for one only works for the snacks. Yeah. Dr. David, I did see that uh, on this day. What is that? Brawl for All, right? That's what they called it? Yeah. 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 I'll stop it just in case. I think he's on me. No, no, he didn't. Is that first major league hit for my boy, my boy Lee? There we go. I actually do like the idea of, uh... oh, and then he gets picked off. (laughs) Come on, man. Who's not going to cut it here? Welcome to the NBA or welcome to Major League Baseball. How do you get picked off? <laughs> yeah, I'm picked off by by you, Darvish, right handed pitcher, too. Damn. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, do that. I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the Dodger game on in here though. So I can I need this is the thing. I always tell you guys, you gotta know your enemy better than you know yourself. <clears throat> so I gotta see those little bastards. Oh my gosh, it's already five to one. I'm turning this bullshit. Season's over. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone go home. One more run and show hey, it's over. <laughs> He's playing, right? He's just not pitching. Shohei is not pitching at all this year. No, I don't think so. Think you don't think he's time. pitching again? I think he is going to pitch again. Oh, you do? I don't okay. think he should, but I think he is. And I think that's part of that's part of the reason why they signed him because he's he doesn't even play the field. Yeah, he's not pitching. He's not pitching this year, but they're expecting him. I think next year. Yeah, you know, he's not even playing the field, so I don't know if you'd spend however, well two dollars. It seems like um, for a DH, sure, sure, you could do that, but uh, I think he'll pitch uh, next year. Most of that two dollars was uh gambled away. No, that's not what I was gonna say. <laughs> away. I was gonna Allegedly. Say it was uh what's the word? It was pushed back. Nah, what's that word the, they use? Kick the deferred deferred. Yeah, it was deferred. That two dollars was deferred. Um all right. I can't lie. I was a little thrown off by what time it was. It happens. It definitely does. There's too much going on in our day today. We're going to be out at uh, Bar West, 2724 uh, J Street in Midtown. If you want to come through and watch these games with us tonight, we're going to be there as soon as this show ends. Uh, so we'll sign off here from the Chatty House, and we will head out uh, and make our way again, 2724 J Street. Uh, if you want to watch some of tonight's basketball games with us, we'll be there uh, right after 4 o'clock. Uh, as soon as we can get there, we will. Hey, um, it's, mm -hmm. since we got a chance here, you know, a little, little window here, I mean, we we can either keep the bit going and not talk about NFL or we can, <laughs> or we can talk about it real quick. Yeah, so the NFL rule changes have been one of those things that we've written into the show and just <laughs> haven't quite gotten to. Um, but, yeah, there are some changes coming to to the to the National Football League. Um, there's the kickoff change. A lot of people like were upset with that. <laughs> I, I think it kind of actually makes sense. So a lot of people are upset with it. And then I was reading an article. It was like, most of the people aren't even going to notice it. <laughs> right. Well, first of all, the, the, what's I'm sure in the article, they might've had a percentage of touchbacks, mm -hmm. which is gotta be in the eighties. Yeah. Which like, is what most kickers do. They just boot the kick out of the end zone. And, I always remember people saying like one of the worst plays in football, like craziest plays is the kickoff, right? Like just running full speed and, you know, for 40 yards into, you know, block, it's just chaos. Right. And I, I don't know. I don't see a big problem with the kickoff. A lot of people are like, what happened to the game? I loved and all this other stuff. Like it's fine. It's no big deal. Who's really amped up for the kickoff? Like what? Are, what are we talking about? I don't know. Uh, don't but know there's what? like a. I, I guess this is this was a an adaption, a modification, a bit from from something the XFL was doing. Mm -hmm. And there's like a like a drop zone. There's all sorts of like different you know things to it. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's that big of a deal, and I truthfully don't think anyone is really going to care mm. or notice. Um, did we, we talked about the, the drop tackle on here, right? Kind of. So the hip drop, we got an alert. It, it was, it was sometime during the show, but we got an alert that the hip drop tackle is banned. Mm -hmm. And then it was, we had like a brief discussion on it. We didn't really get to it in depth, but you're okay with it being banned. And I, right. I don't yeah, want to speak I, for you. I, no, I am. I mean, it's just. It doesn't always happen, but it's a it's a it's a dangerous tackle. Mm. It's a dangerous yeah. tackle. As far as like leg injuries, 
to the offensive player. You do you equate it because you you use this as an example when we were talking about enforcing it. Mm-hmm. You equate it to the horse collar. Yeah. Like you feel like you can see a hip drop tackle the same way you can see a horse collar tackle. Um yeah. Because a so horse collar like, is blatantly we like, like see it and then like, like you flag. know what it is the second you like hey, hey, hey. like even when they're reaching, hey, hey you can't right. do that. Right. Like the, the, the hip drops a little bit different. Yeah. I feel like I can. I know Jesse had talked about um oh no, it's in there, but he had talked about they like showed some examples. Mm-hmm. And it was like, wait a minute, that's a that's a hip drop. That don't look like hip. So I I, I think there are some instances where technically it's going to be ruled a hip drop, where it's like that looks like a regular tackle, but more times than not, um, it feels like you know you can you know when you see it. Okay, but I could be wrong. I'm you know, I love football. How it was when we were growing up. How you know how it is today but maybe because i didn't play it or what i'm not i'm okay with them removing parts of the game that are unnecessarily like violent or career threatening and i think the that's it's most of the game it is it is most of the game but i i, I do think there's um there's a correct well i hear you there's a correct way to do certain things. I just think what happens is people argue over what's correct and what's not. Like you, you mentioned the like those two play like the the horse collar that mm-hmm. they banned and the the hip drop. I mean that's those those are we've seen broken legs and broken mm-hmm. you know like mm-hmm. and I know you you see that you know in, in regular tackles and stuff like that. But I feel like if you don't have to do it that way you shouldn't and you should just eliminate it like they have now here's the thing here's the thing that i am sympathetic to to the defensive players i mean these these offensive players are big fast and strong Mm -hmm. and your job depends on being able to get them on the ground and sometimes like this your livelihood depends on so you got to do what you got to do I know it sounds crazy, but in a roundabout way, you got to do what you got to do to put food on the on the table mm-hmm. for your family. So you're going to do that by any means necessary. And this is just taking one of those means away. So I am sympathetic to that, but I don't know. I feel like you can you can still do your job without that uh, hip drop. Yeah, I'm. I'm sure you can. I hope it's not. I hope it doesn't become a thing where tackling becomes more dangerous because guys are trying to figure out how to eliminate that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like that, that to me with the horse collar, and this is why I push back a little bit on that. That is just so blatantly obvious. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. And you can't go up around the neck. You can't, you just can't do that anymore. Absolutely bizarre to me that you could still grab someone's hair and pull, but I actually do kind of understand the difference yeah. unless you grab the hair. Cause normally you see guys like grab the hair and pull back. Mm-hmm. The problem with the horse collar ta- tackle is you weren't really pulling back. You were almost pull, like doing a hip pulling, drop. Yeah, like yeah, you like were you pulling were, down. You were riding the, the collar, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? For like yeah. putting all your 230 yeah. pounds on or whatever it is. And that's, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, but that's my concern is that, they start like getting hesitant about how they tackle and tackling because like it be, it becomes a bigger issue mm-hmm. than it already is. Yeah. Um, there's also a football game on a Wednesday this year. Well, Christmas I mean, Wednesday. They, they, it's not a it's not a random Wednesday. Two it's, games. It's Christmas Wednesday. Two games. So four teams. They're gonna have to figure. Oh, there's out. there's two games there's on Christmas. Games. Mm. So there's two Christmas Day games. So four teams are going to figure out how they do that. I don't know schedule wise how that works. It's really late in the season, so it seems like all the buys are done. So mm-hmm. are you having? And because it's two games, like I said, four teams. That's tough. Are you having Thursday the week before? Yeah, and I feel like that would be one of the so. Say, for instance, the Packers play the Steelers on Thursday the week before. Mm-hmm. 
maybe the Packers can play one game on Christmas Day. The Steelers play the other. Mm -hmm. But what do you do with the two other teams? When are they played? Maybe. I doubt it. Doubleheader Thursday? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. But – but and it's just the four teams playing like a round robin because they can't play each other again. You know what I mean? It's yeah, just, basically just that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. And and it's a playing tournament, <laughs> right? But it's it's like it, it seems unnecessary for one for it one year. Yeah, it doesn't for one feel, year. It's, it's if you want to always have games on Christmas, cool. Make it make sense. Do what you got to do. But say, hey, if it falls on a Wednesday, we just can't swing that with our schedule. Yeah. Well, because like the last week for a bye week in the NFL is week 14. That's December 10th. So it's like some, and they don't have double headers on Thursday. Maybe they try to do it where like the team that played Saturday plays Wednesday because you didn't play Sunday, but. The, play, the team that plays Saturday. Because Saturday, like. Are they, late, is that when they start? The, they start late December. Like usually in December is when they start having the Saturday games. Well, even then, it's e- a crazy turnaround. So even that gets a little crazy now because usually they would mm-hmm. start the Saturday games after uh, championship week in college football. Mm-hmm. So college football is done for about four weeks before, you know, the bowl season. Well, that's out the window now. They're going to be playing from championship week every Saturday and Sunday or Saturday, maybe Friday, Saturday, till January 7th or something like that. I saw something where they have a game, a football game on – Every day, except for maybe two. Let me see if I can pull this up real quick. Every day, except for maybe two from like January 23rd, or excuse me, December 23rd to January 1st. Like between college football playoffs and NFL games, Mm. there's a game every day, Mm. except for like two. I think Christmas Eve was one, and there's another one. So, yeah, from December 19th all the way to January 1st, The only days there aren't games are December 24th, and that looks to be it. Wow. So between Thursday night football, college football playoff, Monday night football, NFL being on Christmas, there's there's games every day from the 19th to the 1st. Wow. Mm. That's a lot. All right. Well, that's a lot. And uh, look, I, I'm I'm anxious to see it, but I don't know how that works with the NFL with that Wednesday Christmas game. Well, I I can I I I, I saw um, Roger say Wednesday football will not be a regular thing. I saw that, mm-hmm. so this is a a Christmas thing. I went to like, ah, let's see what old Mike Florio talking about. You know, Mike just be he be giving them them questions. Well, <laughs> them thoughts. Well, he does. Sometimes they're <laughs> nonsensical at best, but he he does it. What's the one? What if Andy Reid retires and Bill Belichick is the Chiefs coach? What? Why? Who told you? Who told you that? <laughs> no one told him that. He's just hypothesizing. All right, buddy. Um. But I, I I do all kidding aside in, in, enjoy Florio's work. But he he did he wrote something that got my attention, and it's about this conversation we're having. And it took me a minute to like piece it together, but I got it. It's a Wednesday. Well, Wednesday's not Monday. Mm-hmm. It's not Thursday. It's not Sunday. It's not Sunday night. Mm. It means it has no broadcasting home. Mm which means it's up for auction. Mm-hmm. These two games on Christmas Day are hitting the bidding block. Mm. And through one week of Wednesday's games, they can likely pull in $100 million from those two games oh, because of broadcasting rights. They're going to do... So So you think for for this year... Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah, Flor- yeah, no, yeah, Florio's for this not this hypothesizing yeah, yeah. that. A hundred million dollars for that one day Absolutely. for December twenty fifth, twenty twenty four. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Apple TV, and he's not like that. Getting our I jokes don't think off. Do that. Yeah, be, yeah, that's we're, we're, we're that's not a hypothesis on on Mike Florio's part because I don't want these two conversations to be confused. 
that's happening. Mm-hmm. Those games are going up for auction, and they're they're going to be whether it's Peacock, Amazon, HBO Max, mm-hmm. CBS, ABC, Disney, whatever. They're 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 up. They're out there. Mm-hmm. Twitter, yeah, or X Netflix. Or well, I don't think X is going to do it, but whatever. Netflix might mess around. Yeah, yeah. I just I, I think it's um, they didn't have to. I mean, look, the money's going to be the money, but. It's, players do get you know uh, that money yeah. like see you split 50 million dollars like 572 ways 25.99 yeah well <laughs> um but yeah I'm, I'm just i'm anxious to see how that plays out definitely anxious to see how it plays out and, and look as a as a guy that loves sports that loves football what i just mentioned there is a level of excitement to that where I said there's a meaningful football game on every day from the 19th to the first. Mm-hmm. And that's, that, that's, that's something we've never seen before. Mm-hmm. And I'm anxious to see what that looks like, but um, yeah, they better make the games good for Christmas. This past year, I, I yeah. can't like, you know, I'm a big NBA guy, but it, it worked out. You know, the chiefs and the Raiders was a good one. I was interested. Yep. I had a personal interest in Eagles Giants because I wanted to, you know, there was uh, playoff seating and stuff like that. If that wasn't the case, like if that was another AFC game, if it was Buffalo and somebody, I don't know if I'd be as tapped in. And then obviously the Niners and Ravens. So, you know, I was tapped into the NFL on Christmas Day, but I had a a rooting interest. A couple of years ago, they tried to put like Vikings Saints. And Broncos Chargers, like I no, I, I'm not the type to just watch any game, but I'm probably in the minority too. They better not put it against the Kings game, though. I know that much. The Kings Christmas Day game, yeah, man, yeah, it's happening. Yeah, I'm not on that train this year. <laughs> well, the, I the hope playoffs you're right. ain't here yet. They go to the conference finals. They had the most exciting series in the playoffs last year. Well, that's that's cr- yeah. that's true. That's true. Um. Yeah, I'm not setting myself up to be. Hurt, you know? <laughs> I, I just, still ups- Let's put the Warriors and Kings on TV every day, <laughs> except that one. They put they put every Warriors Kings game on TV. No, the, I think the second one wasn't on national TV where Clay hit the shot. I think that was mm-hmm. regular TV. Mm-hmm. But they put a preseason game, two yep. preseason games, or one. Definitely one. I don't remember if it was both of them or not. They had two of them. I don't remember if they were both on. The other one was TV. the Lakers, maybe. I think it might have been. I don't know. It might have been. I don't know. It could have been. They put like six Kings Warriors games on national TV, but said, let's put Warriors Nuggets on Christmas Day. That was the nap game. Nobody was watching. I don't even think I, yeah, I don't even think I watched that. Nobody was watching that. Uh, 916 909 Let's get our man Javier here. Hey. Uh, Javier, we was talking about you earlier, bro. Yeah, I heard. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, what up, big dog? No, I just want to make sure it's clear, you know, uh, me being, you know, you guys are basketball gurus, but I mean, I'm a four-year high school player, a four-year college football player, and I play still in the adult league, teach P, coach varsity football, but the kickoff in the game, sir, no disrespect, say nobody would notice is completely just irrational and competent there's 2,000 reps okay Javier calm down <laughs> don't call me incompetent I don't know who you think you're talking to homie I don't know who you think you're talking to buddy as a matter of fact throw his ass off who the oh, hell are oh. you talking to talking about irrationally incompetent bro what show you think this is I'm sorry everyone listening right now raise your hand if you give a damn about the kickoff you don't you can look at it and see that it's different. No one's going to care. <laughs> no one cares, Javier. And kiss my ass. Oh, Irrationally incompetent. You little bitch. I will <laughs> slap your ass. Who are you talking to? Yeah, you could laugh if you want to. I don't know who the hell you talking to. Oh, punk ass clown going to call my show and call me incompetent. I'm sorry. We'll poll everybody during the season <laughs> about how worked up they got because the kicker ran down during the kickoff. Idiot. Yeah, I don't, I, I'm not gonna miss the kick. Nah, you don't, 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 don't play with me. Yeah, that's don't a play wild, with me. A wild move. Incompetent, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> B 
be out your damn mind. Yeah, no, let's all line up and be frustrated because the kickoff looks different. Jesus Christ. Go ahead, bro. Study your football. <laughs> oh, man. Anyone Jesus. else want to call and say something stupid? <laughs> oh, no, we appreciate you listening. No, nah, man, kick rocks. 916-909-1320. Oh, man. Goofy tap attitude. in with us. Yeah, tap in with us. Yeah, no, I'm not missing the kickoff, Whatever. man. And in the, kick, the kickoff isn't going away. That's the other thing about it. It's just no, kind of it's, set up a different way. But it doesn't matter. Like, that's the thing that kills me. Like, why does... Yo, the kickoff sometimes is damn on near almost missed on the, the 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 TV coverage. Why? Because of exactly what you said earlier. It gets booted out of the end zone 85% of the freaking time. It's not a, a, a an incredible change to the game. They've already started to phase out the kickoff for years now. This is like the third year they've tried to in some way shape or form tone down the kickoff and phase it out. They started doing it with onsides. We're getting an onside kick now. It's virtually impossible. They're Man, trying to eliminate the... They eliminate the uh, surprise of the onside kick now. Like, you have to... Right. Them. You have to inform everybody. Like, it, it, it's... They've been trying to phase this out for you. No one raises a fuss about it because no one cares. You just assume when someone scores that the ball's coming out on the 25. That's it. Yeah. Teams have adjusted... I wish there was something you could do with onside, but there's not. There are at least there has there have been things presented, which is, is Jesse noted have been shut down. But no one goes, man. That game, boy, that Super Bowl with the the Chiefs and boy, that would have been better if if the old kickoff rules were in place. I I don't I don't on, have man. any problem with goodness. Gracious. I don't have I don't have any problem with what they've done with the alignment of the kickoff. I don't think they should get rid of the kickoff, though. Like, a lot of people are like, I'll just put it on the 25. Like, keep the kickoff. There's there's a number of different things that could happen on the kickoff. Like, you can return it for a touchdown. It can get kicked out of bounds, and that could affect uh, field position. You get the ball on the 40. You know, they could pooch kick it. But that could and, still happen. Like, the ball could no, still get kicked it, out of bounds. No, it, it, that's what I'm saying. Like, I wouldn't uh, – and I don't – you're not saying this. I just read this when the uh, rule was – the new rule was put out. Some people were like, well, just get rid of it and put it on the 25. I wouldn't go that far. Like, still keep the play in the game, but you don't have to have these guys running full speed for 40 yards and crashing into guys who are just standing there waiting. Like, you don't have to do that. I don't I don't have a problem with how they have the new alignment. I wonder if we're getting there, though. Well, I, I don't disagree with you. Yeah. Like, there's so much that could happen. I just – I wonder if we're getting to the point where – I, I don't I, like. I think they're going to try this first because I don't think they want to eliminate it. But I don't think they one, do either. One of the things that I did hear a lot of times was that was just a melee. Like the way the kickoff is, nobody wants to be on the kickoff. You know, it's just it's just crazy. It's it's, it's uh, breeding ground for concussions, right? So now I think they feel like they're doing this to try to keep the play in there, but maybe make it a little safer and eliminate the concussion or the chances or. Uh, possibility of concussions uh, on that play. So hopefully it works out and they can keep the play in it. The hip drop ban mm -hmm. significantly greater than the yeah. kickoff change. I mean, the hip, the hip drop, I'm, I'm for it. It's going to be interesting to see how they officiate it. You know, if it, cause, cause like I said, I feel like I know it when I see it, but on some of the videos I saw of them saying, yeah, this will be labeled a hip hip drop tackle. Mm, yeah. Like that looks like a regular tackle. I don't understand that. But so. I guess that's where people in where they are they in Secaucus too? I don't where know they? where they are. It's gonna be something else for these. But wherever it, wrong. well. Well, I'm talking about the yeah. All right. Uh we're gonna be at Bar West tonight. Javier, come through. Come hang out. Twenty seven twenty four J Street. Bar West, man, we're going to be watching the Sweet 16 Come tonight. with peace. <laughs> with peace. Dudes be playing with me thinking they can call talking stupid. We'll come back. Oh, Matt George is going to join us uh, in about 30 minutes. Uh, we'll talk with him. Um, I got a question for you. Okay. 
before Matt George? Yeah, or in, yeah no, it's before. Oh, yeah, Matt George still Matt, Matt, Matt George still a bit away, a bit away. I got a question for you. We'll talk about the Kings, by the way, in 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 the, in the game tomorrow. Mm. I think I know your answer. I do know. I, in fact, I do. You know, I do uh, know your answer. Still try me, try me. I just think you're wrong. We'll talk that's about it. Not, as you can see, everything that's going on today, well, I ain't wrong. No, nope, you're having a day. The new graphic is up. For those that may have <laughs> I missed it, seen it, the new Come graphic on, baby, is up. Let's go. Let's go. Got a dub. <laughs> Dilo and Casey here on ESPN 1320. Hey, I will tell you clearly, bro. Fuck you. Come see me. Come see me. No, Fucking no. bitch. You've got me fucked up. Come see me. Come see me. Goofy ass motherfucker. Gross incompetence. Fucking clown. Easiest dude to find, bro. Easiest dude to find. I'll give you all the spoiler. I think Casey's wrong about the Lakers. Anthony Davis was really good against Milwaukee. I watched some of that back yesterday. I actually didn't even watch the Lakers Memphis. I was trying to catch up on Lakers Bucks. Anthony Davis was really good in that game. And LeBron don't miss playoff games like he can go. Not that far. Hmm. 200, man, I got to get you guys the number. 292, I think, was the number. That seems ridiculous, but I think it was 292. Now I can't even find the article. Nearly 300, I know that. Y'all need to leave Michigan alone. I saw someone say when uh, Beatrice was with us that... uh, that Michigan should be a mentor because they listen to the elderly. That's funny. That's funny. Y'all need to leave my man Michigan alone. Uh, uh, April 8th, Monday, right? Monday, April 8th at Tom's Watch Bar. First time there. Yeah, Tom's Watch Bar, April 8th. We actually might get there with that one. Get right out of here. 30 minute drive. Long ass pregame. Oh, they don't even have the time on here yet. How's that possible? I was going to say still to be determined. I'm pretty sure we can get there. I feel like that's a. Uh, 
you might have missed it. I know Mike talked. We didn't air the videos. Did he say something of like major substance? I saw HB talked. Where's Sean? Uh, lessons from the loss. Friday's rematch. Must win? Question mark. Challenge of the final stretch. How long is this? That's ten minutes. Sydney Dean, does, is it is it is it big time? Something we need to be in there. Sydney Dean. Guardhouse is good, Jay. Guardhouse is good. Um, I think people really like Polanco. I've never eaten there before. Polanco is good. I like their tacos. I've only and been people there. People really, time. really like it. My wife don't want to go back. Not because she don't like it. She just we haven't gone back, but I like Polanco. <sighs> we're working on it, Mondo. We're working oh, man. on it, man. We're we're trying. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, I don't know if Echo and Rig is the spot though for to watch the game though. They got TVs in there unless you're at the bar. Yeah, Echo and Rig. Yeah. I don't think that's so what, what what game are they talking about? You're talking about going Friday to oh watch the Golden that. One. Yeah. 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 Nah, not Echo and Rig. I mean it is it's cool pre-game um and post game too, but to watch the game, I wouldn't that wouldn't be the first place I would go. Yeah, I'd uh there's like you'd be better off at like places I would go yard there. house or yeah. Sauce or one of those joints. Or Tom's Watch Bar, obviously. Tom's Watch Bar is probably number one right now down there. Yeah. Jesse, you've eaten there. Yeah. Oh. Tom's Watch Bar? We're headed out to Bar West immediately following this show, 2724 J Street in Midtown. You want to come through and watch some of these basketball games with us? There's some good games going on today. Sweet 16 uh, going down. Obviously, the one that everybody's looking forward to is UConn and San Diego State mm -hmm. and their reach, rematch of last year's national championship game. But Clemson, Arizona is going to be a good one. Uh, Alabama, North Carolina is going to be a good one. I think the game of the night is going to be Illinois and Iowa State. I think that's going to be – that's going to be lit. Lit Thursday, Sweet Sixteen Thursday. Hey, low key in history, have been giving us some classics. They give him some classics. The Richard Hamilton joint, where he hit the uh, the buzzer beater against Washington, is on that list. Um, from when I was thinking about this, I thought Duke Kentucky was on this list. I think that was a, that had to be a lead eight, but it was a Thursday night. I think it wasn't. It wasn't on the weekend, so yeah, that had to be a lead eight. But the scheduling was different back then. But hmm. usually Sweet 16, Thursday and Friday, man. Classic. The yeah. um You like the the makeup of the teams, like they're all with the exception of NC State. These are the these are the teams. Yeah, it's all yeah. It's it's good. It's good. It's good the way it's all played out. Um I think they're gonna I think this weekend, these four days of uh the men's tournament. A lot of people, it's been fashionable to talk about the women's tournament being better than the men's and all this other stuff. And I love the women's tournament. We talked about it earlier. I think you're going to get four good days of, of men's tournament as well. I think it's going to be some good stuff. Uh, let's get Ramsey in here, 916-909-1320. What's up, Ramsey? Not too much, gentlemen. With it, with it being opening day, enjoying it. And I, and I got a couple of things that I think I don't know. I don't call it crazy, but just a couple of predictions. Yankees aren't making the playoffs because I think they're the fourth best team in their division. Mm -hmm. And speaking of their division, of any team I'd have to predict, potentially take to win it all, I like the Baltimore Orioles. That team is good. That team is young. And if they keep it together, I think they might go on a run. Wow. And, they picked up, and they picked up the a Cy Young candidate in Corbin Burns. To head that head that staff, they're scary. That, I'm gonna uh, tell Ramsey just real quick before you, I'm gonna tell Ramsey I'm gonna remember this conversation. So when the time is right, if the Orioles are in the World Series, <laughs> we can give him his flowers. <laughs> just don't want any flower discrepancy. So we, we got just, you, Ramsey. We write it down. Write it down. Um, now the Orioles. A lot of people said the Orioles are gonna be pretty good. I saw something uh, last night as well. Somebody said the Tigers. 
Central. I'm like, damn, I ain't heard from the Tigers in a minute. That's one. See, that's one thing that drives me nuts a little bit about baseball is like hearing Ramsey. Like you got like like Ramsey somehow sees every game that's played every day. I don't know how he does it, but he manages to do it. But you like what you just said right there. What he said about like the the the, the Orioles. Like you have these teams where it's like, oh, it's a good story. Hey, yo, look at this team that's cooking. And then you like see that the Dodgers are like eighty two and four. Like there's all, or or it could be, you know, in, in the past, like it was the Yankees. Like there's always, there's always like the what you know, one of those teams, two of those teams that are just like overrun with talent and dominate the news cycle. When there's a handful of other teams, it's like, yo, if y'all are paying attention, those teams kind of fire. Yeah. Like the, not in the same category because they've you know been, but like the Braves last year, mm-hmm. right? The Braves were like the same thing. Yeah, I mean there's. Uh, the the Diamondbacks would probably be a, a good example of the last year as yeah. well because you know that was a good team that was overshadowed because the Dodgers were in their division and um, even they don't they didn't make the playoffs but the hype of the Padres coming into the season and Arizona just kind of went into the playoffs um, under everybody's radar end up getting to the World Series hell they almost ended the career of Mad Dog or should have. Hmm. <laughs> well, they should have. He didn't. Well, he didn't follow he didn't through. Follow through, but he, didn't he said through. he was going to retire. It's probably a lot of things that should have ended Mad Dog's career, but <laughs> yet here we are, Stephen A. Smith of all people, breathing life into it. <laughs> um, I told you there was something I was going to ask you. I'm I'm not going to yeah. ask you. I'm going to reframe it because of our earlier discussion. We outlined. Uh, at the top of the show, how virtually everything went wrong for Sacramento last night. Mm-hmm. Uh, Warriors won, Lakers won, Rockets won. That's not really bad for Sacramento. That's not, that's that's, that, that, that's indifferent. Uh, and the Suns beat the Nuggets. Like all of that happened last night. Mm-hmm. The Lakers have won five straight. There, I think, is a game and a half back from Sacramento. Yeah, two in the last uh, column, I think. Okay. Um. They might be making a little bit of a run right here. Well, to be honest with you, with the Lakers, not to cut you off, sorry, but they—if you stretch that out a little bit, no flag. If you stretch that out a little bit, they've been playing basketball, good basketball for a while. Their issue has been they can't beat the Kings, or at least they haven't been able to yet this year. But remember, before the first game, I don't know if that's what or not, uh, but what we got to do, yeah. Um. I think before the first game against the Kings, they had won like four or five in a row. And they played the Kings and got beat up. Then there was like maybe a game or two where they won, played them the next week, got beat up. And then here we are. It's probably been six games since then, six or seven games since then. They're playing good basketball still. So they've been playing good basketball for a minute. They just kind of – they I don't want to say get overshadowed, but – Maybe, you know, it gets lost in the sauce a little bit because of those two games against the Kings. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I, you know what? One thing I didn't do, I mean, I know we have. I've done this. We've done this. So, is their schedule at Pacers, mm-hmm. and that's tomorrow, mm-hmm. at Nets, at win. Raptors, that's a win. at Wizards, that's a win. Cleveland, this is for you, back in Los Angeles, mm-hmm. Minnesota. Golden State mm-hmm. at Grizzlies at Pelicans. It's a it's fair. It's like an evenly played schedule. I mean, you should have three wins in there for sure. The Pacers are kind of a wild card. Yeah, you never know. What you, the Pacers. you don't. You don't know. Pacers hit forty five to fifty percent of their shots. Mm-hmm. It's a tough night. Mm-hmm. They don't. You're probably coasting. Yeah, but like you don't know. Yeah. Um. Lakers are probably more of a defensive, slow it down type team. Brooklyn's not very good. Toronto is, bless their Toronto's heart. Toronto's getting worse. They got well. Somebody beat the brakes off of them last. Night. Yeah, but like, aren't their guy like they some got of their, some injuries? They got, I, I mean, don't they know got, if RJ's back or not. Yeah, but, I mean, at this point, yeah, just let, just let RJ home. be. Yeah, just let him be at home. Yeah. And you know, you can't, can't can't can never discount the Wizards, but like that's a that's a four game stretch right there. Mm-hmm. The Pacers, the Nets, the Raptors, and the Wizards. Cleveland, you know, Minnesota, Golden State, though, that's a tough stretch. Mm-hmm. But that's your that's your that's your last road trip of the season. Or 
you end on the road, but it's two games at Memphis and at New Orleans. This is a four-game road trip. You beat the Grizzlies last night. It's actually a six-game road trip, excuse me, because the Milwaukee game was on the road. Yeah. And I was talking during the commercial break. Anthony Davis played really well on the road, or really well on the road. He played really well in that game against Milwaukee. I didn't watch the Memphis game last night. I watched, I watched the Bucks game again, or not again. I watched it for the first time, mm-hmm. and yo, Anthony Davis was really impressive. He was really good in that game. I didn't watch the Memphis game either. I just uh, saw Rui say he doesn't like Memphis. Oh, I missed that. <laughs> he was post game said something to the effect of like, yeah, you know, I don't really like it here, but. Uh... <laughs> That was unnecessary. No. Well, all right. <laughs> to that original point. Rui Hachimura hates civil rights, I guess. <laughs> to that original point. Um, before they played the Kings at home, they had won four of six. They then won two in a row after the Kings. Lost to the Kings again. Mm-hmm. And now they've won Man. five of their last six. Yeah. Wow. Been playing pretty good baseball, baseball, basketball for a minute now. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's good wins in there because they beat the Thunder, the Bucks, and the Timberwolves. Those are good wins. Yeah, they beat the Bucks twice without LeBron. That's crazy. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. But hey, that's a Anthony Davis played really well in that game the other night. He played really well. You're listening to D'Lo and KC on. KIFM West Sacramento, 98.5 FM Carex, QHD2 Sacramento, ESPN 1320. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Uh, Matt George is going to join us coming up in about 15 minutes or so. Kings, uh, Mavericks tomorrow night at the Golden One Center. uh, The latest in a long line of biggest games of the year. Uh, Also, Lakers play the Pacers, Warriors play the Hornets, Suns play the Thunder. That's the lineup for tomorrow. Uh, it's a little bit more, Pelicans a little bit more thin today. tonight. Yeah. That's and that's the that's that's the one. Mm-hmm. It's Pelicans and Bucks tonight. Um, but given what happened last night, looking at these games, it's it's Lakers versus East, Warriors versus East, and then you got you got Suns and Thunder. But the Thunder aren't of consequence. Like so that. There, there's games that are going to happen over the course of the next two weeks where it's cool. Whoever wins the first game, just win them both. Mm-hmm. That'll do the Kings a favor. Don't don't all of these teams that are playing each other multiple times split these games. Whoever wins the first one, just win both just of keep them. It, keep it going. That'll do wonders for the Kings. The, 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 the Suns beating the Thunder doesn't do anything for Sacramento. Like, that's that's one – and then, like the, the 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 other ones are clear rooting interests. Like, hey, go Tyrese! Come on, man, just go Tyrese. Go, uh, go, go, uh, set the go, pace. Go, Steve Clifford. I don't like. I don't even know who to pick on. Buzz Charlotte. City. Buzz City. Brandon Miller. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Brandon Miller. Um, but clear rooting interest in those games. But it just speaks to like as as this stuff like accumulates and continues to to move along, headed into tomorrow night. That game just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. It's, a, it's a big time game, and, and once again, I, I think this team um, is going to be ready for it. I think they're going to be ready. Whether that results in a win or not, I do not know. Not saying that, but I think they'll be ready to play um, at a high, high level tomorrow, and it's going to be of of, of importance because you, you don't want to lose both of these games. It's not the end of the world it's not the end of the season or end of the, your chance to be top six or anything like that but you really want to avoid losing both of these games you really do that's why you tune into this show right there <laughs> don't lose both of these games no but see that is I, the fire so, the fire takes we can so, offer. well we joke about it but some people will tell you well that six seed is gone if you no that's not the case now, six seed is tough if you lose it's tough, but it ain't gone. First, of no, all, it's not gone. It's the, really tough. The Mavericks though. might move past six. So, yeah, they might. They might. So that's the that's the thing with where these two teams is so even between these two. Do you recall? Is it conference record? What's the next tiebreaker? Because this will be two my, two. My will be so that's that's the other uh, you know kind of note to tomorrow is it's not just a win in the win column which you need. 
it's the series. Mm -hmm. You get the season series against Dallas, which just the way things look right now. And of course there's, you know, there's basketball games to be played, but like, I feel like that tiebreaker is going to be really important. Um, If it is conference record, I think with a, with a loss tomorrow, the Mavericks, even up the season series in conference record would go. I, they would, they, they, they'd, they'd, have, they'd have one more win. They'd be 28 and 19. The Kings would be 27 and 19. Mm-hmm. If I got that right. Mm-hmm. These are two really similar teams. Yeah. We need to outdo their start. We, because I'm going to be out there on the floor. Do your thing, dog. Uh, we need to outdo their stars tomorrow. Because their stars were, were big time stars on, on, on Tuesday. I think they'll be ready to do it. I think they will be. I don't even know how you do that. No, you do what? Just slow Luca and Kyrie down. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I expect them to have both or maybe 25 you plus. Yeah. You know, okay. 25 to 30. Yeah. You just, you know, you hope that um, maybe they don't go for 40. But or the Fox killer, and Sabonis have the same thing. Yeah. They, they, the killer is, like I mentioned uh, yesterday, Eric Jones and Dante Exum hitting threes. Like, that's something that, like, man, we can't have that. That can't go down. Um, Tim Hardaway Jr., who is a six-man-of-the-year candidate. We all agree it should be Malik Monk. But Tim Hardaway Jr., he's having a really good season off the bench. And Mm -hmm. I'm going to pull up what he did yesterday. I feel like he had like 16 or something like that yesterday. Then that's about what he averages, I think. He had 22. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you look out for him having 22. P.J. Washington having 14. He is four of six from beyond the arc good ball player he's not a four of six type shooter so you you don't stop Kyrie and Luca but you kind of hold them if you hold them where they were at on on Tuesday uh Kyrie had 24 Luca had 28 I think you might be all right but you got to stop PJ from having 14 you got to stop 22 from from Tim Hardaway you got to stop uh Derek Jones and Exum combining for what they combined for 14 together, you know, on four of six from beyond four of seven from beyond the arc. That's those are the things you got to shut that water off. And your guys got to play better too. Yeah. He was spot on with that too. 15.4 points per game uh, for Tim Hardaway jr. And his contributions off the bench look a little bit different now, given how well this Dallas Mavericks team is playing. Mm -hmm. And this a, a win, uh, but the Kings on Friday, just it it just feeds back into how well these two teams are playing. If Dallas wins again, of course you got to shift the narrative a little bit and just acknowledge that Dallas is doing things better than Sacramento right now. But if they're able to split these two games, which is what we all hope for, headed into Tuesday, we just wanted them to get Tuesday's win just in case. Um, you have two of the you know two two, two of the better playing, I don't want to say hottest teams in the league because you got Houston who who's won 10 straight and they you mentioned 12 of, of 14. They, they would be two of, you know, the hottest. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Boston's up there and I, I noted LA, in, in my opinion, the Lakers are up there. But yeah, the, the Dallas Mavericks would absolutely right, be, be, be right there and the Sacramento Kings are able to get that get, get this one tomorrow. They're, they're right back uh, in, in, into that conversation as well. Um, but man, Single digit games after this one. Mm. That's where That's we're crazy, at in the season. Single digit season. games. Like we're <laughs> we're back here in April. Like I, I it was somewhere around this time last year that we were watching Dallas and Sacramento in Dallas mm-hmm. at uh what was that spot that called? Was, uh, the it fire used to be called Mandangos. Oh. Well, it's not called that That's anymore. Not, <laughs> That's the old Mandangos. It's a firehouse. I couldn't I remember. remember what it was. Who's Jesse talking to? <laughs> Who was you talking to? No, no, no. no. Yeah, he no, calling no. again? No, no, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Okay, bro. We, 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 we gonna chill. We gonna chill. We gonna chill. Um, but yeah, that was a big game. Public right? house? No, we wasn't at. That it wasn't, wasn't public that was, house. I forgot. The I name. think it was firehouse. It was something house. It might have been firehouse. It might have been firehouse. That actually sounds like. What it was, uh, off of Fulton, I think it was. I think it was. It was Fulton. definitely off of Fulton. I remember exactly. Yeah. No, 
Firehouse is the nice restaurant in Old Sack. <laughs> I can't remember what it was. I can't remember what it was called, but it was it was a nice spot. And, Aldrin, and we was packed. We was hanging out. Yeah, man. Aldrin out here front and talking about, I ain't going to no place called Mandango's. Mandango's was popping. The one in El Grove and the one off of Fulton. Stop on. Don't do that. I didn't know there were multiple ones. Yeah, there was one in off of Laguna. I went a couple times for, you know, a little night, nice little night out. Good times. Went in, obviously, it was a sports bar. I went there to watch a couple of games at one point. Don't do that. Don't do that, Aldrin. Young fella. I ain't never been there. Don't do that. I ain't never been there. They are saying it is public house. I don't think it is public house, but Ramsey. Oh, public, public house. Yeah, Ramsey would know. All right. Maybe it is public house. Point Whatever being, it was, it was a nice little spot. Yeah, point being, big game um, against uh, against the, the Mavericks last year at around this time. This this is, It was a little earlier in the schedule around the All-Star break, but this does have the same makings of that two-game set they played last year. I think Public House was where we watched that's playoffs. Where we watched, yeah, that's where we watched playoffs. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I'm doing too much right now. I just know we had fun until Kyrie hit that stupid shot in the corner. <laughs> Had a good time. Had a good I mean, time. Kyrie hitting no shots. Uh, Skip Manny in here. Matt George is going to join us in just a couple of minutes. Matt George wants to talk baseball for sure, uh, but we'll talk Kings basketball with him as well. 916-909-1320. What's up, Manny? First, Damien, you are a great man. We love you. Stop it. You're one of the most competent human beings Stop I know. Stop it. I can't even take but you seriously, the, Manny. <laughs> Hopefully not. But with the seating, like, this is why, like, I, and I get it, like, you can't win every game, right? Nobody goes into a game to lose. But for me, with those Dallas games, like, in my head before the other night, I was like, we got to win both of these games. Because at this point, like, what happened last night is you're hoping for all these things. You're wishing. You're wishing this team wins, this other team wins, put you in this other position. We're like – you got to control your own destiny. And I know it, it's great if you split tomorrow night, but at the same time, like every time you lose, you're losing ground. And like right now, you can't lose ground anymore with all those bad wins that you, bad losses that you had before. Like these are all must games. You know what I'm saying? And like, and now we're hoping that things shift around here and there. We get some wins here. Some other teams lose. And like, Man, we got we now we got to be full throttle at this point. Like we really cannot afford to lose any too many more games. No, like, you're that's just you're what it is, man. You're right, man. And this is something Kate you said a little bit ago. Every like tomorrow, if, if the Kings win tomorrow, it's gonna be fantastic. Until Sunday, yeah, so they got to win. Yeah, games. like it, it, that's there's there's ten games left. That's going to happen every game, mm -hmm. like it, because of what Manny just said. We're, we're looking at well. Pfft, all right, it was a great win, but Phoenix won. Dude. Phoenix got a brutal skip. Man, Phoenix won again. Like, got a well, now you got to beat Memphis, mm -hmm. and then the Clippers game rolls around. What if the Clippers lose again? What if, what the, if the Kings win? Losing? What? You know, I always I feel like there's always like this. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, the, not not defeatist attitude towards the Kings, but it's like sky is falling to like, oh man. You lost that game, and now, oh, look at that schedule. I don't – you got to go on the road. and I, Okay, like, all right. Like, if if you if people are dreading it that much, then you just don't think they're good. They're a good team. They'll win the games. If they're good enough to win the majority, they'll win them. You know what I mean? Like, they have good ball players. They've got two all-star caliber ball players. They've got another guy in Malik Monk who's going to win six man of the year, or should. They've got another guy in Keegan Murray who can play. They've got a good team. Does that mean they're going to win all these matchups? All this? No. But they they're not they're not this poor little oh, they they just can't get it done because they're just not as good as Phoenix or Dallas. And they're the same. At the end of the day, we'll figure out how it plays out. But they're the same type of teams as all these guys. They can win. Just like everybody thinks Dallas is winning. Mm -hmm. Just like everybody thinks New Orleans is going to win. They they can win just like everybody else. Simple. And they've shown that. Mm -hmm. They've shown that. Uh, and they got to respond to which they've done a terrific job at. Yeah. They've got to respond to the latest 
hit the latest, you know, piece of adversity. Like they've, they've got to respond. Cause like we said, you're getting into single digit games now. Uh, we'll talk with Matt George about the big game coming up uh, on Friday, tomorrow Matt night McQueen. at the Golden One Center. And we'll talk a little baseball. Uh, Matt, very passionate about his uh, Oakland A's and some things that we've been talking about here as it pertains to the city of Sacramento. And we'll do all that when dealing with Casey return here on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320. What's the problem? I can't because you can't hear me, but you can talk back to me. He can. He can feel however he wants to. You have my mic. All right. What, uh, Collins, I wish you would get that postcard out of your notebook. Just wrong. I love Harrison Barnes. Oh, well, that's don't listen I forgot. to this. Hey, this is I'll cross it out. This is that's my bad. You people perpetuating it. That's my bad. It's not true. <laughs> That's my. I forgot it was there. I I do it because I, I do that. I forgot. I know that's not true because he's playing well. I've always loved him. Well, I've been. It's, we'll it was the, more disappointment. We'll check the. We'll check the notes. It was more disappointment. Disappointed dad. What's up, Matt? What's up? What's up, Maddie McQueen? What's up, my guy? Giants, just Giants, just th- th- throwing throw. air. Gave up the lead. Oh no! It was two to one for like five hours. They just took the lead, and then they took it. the lead and just gave it right back. Now there's a runner on third with no outs. Yeesh! Oh, I didn't even know they scored. Yeah. Well, then they score on a sacrifice fly, and then my guy gets, gets thrown out, getting hung up between second and third. Like bad base running. It's the little stuff. They're not good enough to not do the little things. Come on, we gotta have that, Bob Melvin. <laughs> Did you hear Bob Melvin is making the announcers wear like a sports coat when they travel? It's my guy. How does, <laughs> how does that work? I don't know. I guess he said they weren't if they're going to be on the team playing. I guess he says they got to dress accordingly. What we got Arizona? what games? Uh, the, oh, the Sweet Sixteen. Arizona after, Clemson. Of course. Is that the one we got? <sighs> Uh, I got the I got the sheet. Yeah, that, that we might have that one. Oh, it's not on here. Yeah, it's not on here. Yeah, it's just, that's all it says. It actually doesn't even say that. It just has the watch party stuff on here. Sorry, Matt. The break's a little bit longer because of the games. That's totally fine. King KC nine one six when he gets it. Wow, that's that's me. That's, that's bizarre. Me. 
That's me. I had to make the change. Oh, there we go. There go the graphic. There go the graphic. Yeah. Yeah. Like I do love smiling. I do love the smiling graphic. For those who haven't seen it. You got one. The happiest. The happiest three win guy there. Oh yeah, I know. I got a, I got a, I got a quote tweet. Jesse that just one. taking it in stride. I got a quote tweet that I, one. I love that he has the little record as of three twenty eight <laughs> on there. I don't know where that is. I don't know. <laughs> Hold on. I like Doctor David's tweet. The co- he got the Kobe Bryant gift from the from the Jimmy Kimmel show. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh man, WrestleMania 15 was 25 years ago. <laughs> I don't know why Dr. David. I don't know why they had to celebrate by showing Bart Gunn get knocked out. What was 15? Uh, Austin Rock. I think that's where Boss Man hung. It was no, that was corporate. No, it was corporate rock. It was. Oh, he was already. When did he get the the belt? And like, oh, he was with McMahon the whole time. And that that was seventeen. It was that long. Yeah, because they did they did fifteen, seventeen, and nineteen. Fifteen was okay, kind of forgettable. Seventeen had the the Austin heel turn. Nineteen was Austin's last match all right we're back here man commercial free till the top of the four o'clock hour uh before we talk to our man matt george who looks kind of distraught if i'm going to be honest he's got his a's hat on and that's where we're going to start and we're going to talk king's basketball but talking to my guys during the commercial break i trust them both so i'm gonna tell my man javier if you're listening i apologize javi i shouldn't have called you out your name don't like the way you started that phone call, and I think that should be addressed. But KC said I was out of pocket, so I was out of pocket. I trust my man KC. I trust my man Jesse. So They said I was out of pocket, and it was too much, so it was too much. So Javier, pull up tonight. Let's have a drink. We'll watch basketball. Stay off your phone, and whoever you talk to when we're around. <laughs> Please do that. Come through. <laughs> Let's have a drink, and we'll talk. But Javier, if you're listening, we appreciate you listening to the show. And I apologize again. I don't like the way you started that phone call. That was a bad and, reaction by me, and that's my bad. And to, and to your point, that was that was unnecessary. But that, that, yeah, yeah, that it doesn't matter. It too. doesn't matter. It was my fault. Javier, it's my bad. Um, Matt George is, uh, well, he's not happy either. So <laughs> we'll see what Matt George has to say to the two of us uh, as this conversation goes. I obviously want to talk about the game tomorrow. Uh, you're the host of the Locked On Kings podcast and in, 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 in cover the kings for abc 10 but you have some pretty passionate feelings obviously you got your a's gear on it's opening day you have and have shown that with us you have very passionate feelings about the oakland a's the move to las vegas and more specifically this week sacramento's involvement in this yeah that's not a question i was just laying the table and i'll let you i'll 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 go wherever you want to go from there um, well, first off, I'm mad at you for apologizing because I was going to feel good about not getting as hot as that, but I, I actually might top that depending upon how this conversation goes. Cause you're right. This is something that myself and I think a lot of Oakland A's fans period, we cannot separate our emotions from our, from our head with this because of what we have been through. And I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm only a small part of it. Most Oakland A's fans really since the glory eras and the the eighties and nineties, and like most A's fans have dealt with this for a long, long, long time, much longer than I have as a aware Oakland A's fan, but I can just speak from my experience. Um, I mean, it's funny, the, the gross incompetence, the only gross incompetence that's that's relevant to this, anything is, is John Fisher and his ownership. And that's the part that no matter how good of the possibility of the Oakland A's coming and playing in Sacramento, now how, no matter how awesome it would be for me, to have my favorite sports team be 20 minutes down the road or 30 minutes down the road. I could take my son and get lawn seats and watch whoever the hell come into Sacramento and play my Oakland A's. Like that's in so many ways a dream come true. 
But I think in this circumstance and in, in the circumstance of, of the conversation of Sacramento, Oakland A's fans should be listened to. And what Oakland A's fans are telling you is you do not want to be a part of enabling or involvement with the POS that is John Fisher. He is the worst owner in professional sports, period, bar none. He's not just run the Oakland A's organization in the ground to collect a check. He's also done so with the San Jose Earthquakes, a team that was very relevant and very competitive in the MLS. They're coming off of a halfway decent season, but he gutted them and ran them into the ground as well. Like John Fisher is a disaster for professional sports. And what pisses me off is the continued enablement by the MLB for Fisher as an owner. And if Sacramento welcomes the Oakland A's here, they are continuing that enablement. That disgusts me. It is vile to me. And it by no means makes it appropriate for me to support the idea of my favorite baseball team coming to my city, whether it's a done deal or not, whether shovels are in the ground in Las Vegas or, or not, which as far as I know, they are not yet. And John Fisher and Dave Cavill are masters at screwing things up. So there's a very, very good chance, or I shouldn't say very good. There's still a small chance that everything could fall through in Vegas. Like there's, there's so much still that can still happen. And I think what hurts me the most is, I know there is a significant difference between the Sacramento Seattle thing and what's happening in Oakland right now. I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not suggesting that they're one in the same, but they're very similar feelings as a fan base or as a fan who's now gone through both of these and who went through it with the Raiders by the way. All three of my sport franchises at one sport uh, time or another tried to leave the city that that they call home. Sacramento's always been my home, but Oakland is an extension of my home because of my memories of going to the Coliseum and growing up and going to games with my grandma and doing things that I dreamed of doing with my son. And I'm refusing to do that with my son right now because I don't want to continue to support what Fisher and what the Oakland A's uh, organization have been doing to that fan base down there. I mean, I can rant and ramble and go in a million different directions and, and, and be really incoherent about all of this, but to me... There's just no way to look past the in continued enablement of John Fisher. And if Sacramento continues to do that by also whether they're indirectly hurting Oakland or not, I still think Oakland is trying to use the negotiation table right now to at the very least maintain and secure the Oakland A's brand and maintain and secure the possibility of the of the city of Oakland still being a viable market for Major League Baseball, my feelings are that if Sacramento were to come in and help John Fisher take yet another handout, which is all he does in his ownership career, is just take handouts and pocket revenue share and TV deals and whatever makes him money, then to me that is Sacramento indirectly working against the effort in Oakland, the effort that is backed by tens of thousands of fans who are willing to pay for parking to an event that they're not going to go to just to make it known that they're not going to support Fisher by putting money in his pocket, but they're going to support the city with the parking costs and they're still going to show up and let it be known that the fans are still there. They've always been there. They're just tired, sick and tired of not just two seasons, three seasons, however long this relocation saga has been going on. They're tired of decades of what Oakland A's baseball has been which is watching really good farm talent come through, develop, do great things at the MLB level. Maybe they have a, a window or two where they can make a deep run and then everybody sell, sold off before they can be paid. When I hear credit to you and, and, and respect to you, Kenny, you know how much I disagree with you on this stuff. You're wearing a Giants jersey right now and I'm wearing an A's hat. This has nothing to do with A's versus Giants, but you have to understand the A's perspective of hearing a Giants fan talking on this issue is you have no idea what this is. Because Giants fans are, are able to experience an entire career of Buster Posey or a long time of, of Madison Bumgarner or whoever the next star is, they sign, they bring back, they have big off seasons. They Giants fans have the luxury of com complaining during the off season that the Giants didn't go get Shohei Otani or didn't go get Aaron Judge when Oakland A's fans know that there's not even a conversation to be had there. So again, incoherent, just a bunch of feelings on this day that I, I genuinely feel like this is the last Oakland uh, opening day for the Oakland A's. And it's a, it's a painful day. It reminds me of the day that we thought that the Kings were, had played their last game in Sacramento. That's how it feels right now. Um, I hope that A's fans are celebrating and I hope that A's fans 
kick ass in the parking lot and 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 send their message across. It's also no surprise at all that the A's organization is petty enough to not open parking until five o'clock because they intentionally continue to try and sabotage these efforts and undermine these efforts backed by the commissioner of baseball who will go on record and say something as, as terrible and condescending as, Hey, that, 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 uh, Reverse boycott the Oakland A's did. That was cute. That was nice. They had an average baseball crowd that night. That was nice to see. That is the commissioner of baseball that continues to enable this POS that now Sacramento wants to partner with. Get the hell out of here. I want nothing to do with it. Well, Matt, you, you said you said it was incoherent. I don't think any of that was incoherent. I thought it was passionate. I thought it was spot on. I thought uh, I loved everything you had to say. And I understand everything you have to say. And I would agree with everything that you have to say as far as uh, Fisher, Rob Manford, his compliance and all of this. Um, and the fact that it's just, and, and what you say about A's fans, how it's just, it's, it's not right. Now, as a Giants fan, I am a Giants fan, but even before that, I'm, just, I'm about Sacramento. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm about Sacramento first and foremost. And in this particular situation, and I would just ask you, you, you asked for Sacramento to listen to A's fans and, and how they feel in these situations. And I'm listening and we're hearing. And I would ask you, what would you want the city of Sacramento, like realistically, if Sacramento comes to you and says, this is our only shot for our whole life to get this opportunity to bring, it's not about John Fisher. I know he's involved in it, but it's not about John Fisher. It's about pushing this city forward. We've been trying to push this city forward for the last 25 years, whether it's the rail yards, building up West Sac, saving the team, putting Doko down there, and all everything for the last 25 years is about trying to push this city forward. And we have, to be honest with you, the may I don't want to say the only way but maybe the quickest way to push a city forward in America right now is to get more pro sports. And, and hear, hear me when, when, when I say this, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm not, you know, I love you, Matt. And I, I'm, I'm empathetic to what you're going through. But as a, as a, if I was a city official, you want us to pass on that so you guys can feel better. Oh, I understand like, that. That's, Come on, I, I'm I'm trying to make this city better for not only myself but for generations to come, and and just so you guys can feel better, you guys would like us to pass on that. You're 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 trying to make the city better by going in business with and I, granted, I'm not pretending that business people, most business people, are all business people are not are are not or have their own issues and things like that. But to me, and this is where, like I texted you, Kenny, I, I, it's impossible to separate the heart from the, from the brain. It's not the A's playing in Sacramento. It's not the city trying to do what they can to attract another sports fran uh, professional sports franchise. It's who they are willing to go into partnership with to do it. The only part of that Vivek Ranadive interview that I needed to hear was, you know, John Fisher is my friend at that point. I'm done. Like, I don't care. And I, and I respect Vivek Ranadive. I appreciate what Vivek Ranadive did here. I think he's been a fan fantastic owner in recent years with the Sacramento Kings. So this and by no way is a negative thing to do with Vivek Ranadive whatsoever. As if John Fisher is involved, I do not want to be any part of it because whether it's three or four years of a rental franchise in Sacramento that has a very tiny chance of, convincing the MLB to expand here eventually, or maybe Las Vegas falls through and then they, they're already here in Sacramento. So might as well stay here. Look, it was first and goal on the one or whatever it was for the Kings to go to Seattle. So stranger things and, and uh, less common things have happened uh, in the past. So I'm not saying all of that is impossible. It is not worth it to me to essentially be the way that I would look at. I, I would look at it as this. The I, I look at it as the Sacramento city selling out to an owner who is just going to take advantage of you, use you like he has used 
every, like, look at the track record. Look at who you're going into business with. It tells everything, how he's used the city of Oakland, how he's tried to spin things to make it the fans' fault while he's raising prices and, and, and doing all this stuff to undercut the fans and undermine the fans as much, as much as possible, putting his mouthpiece Dave Cavill out there uh, to insult Oakland A's fans while going to Las Vegas and talking about how great Las Vegas is and giving us these renderings that don't make any sort of sense whatsoever. Like, it all has to do with the man and to me has nothing to do with the city. If this is the city's only shot, I understand I'm passing on it. It does make me feel better, but I also think it's better for the city to stay as far away from this POS as possible because he will do everything in his power to take advantage, take the handout, and then leave Sacramento. And maybe you get three or four years of an economic economic boon. I heard Jake and his interview with you guys yesterday. I thought Jake's interview with Vivek was fantastic. Excellent. Get a, uh, I thought Jake did a fantastic job. Jake said some things yesterday that made me roll my eyes and laugh. The idea of turning West Sacramento into Doco 2.0. By the time anything of relevance is built, that team is on the way to Las Vegas. Sure, it might boost ep economics for a three or four year span. And I think that's great for the city. But to me, that is not worth, to me, selfishly, that is not worth continuing to allow this man to do what he does, to continue to the, enable the MLB to do what they are doing, to take any last bit of hope that Oakland has to keep their franchise and to be a part of them moving, it's just not worth it to me. Is it selfish? Absolutely. Is it heart over brain? Absolutely. Is this the only chance that the MLB or that Sacramento has to attract the MLB? Probably. I still don't want anything to do with it. Um. Well, starting with some of the things Jake said, I, 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 to to Jake's point, like you build stuff up around there. I get what you're talking about. This doesn't, you know, if this is three years, two years, three years, whatever. That the the stuff that gets built isn't leaving. Right. Like it's it's still there. Now, of course, I understand in this component, like baseball is the centerpiece of that. But if you've built a new area for people to spend their time, then that's an area that will remain people to spend their time. It's going to be different, mm -hmm. but it's not like it's deserted. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like those buildings that they build in Olympic cities where they're literally used for the Olympics. Mm -hmm. And then you see some story 10 years later about how they get tore down like that's wouldn't not be you know, that's not what this would be. But you mentioned a name that we probably haven't discussed enough this week, and it's Rob Manfred. The way we feel about Rob Manfred is very, very clear. Like he is the absolute worst of the worst when it comes to commissioners in sports and he did make that smart ass remark about a revolt uh you know the 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 A's boycott a reverse boycott whichever one it was uh looking like a normal baseball game in a regular city and it's like it's clear what we're dealing here you know with him it's up to Sacramento though and this is where this is this is the the only thing and I won't push back on this Matt I'll just present a different you know line of thinking to you it's up to Sacramento and our elected officials at the time to make sure that Fisher and Manfred coming through, you can't pillage Sacramento. You can't get what you want and leave with nothing. We're getting something out of this. And it's more than just the home of a baseball team for the next three years. Now, maybe it doesn't wind up with Kenny's original proposal where we're talking about a permanent baseball team down the road. But Sacramento's not leaving this relationship with nothing. And it's up to the people that we elect to make sure that that happens. It's up to the people we elect to make sure that the I's and, and the T's and all of that, but more importantly, that the dollars and cents line up. If it doesn't, then Matt, I'm actually on your side because I'm looking at this not from a fan of anyone or anything other than the city of Sacramento. If this works for the city of Sacramento, even in the short term and can build out something for the long term, I'm all for it. But I'm trusting the people that we put in power to make sure that that's the case. And it's not Fisher coming through. It's not Manfred coming through and getting whatever they want from the city of Sacramento before heading off to their permanent home in Las Vegas. I'll just I'll I'll just wrap up with this. I'm I'm aware of also the hypocrisy of some of the things that I say too and I've had this conversation with a lot of people in um in Kings media circles. This has been a major conversation amongst like tables before Kings games at, at dinner and and I am typically by myself on this because everybody's coming from the Sacramento perspective and I'm coming from the Oakland perspective as a Sacramentan. Um if they come here, my job, I'm going to be there. The opportunity to take my son to Sutter Health Park to watch an A's game or to watch whoever comes through when the Giants come through, I'm going to uh, uh, like I'm going to be there at least every once in a while. I I 
understand and believe without a doubt that Sacramento at the very, very, very least is going to make the MLB think twice or going to make the MLB consider heavily. Wow, this is a viable market because I the thing that I agree with the most that both of you have said repeatedly this week, and Kenny, you've said this a lot too, that ballpark's full. It's going to be full regardless of who's coming through, but especially when the Giants come through, when the Yankees come through, whenever who it, whoever it is, if the Dodgers ever come through, dear God, like that place is going to be full. And I love the idea of watching Aaron Judge hit a ball under the Tower Bridge. Like it's cool. It's awesome to think that that could be a possibility and that can be legitimate. But to me, the pipe dream is the possibility of it lasting beyond three, four years. And if three or four years is worth it to the city and worth it to fans here in Sacramento to, to rent a team, that is fine. And they're not worried at all about ownership. If John Fisher never shows his face in Sacramento, all the better for it. For me, the three or four year rental, which is what I believe it would be, and it wouldn't go further than that, even if there is a small chance of Sacramento main, uh, eventually ending up with an MLB franchise, it is not worth being a part of anything that has to do with John Fisher. And that's that's where I'll always stand. That's where I'll continue to stand. If they come here to Sacramento, I will support the city by supporting the, uh, the team. I will always be an Oakland A's fan there. People have asked me, hey, if the A's go to, if the A's go anywhere, like if the A's, when the A's go to Vegas, if the A's were to go to the East Coast, would you become a San Francisco Giants fan? It's the same question that I was asked when the Raiders left. And as much as I wanted to be a 49er fan, I could not do it. The A's are always going to be my team regardless of where they're at. The only win for the Oakland A's, which is what I care about, not the city of Sacramento, the only win for the Oakland A's and by extension, the only win for Major League Baseball is getting that man away from that team, getting that man away from the, the, the league, away from sports, period, and riding off into the sunset, never hearing from him again. And in my opinion, Sacramento helping him move to Vegas does the opposite of that. So, so Matt, I'm, I'm sorry. It was one question, Matt. Aren't they leaving Oakland anyways? Mm -hmm. Likely. Highly so likely, yes. Sacramento or no Sacramento, like they're leaving Oakland. Right. I don't, but I don't want my city to be a part of facilitating but that. They're not, that but they're not. Like they're they're gone. Like they're going to Las Vegas. Sacramento is offering or providing a ballpark, a place for a team that is has a chance of being homeless which I know they probably would be in Salt Lake City before they ended up being homeless, but then fine, go to Salt Lake City. To me, I don't care where they play. I don't want John. I don't want Sacramento to be a part of John Fisher getting to Las Vegas and leaving Oakland. I don't want them to be a part of it. I don't want my city to be a part of it. If it happens, because it's way bigger than me, okay. And there's, a, like, to your point, D'Lo, it's probably going to happen or it's going to happen somewhere. Why not Sacramento? I get that. You're asking from the Sacramento A's fan perspective, and I know I'm not speaking for all Sacramento A's fans here because there are a lot of us here, even though this is a Giants town. I'm not speaking for everybody. I'm just speaking for myself. I do not want my city to be a part of that. And whether the Sacramento-Seattle saga is, is connected or not, which of course it's not connected, to me, knowing what I and the, the city of Sacramento went through with the Kings and what the city of Oakland has gone through with the Raiders and now is going through with the A's. And I know the city of Oakland is not innocent in this as well. They've screwed up many times as well. I, I am sympathetic to them and I'm sympathetic to that over greedy or desire having a baseball team in Sacramento for a three or four year period. I just don't have interest in it. Okay. Well, let's talk about something more fun, like a 36-point loss to the Mavericks, huh? No joy. Well, let's talk. <laughs> my, my, Matt might enjoy that conversation more than this one. In fact, let's leave that 36-point loss behind, and let's look ahead to tomorrow. Matt, each final score from a Western Conference team that goes final in favor of that 4, 5, uh, 6, 7, 9, 10 seed, it makes this game tomorrow night at the Golden One Center, that much bigger. What do the Kings have to do differently in this second recent go-around with the Dallas Mavericks? Oof, there's a lot. I've got, I got to get back into a, uh, a mode of caring. Oh, we got it, baby. Uh, we got uh, it, man. Sorry, it's been a, it's been a tough day. Um, well, first and foremost, I highly don't expect the, uh, the, 
uh, uh, Mavericks to shoot, what was it, 14 of 22 from three-point range? They shot 100%. That's what they did. They <laughs> shot 100% from three. But but they actually what, were a valedictorian. They got uh, a GPA of 4.6. Wow. Somehow. Wow. Amazing. And, and let me clarify that 14 to 22 was not the Mavericks three point shooting percentage. That was the three point shooting percentage of everybody not named Kyrie and Luca. That's the part of that. That's where that game, you lost that game to me. Now you can't go into tomorrow night's game and go, that's not going to happen again. And that's your adjustment, right? You got to, you got to close out. You got to make sure that the, the Mavericks don't tear you apart by playing your game. Luca Doncic and Kyrie Irving were doing everything that Mike Brown wants the A's to do. They were attacking the basket, touching the paint, kicking out to open threes and everybody and their mother was making them in Sacramento, which has been a common theme over the course of the season, except for that eight game stretch before the Mavericks game. So I think, I mean, if the Sacramento, okay, I expect Kyrie Luca, they're going to get theirs. I, I expect it to some extent. If, if Luca goes for 50 and Kyrie goes for 30 and, and you lose because you got 80 points from two combined players, it sucks. I tip my cap to it. And of course we can break down what they could have done better to defend those two. but you're never going to beat the Dallas Mavericks if the supporting cast, if PJ Washington, if if Gafford, if uh, Lively, all these guys, Tim Hardaway Jr., if they're killing you in addition to Kyrie or Luka or the possibility of Kyrie and Luka, you, you have no shot in that game regardless of how good your offense is. So the offense definitely needs to be better, and I thought it was really eye-opening, guys, how much Mike talked about the offense being the problem in that game. He flipped the script. He's been talking about defense, defense, defense all year. And I was expecting and going into that, ready to talk about the defense and the perimeter defense. And he goes, nah, it was our offense that was the problem. So the offense definitely needs to be better. You got to score more than 96 points and you got to make Luka and Kyrie work a lot harder than you did. That being said, you cannot let the Mavericks supporting cast kill you. Start there and you're in a position to win. Yeah, I I agree with everything you said. I agree with Mike Brown as well, though. You know, you, you gotta, you gotta put a, put up your points and the Kings while the the Mavericks hit, you know, everything the Kings shot kind of below. And you would know this maybe a little better than me, Matt, but it feels like they shot well below their averages across the board, except for maybe free throw shooting. I mean, they, they, they seem to be a much uh, better shooter as far as makes made or made threes in a game than what they were able to do on, on Tuesday. And I think they shot like 38% from the field or something like that. So they, it was a combination. It felt like of the Mavs playing way above their averages and the Kings playing well below. I expect that to come down on both ends tomorrow night. Will that be enough to get a victory? I don't know nothing about that, but I do expect the Kings to play better. And I expect the Mavs to come down to earth just a little bit uh, more than what they did on Tuesday. Yeah, I, I mean, I, law of averages, right? It'll balance itself out a little bit. I also expect the, like, one of the things the Kings have done really, really well in recent memory in this this stretch that they've been playing well is in addition to the defense being really, really good, they've ended halves and started third quarters with stops. Like Mike talked about, there was there were two or three games where the Kings ended the th- the second quarter and started the third quarter with like six to eight consecutive stops, which got themselves going a little bit. If you remember how that second half started, like a, a quick 7-0 or something like that Dallas run, home run Giants, by the way, Conforto. Um, if you, uh, and then if you remember how the fourth quarter started, the Kings kind of end the third quarter on a little bit of a push, Malik alley hey, maybe there's a chance. It's a long way to go, but maybe there's a chance. And then a 5-0 run from the Mavericks right out of the gate. So, Starting quarters and coming out of the half, I, I think, is going to be a, a big point of emphasis with Sacramento as well. And just don't lose the energy of that crowd, right? The crowd was completely taken out of that game. Credit to the da- Ma- Mavericks. They did a phenomenal job. I know the Kings have done a much better job of creating their energy on the road than they have at home. But use that fan energy and 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 take it to a team. Play like the situation and the stage requires of it. That's what I'm expecting tomorrow. I thought the Kings were a little indecisive on Tuesday, particularly. I mean, it, I feel like when we talk about anything in this game, we're really just talking about the first half because once you got, you know, into the third quarter, the game ended so quickly. But in even in the first half, they were missing a lot of shots at the basket. And maybe this ties into what Casey was talking about there a second ago about the averages being so far below what they're used to. It felt like they tried to make that extra pass a couple of times or maybe tried to make that spray 
and it either led to a worse shot or a turnover than the one they had. And part of me expected coming out of halftime might get into those guys a little bit like, hey, we got to be aggressive. Take your shots. I saw Keegan pass on a shot that I was positive Mike was going to take him out the game for. Maybe that gimmick is over, but I thought for sure that's what he was going to do because it was one of those shots where it's like, yo, that was yours. It just felt like, and and this isn't like a cop-out. Dallas is very, very good. They're playing their best basketball of the year right now. Part of me just feels like Tuesday was just a off night for Sacramento, and they've had a couple of days here to regroup. Of course, I mentioned these numbers that Jesse pulled. Uh, the Kings are six and six on games where they have two days off. So I, I don't 50 50 chance. Well, <laughs> I think you had that going in anyways, but yeah, it's, it's true. Can't argue I, math. I think they also have a, 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 a like, I'm not exaggerating, a close to 100% success rate there's been a handful or a, a loss here or there like the rockets loss earlier in the season and stuff like that where the kings have not responded well to being blown out but i was i, I did a crossover podcast with locked on mavericks and i was trying to explain to them and, and to to mavericks fans like look this is this is the kings have been through this before the mavericks didn't do anything to sacramento that they haven't faced already this season so the expectation should absolutely be from Sacramento because the pattern will show that the Kings are going to respond in some way. That doesn't mean a guaranteed win, but I, I mean the, the quality of basketball I expect from Sacramento is going to be significantly better as much as I do not acknowledge like three games or five games and seven nights as an excuse and stuff like that. I, I like, I, it's the NBA. Everybody has the schedule. Everybody deals with it. Tr the travel miles, everything. It sucks. Like deal with it, overcome it. I don't accept that as a, an excuse. That being said, I expect the Kings to look a little more spry after two days off than playing their fifth game in seven nights. That's just natural. So there's, I, there's a lot of circumstances. I think from Tuesday night's game that I expect naturally to just fix themselves and then what the Kings have been working on today in practice, what they've been breaking down in film sessions, what they've been doing uh, and looking at how the, the Mavericks defended them because the players and the coaches talked a lot about the Mavericks doing something differently defensively than what they expected, which was playing up high and, and, and guarding up top. The bigs kept coming up and, and, and guarding the perimeter and starting the physicality on the perimeter. And then, of course, what every team's doing against Sacramento, which is as soon as you try and get the ball into the paint, everybody converges. And that's why we saw DeMondo Sabonis with four turnovers again. So there's a lot that I expect the Kings to correct naturally. And because they've been there and done that before, this is not an unusual position for them to be in, which is encouraging. And then we'll see schematically what looks different and what is okay. That was just an off night. We're going to continue to do the same thing and expect better results. I want to see um, also, you know, a, a good game from my boy Malik, man. He's, yeah. mm. he's uh, mm. not in like, I, don't, I think funk might be a little too uh, harsh because it's only about three or four games, but um, he has not at that six man of the year level that he was. No, no. And I, I, I want to see, and I expect to see, just be not because of anything other than I believe in his ability, mm -hmm. um, him to have a, a bounce back game, a good game on, on Friday night as well. Yeah. I mean, I think Malik is also realizing and, and has realized over the course of this season, just how instrumental he is to success. There are games where what Malik Monk is doing is arguably more important than Sabonis or Fox at times because Malik, like there is, Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm curious if you guys felt this way. There were uh, probably at least 10,000 people in the Golden One Center last night that were looking when Malik came into the game in that second half to go, this is our only shot. Like this, if, if we're going to start the comeback, it's going to start now with Malik and his energy. And that's what I was thinking. When Malik came into the game, I was like, man, Golden One Center needs a jolt. Get Malik Monk into the game. Malik has a lot of responsibility with the role that he has with this Kings team to create energy and, and work the Kings into that high level of basketball that they're capable of playing. He doesn't have to do that alone. Fox and Sabonis can be out there with him, but Malik Monk is the energy changer on this Sacramento Kings team. First and foremost, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So in, we talk about Fox being the head of the snake and Fox and, and Sabonis are going to take this team as far as they're going to go. Absolutely right. But the energy that the Sacramento Kings plays with starts with Malik Monk. And when he's struggling, even he never changes the way he plays, which I appreciate. He's always going to play with that kind of flash and flare and step backs and, and difficult passes and stuff like that, even if the shots aren't falling. But if they're not falling, the, the, the Kings are having a hard time overcoming that. Yeah. You know anything about Sasha or I, I, you know, we haven't gotten an update on Trey Lyles. I think that's approaching, but a, a, a lot of us obviously 
inaccurately thought Sasha may be nearing a return, given that he we heard he was part of shootarounds and practices. You got anything on Sasha Bozenkov? Not much more than than anybody else has. It's curious because. I mean, timelines and progress would tell you he should be back by now. Like, he should be back from an ankle injury. And the fact that, I mean, we it wasn't just, like, reports. It was Gary Gerald on the radio broadcast at the beginning of the road trip saying Sasha should be available to go in Washington. And then he wasn't. And then Dallas. Or, sorry, and then uh, then Orlando. Then 76ers. Then Dallas. Like, it just it keeps getting pushed back and back and back, I think. A good sign is he was made available at practice today. I don't think the Sacramento Kings do that unless he's very seriously up for consideration. But I'll go back to, and this is kind of playing the bad guy role, like I'll go back to what I said, I think, on this show last week. I don't think Sasha Vazenkov has a spot in this rotation. I don't. Like maybe with, Trey Lyles, Lyles. maybe with Trey Lyles out, he gets opportunity. But Mike Brown has found a group that has worked specifically playing the way that he's trying to play. I don't think he's going to sacrifice Alex Len minutes for Sasha Vizenkov. I don't think he's going to sacrifice the look at the three guard lineup. And I think he wants to have one of Keegan or Harrison on to play that four kind of wing position at all times. So Sasha might get an opportunity with Trey Lyles out, but that's his only shot. If Trey Lyles comes back, Sasha's like, 11th 12th guy on the rotation at mm-hmm. best in my opinion so whether he comes back or not i don't view it as that consequ or that significant or that consequential hmm. okay i thought it was weird i i don't know i, I thought he said, get, i thought he might get a little bit more run with trey out yeah, that, but that's what i would think but, too, but it, i guess he's not clearly ready. not yeah, yeah clearly not well, I think also the situation too would be, hey, he maybe let's say he's available tomorrow. Okay, here's a five minute stretch. If he comes out in those five minutes, plays the defense or plays gives the effort on the defense that Mike is expecting and goes two for three from three point range. All right, now here's another five minutes in the second half, or here's another ten minutes in the second half. Mike will give you opportunity to play your way into spots yeah. or into minutes by doing the right thing. So, great stuff, Matt. Really, really great. You're the stuff. man, man. Love on, you, dude. On, love on, you, big dog. Yeah, on both. You're my guy. Yeah, today sucks, fronts. man. I know, I know, but uh, you did a good job representing this this Sacramento uh, Oakland story in a very different way. We appreciate yeah. y'all for being with us, man. Hope you could join us uh, out at Bar West, twenty seven twenty four J Street in Midtown. We are headed there right now. We'd love to see you, and we here on ESPN Radio, we're headed out to Sweet Sixteen Tournament action, baby. Yes, Sponsored indeed. by Michelob Ultra, Superior Light Beer. That's next here on Sacramento Sports Leader, ESPN thirteen twenty. Vamos A's. Can't say vamos Giants because these bums already yeah. lost. They're not yeah. bums. They're not bums. They just lost the game. That's all. They're not bums. Worst loss of the season. <laughs> they did blow it. No. The four run seven. Well. All right, y'all. We got a. We have a couple of things we got to tie up before. I hope you guys can come through, man. We're headed out there um, in about five minutes or so. We'll be on our way out there, man. So hopefully, be there around four thirty, four forty at the absolute latest. Uh, but if you're if you're free, come through. We should be out there for a couple hours. Kenny will have to take off because he's got TV. But um, yeah, Bar West, J Street. Uh, if not, man, we'll see you guys tomorrow at 10 a.m. Yes, sir.